to have you with us. Gorgeous shot of New York, Lady Liberty. This is America's Day at the Races. As always, brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit America's Best Racing. .net today. There's uh, New York City to the southwest. Oakland Park, Hearth Springs, Arkansas. Big weekend on tap on the eve of the grade one. Apple, Blossom, and Cap. From the infield, welcome everyone. I'm Lafitte Pinkai. Every season, there are two grade one events at Oakland Park. A couple of weeks ago, we watched Muth dominate the Arkansas Derby, usually a key Kentucky Derby prep. Uh, tomorrow, Oakland's second grade one event has nothing to do with the Derby, has everything to do with championships. The 60th running of the grade one Apple Blossom, and it is the America's Best Racing's Race of the Week. Let's see that animation as we highlight the America's Best Racing's Race of the Week. Field drawn Sunday, nine deep, top class fillies and mares, $1.25 million purse, number four, Adair Manor. Shipping in from California, nine to five morning line favorite. As I welcome in my co-host, multiple grade one winning jockey, Rajiv Mirage. Rajiv, aside from this massive purse, the grade one status, the, the Apple Blossom, what makes this such a significant horse race? Yeah, the Apple Blossom has been a watering hole for legends over the years. When you look back at some of the horses that have won it, Azeri, three-time winner, Zenyatta, two-time winner, and recently, Latruska, champion Philly and Mayor. So the history is there. Th this race, in our racing calendar, the first quarter of the year, it is the most, it's the biggest race for Phillies and Mayors in the Distaff Division. That's the Apple Blossom. We'll get to the favorite, Adair Manor, in just a moment. But wanted to start with the Philly who owned this track last winter and spring. The Dolphins wet paint. She is undefeated here, three for three, fantasy winner, Raj. And then last summer, this relentless run in victory over Sacred Wish in the Grade 1 Coaching Club American Oaks at Saratoga. Yeah, her success that she had last year propelled her into being the favorite for the Kentucky Oaks. Now she's coming off a, a bit of a layoff. Uh, hasn't been, hasn't run since the Breeders' Cup this time. And back to the track that she loves the most, undefeated 3 for 3. Wet paint, you see her here. Sacred Wish reaching for the wire, but, but here's the class. Raj, she's not explosive. She doesn't have that acceleration. She just keeps grinding, clawing her way to victory in that coaching club, American Oaks. You brought up the layoff after the CCA Oaks, second in the Alabama, eighth in the Breeders' Cup distaff, five months off. How much of a concern is that for you? Well, if it wasn't a top trainer like Brad Cox, who's accustomed to doing this with these type of horses, I would be a bit more concerned. But uh, a filly of this magnitude, I don't believe that he would be running her in this race if he doesn't feel that she's at her optimal fitness level. And it has been done before. Stellar Wynn, Plum Pretty, Azari, all won the Apple Blossom, not having raced since the Breeders' Cup. Wet Paint, second choice in the morning line for the Apple Blossom. And with that, we welcome in our reporter, starting with Maggie Wolfendale, standing by trackside. Maggie, uh, honor to lady. In this distaff division, perhaps right now, not a household name. By the time the sun sets tomorrow, that could all change. assert herself as one of the leaders in this division, Lafitte, as Honor DeLady last year, she spent the bulk of her career on the turf and the synthetic, but since returning to it uh, last September, she's now recorded two graded stakes wins out of three starts in this type of condition. Last time out, we saw her dominating the grade three Royal Delta, uh, in which it was her first start as a four-year-old. Always like when these horses take the next step forward with their next, uh, with their first race as an older horse. Now, she will get the riding services for the first time of Hall of Famer Javier Castellano. And if you're familiar with our show, you're familiar with what Javier Castellano was able to achieve in 2023, capturing his first Kentucky Derby and his first Belmont Stakes win, which were one of 
two of seven grade one wins, 17 greatest stakes wins overall. And so Javier Castellano climbing aboard yet again, um, or excuse me, for the first time here aboard Honor Delady in tomorrow's grade one apple blossom. But as you guys had mentioned at the top of the show, Adair Manor, she's installed as the morning line favorite. And for more on her, as Bob Baffert brings her to Arkansas, we check in with Paula Duca. Polly? Thanks, Maggie. And yeah, happy Apple, Apple Blossom weekend to you as well. And yes, and Bob Baffert is sending in a charge here with the Dare Manor, who is your morning line favorite, and deservedly so, right? I mean, she did go on a big win streak last year. Uh, you could probably say against maybe suspect competition. And then she went to the Breeders' Cup. Um, and, you know, the distaff, I think the mile and eighth was just too much for her. You know, there was some problems late in that race, but I don't think it, it did anything with the outcome. A lot of people will say that she came back and was a little disappointing. She lost a sweet ass tech of the horse on the front end here, and she just could not run her down in the beholder. Uh, but if you look at her numbers, her, her numbers actually went up. And I do like the way she finished this race. She does have tactical speed. I think what they got more out of this race, Lafitte, is that they think now maybe she'll be able to rate a little bit. Where before she was kind of a one type of horse that needed to go to the front end. I think that horse, talking to Jimmy Barnes, showed them that maybe she can come from off the pace a little bit. Named after Ireland's iconic five-star hotel and golf course, Adair Manor happens to be home of the 2027 Ryder Cup. Uh, Raj, a difficult segue back to the Apple Blossom. If you could ride any of the fillies or mares in the Apple Blossom, if you had your choice, who would it be? Undoubtedly, Adair Manor. And here's the reason why. She has enough, she's like a jockey's dream to ride. She has enough tactical speed where she puts you right in the race. In this kind of race, it doesn't really have a, a clear amount of speed in it. So she put you in a, in a good position. And also, she has recency over some of her main competition, like wet paint. Adair Manor just raced a, a month and a half ago, so or less than a month ago. So she's you know coming off a lifetime best. She's in peak form has the right tactical speed. She has a, the, the ball is in her court. I remember last year's Apple Blossom, absolutely epic with Clarier running down Secret Oath. What will happen in the 60th edition? You'll find out tomorrow on America's a Day at the Races. Uh, as for today's races, brought to you by Claiborne Farm. First of 10 from Oakland in about half hour. Late pick five starts in the sixth and Aqueduct pick six carryover. 23,000 starts in the third featured event. Good allowance race, race number seven. As always, invite you to play with us, NairaBets.com. Join today, play the action on our program and more while earning up to a $200 deposit match. Sign up, promo code BONUS200, and earn up to a $200 deposit match after your first deposit. But any track, anywhere, anytime, join now, NairaBets.com to earn your $200 deposit match. As we say hello to our friends in New York, Acacia Clement, Andy Serling standing by at Aqueduct on the set. Guys, what's going on at the Big A? Hey, Luffy and Raj, good to hear from both of you. We look forward to all of the exciting action coming up at Oaklawn later today. But Andy, we have the pick six carryover on the card today. As Lafitte mentioned, very salty race in the second, arguably a Peter Pan prep. And then the feature race seven a little bit later today. A prep for a prep. That's right. Yeah, no, I agree. Second is interesting race. Seems to be wide open among really four of the contenders in there. But uh, we had a little rain. Uh, we were able to seal the track. I think there's a couple sprinkles now, but it does feel like we'll probably be sealed all day. But at least the rain came after we raced, so the track might be in a little bit better shape if we had run through it. Yeah, we'll see how that weather does impact the car today. But as Andy said, on the forecast, looks like going to lighten up throughout the afternoon. Taking a look at race seven, though, the allowance feature on the car today, six furlongs on the main track for three-year-olds and upward. And the way that the racetrack is uh, playing, how the how wet it is as we get on to race seven could impact a couple of the horses in here. We'll start off, though, Andy, with a horse that won on a, main, on a wet main track last time out, Be the Boss, over excellent timing. They'll rematch in this spot. Yeah, I think Be the Boss is going to be favored in here, and I think he should be. He's been consistent. He's been good. He drew well on the outside. The pace got a little bit changed when we saw some scratches, but the truth is I don't think any sane people ever thought Linda Rice was going to run Where's the Boss. She scratches a lot, and that horse obviously was going to be in a 
speed-laden field. I just didn't think there was any chance he'd be running back. And there is pace. Excellent timing, though. Seems to get loose and get caught every time. And be the boss caught him last time. He's very dangerous to do it again. He's a logical horse. And a uh, drawing outside may help his chances. And I think drawing inside with Radio Red and the wet track is going to prove problematic. Radio Red, who has not had a good record on a wet track. Now, last time out, it was pouring on Gotham Day. But uh, you brought up the point that I think is really key about why we saw him run so well. He was always in the clear. He never had to face any sort of kickback, which normally he does not handle well. And even with the scratches, this pace is more competitive than last time. And I don't think he's really fast enough to be clear. He also drew inside, as you say. So I don't think his problem was so much with handling a wet track as much as he may not handle the kickback in a wet surface. And I think drawing inside in this field and with more speed in here, I don't think he's going to get the same kind of cozy trip he got last time. So I'm against him and why I think Be The Boss can be favored. Now, I do prefer the force in the far outside in this race, so Brigade, but I think that Be The Boss is the one to beat. Be the boss in New York, Red, one last time out going into this open first level allowance company onto the next step in his conditions. We'll take a look at the opener, though, to kick off the live racing action today at Aqueduct. We have maidens to start off the day, seven furlongs on the main track, a maiden claiming 20,000. There is the number three creation of Adam, who's six to five on the board right now. We'll talk a little bit more about him and the rest of the field after this, the opener from the Big A coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I do not hear myself. You're watching America's Day at the races. We have the first race of the day at Aqueduct coming up next. Main track listed as muddy, some light rain falling right now. As we mentioned before, on the radar, it looks like it should lighten up throughout the afternoon as horses are getting ready to get the call for riders up the first race of the day. And Andy Creation of Adam, a short price right now, the number three, was in for the waiver last time out off that layoff. He was, but they're happy to get the 20 this time, and he's not coming off a long enough layoff this time to get the waiver. But uh, listen, he's the horse to beat. His two races are fast enough from a speed figure standpoint to win this race. Having said that, he makes his debut in August. Then he comes back five months later. Now he comes back three months later. He ran fast enough to win this race 
but he didn't do any running last time. I mean, they ran one, two around the track, but he couldn't even hold third. And Citizen Mack, who's his chief competition on paper, actually caught him for third. I get that he's the horse to beat, but I I'll tell you, Keisha, I find him very tough to take at a super short price. Six to five right now on the board as we welcome in our boots on the ground here in New York. Champion jockey Richard Migliori with us. Richie, hope you're staying dry. What are your thoughts on the opener here? Yeah, we've kind of kind of got a steady drizzle coming down now, and I'm underneath the uh, overhang here at the in the aqueduct paddock. Um, we'll start with the three horse uh, creation of Adam. This is a big, solid son of Connect. I mean, you can see the curling influence there. Big, strong horse. I mean, he feels to me like he's just a little bit less exposed than some of the others, and that's probably one of the re reasons that he's as short a price. The four horse Majestic Arc could not look any better. Lolita Shiv Mangle does a really good job. Our horses look good. A trainer can only get as much ability as a horse has in them out of them uh and uh you know this horse really looks good and the six horse king of france guys this horse has been a handful it took them about over eight minutes to get him saddled he kept rearing up finally the outrider was able to stand in front of him keep him calm enough but he was very very tough here in the paddock Richie, thank you. Well, Andy brought up a very good point. He's the king of France. He's certainly not going to be relaxed right. here in the paddock. At First of all, can't we just call him Le Roi <laughs> in here? Well done. The king of France. Yeah. I love it. King of France, he's 5-1 to one right now. Been a handful back in the paddock to see if he settles out down out on the racetrack. We'll meet the post parade, though, starting off with Citizen Mac. He's 0 for 11. He has many back race good enough to win it, but he's not the horse he was when he was running those back figures. But still, in this field, he has to be considered a major contender. 5-2 to two right now. Here is a first-time starter, Viejo Verde. No money at all for a first-time starter who, if he has a future based in his pedigree, I think you'll agree, Acacia, it's on the grass. Certainly. On the bottom side, all turf. There's your favorite creation of Adam. Uh, listen, he's the horse to beat, but I did not like his last effort, and I don't love the fact that he basically runs by appointment only. Here is the number four, Majestic Arc. I'm with the MIG. Leadership Mongols horses seem to show up more often than not. And this is a horse that's been against the track two straight times with wide trips against gold rails. They are automatic plays for me. Six to one on that one here is the biggest price on the board, the five Model S. I, listen, I try to make a case for everybody in yeah. here, considering I don't particularly love the favorite. But I just don't know what the real case to be made for this horse is. And there he is, His Highness, the King of France. <laughs> right. I, I tried to make a case for him. He cuts back a little bit in distance. He engaged with the winner of the race, who I think was one or two to five last time out. But then he just fell apart. But he is cutting back in distance. He's lightly raced, but he has not really done much running in his races. You can follow along and get all the stats on the horses, trainers, and jockeys in today's races with free Echo Base past performances. Visit naira.com slash TV schedule to download your free past performances on all the races on today's show. There is the number four Majestic Arc. Got some high marks from Richie back in the paddock. And Andy, I know you have interest in this horse. Yeah, I mean, it, listen. Oh, I, I am a big believer that you should pay attention to tracks that have extreme track biases. Mm -hmm. And his race two back on January 18th, we have seen quite a few horses that ran wide that day come back and improve immeasurably in subsequent starts. And last time out, that was another day that he was on the outside against a gold rail. In fact, the winner, Midnight Express, is running later today. He got a very skillful ride using the rail to his advantage. And he has figures that hover around close enough to win this race. Going out for a trainer, I feel like her horses tend to overachieve. She doesn't have any killers in her barn. And he's a bit of a price. And, and at the end of the day, I am just not picking the three or one to win this race. I, I can't. I don't mind betting the four horse in this race. I'm going to bet a horse against the bias, and there's no way that I am betting either the three or one, even though they may run one, two. For more on that horse, let's go back to Richie. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Andy. I think that the four uh, Majestic Arc is the most reasonable uh, you know, option if you're going away from either one of the favorites. He looks fantastic from a physical perspective. I love the way he warmed up. I, I'm a Lolita Shevangle fan. I think she does a really good job. Her horses always look good. Um, if I was picking purely on you know, physical appearance, I'm picking the four Majestic Arc. But it boils down to this for me. I'm looking at it and go, who would I want to ride? And that would be the three creation of Adam. 
Fair enough. Richie, thank you. Creation of Adam will try to bank on those two solid races that he has run so far. And, and a point that Richie mentioned earlier to Andy, he's only run twice, whereas you do have some in here, especially thinking of the one Citizen Mac who have had quite a few chances. Um, absolutely. I, I don't disagree. I mean, that's a, a fairly rudimentary concept with, with Maidens, and that's why one of the reasons he's favored over the one is he's had two chances and the one has had 11. Having said that, I don't like the fact that this horse runs as infrequently as he does. Mm -hmm. I just, it concerns me. And he's run fast enough. I thought his last race was abysmal. The speed held together, he sat behind them, and he still got packed by, passed by Citizen Mac. And he's not really supposed to make the lead in this race. Both the six and maybe even the five are faster than him. So I'm not confident he's going to be a horse that's going to be cruising along on the front end. And listen, by the way, I picked him second, and he is the horse to beat. I'm not yeah, arguing sure. against that, and I'm not, and I don't think Richie disagrees with me. I don't think this horse Richie's betting at seven to five. I think the difference is is between Richie and I is I don't mind betting the four here. Mm -hmm. Now, I will pick favorites that I don't bet on, but I won't be betting somebody else. I don't want to endorse this horse, and I don't mind betting a little bit in the four because he's been against the track a couple of times, yeah. and the trainer seems to overachieve. But I'm not going to be at all surprised when Creation of Adam wins this race. And you're taking a shot with an eight to one here in a spot where the favorite's even money and maybe has right. some questions. And to be fair, when it's a made in 20, odds are... Pretty much everybody in the field is going to have some questions to answer. Just a fact. We'll see how they respond today at moving towards the starting gate for race one. As we mentioned, the second race today, um, just a field of five, but a, a pretty strong group as well. And some maybe a little later developing three-year-olds who could potentially make some noise in the second half, not going to the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the second race is very, very interesting. You know, you could have four more horses with no chance in there and have a nine-horse field with five no-hopers. We've got a five-horse field with four horses yeah. that are very evenly matched. Loading in for race one of the day, main track sloppy now as that light rain continues to fall. Even money on creation of Adam, just making the third start of his career. The voice of Aqueduct standing by, Chris Griffin has the call here at the Big A. King of France. Is in. All set. And they're off. Hopping in the air at the start was Viejo Verde, the early trailer. Lined up on the front end here as they quickly come out of the chute to Majestic Arc. It's the first call. Majestic Arc is on the lead and crosses over here, gets right over to the rail. Just behind that is going to be Model S is now stalking and gets closer to this pace setter as those two clear off. Then towards the far outside, that's King of France. And now looking for some clear running room, that's Creation of Adam. And Creation of Adam just had to steady there as they hooked up with the backstretch is now a challenging third. It's another three and a half lengths back to Citizen Mac and the slow starting Viejo Verde is the trailer 22 and four the opening quarter mile here as they work into the far turn majestic arc has got to lead it's majestic arc who's up by two and a half lengths now call it three is really pumping up the margin here under drive at the rail in a tight spot the four to five favorite creation of adam is trying to get loose here is now inside of rivals is trying to move forward as they start to drift well off the rail and they approach a quarter mile left to go still in hand that's majestic our creation of adam model s is under a full drive and king of france very wide the leader is just skipping away it's majestic arc at seven to one trying to pull off the upset here in the opener creation of adam is all in here and running out of time with a furlong left to go from the back citizen mac is running on late it is majestic arc with a 16th left to go is three and a half lengths clear it's all majestic arc to win the opener majestic arc over creation of adam citizen mac then a photo between model s and king of france final running time one at 24 and four Majestic Arc with the win, wire to wire, Sammy Camacho Jr. putting him on the front end. Nice pick, Andy Serling. 
Thanks. Nice ride by Sammy Camacho going to the front. You gotta, you always love it if you bet a horse like this and you don't expect it to be in the lead. You see the rider get aggressive and go like that. You feel as though at least you have a bit of a chance. And, and, and this was obviously a very good move by Sammy and give Luita credit as well. And she's one of these trainers, if you watch her carefully, her horses continuously overachieve. They always look fantastic. Yeah. Too. I mean, you can only do so much with the horses you have in your barn, but I, I believe that if you think one of her horses is live in a race, you should never, ever be afraid of bed. I think she gets them to run as well as they can. And he found the right field and creation of Adam. I, he was second by default. And you know something? Bet against him next time he shows up as well. He just didn't really have any real run here. I mean, weren't the three and one, second and third by default? A little bit. And... Uh... Nobody really running much beyond the winner. Majestic arc put on the front end by Sammy Camacho Jr. Gets the job done. Four, three, one, five. Seven to one winner on top for Andy in the opener. We'll bring you prices and more when we come back on America's Day at the races. In the Pilgrim Stakes, they come on for the finish. Annapolis by a head. It is Annapolis in front. It is Annapolis to win the Coolmore Turf Mile. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. Olympiad leads American Revolution. Olympiad gets the gold in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Welcome back, Oaklawn Park, in case you can't see what that says on your screen in massive letters. Coverage is always brought to you in part by Naira Betts. But any track, anywhere, anytime, visit NairaBets.com or download the Naira Betts app to get started. About to get this Oaklawn party started. Eight minutes out, race one, $20,000 claimers, non-winners, three lifetime, all for sale. Most two for something, six furlong sprint, heavy favorite. Number three is Ram at seven to five. Uh, Raj, no pressure, but Andy picking winners at Aqueduct. So, yeah, we need you to work your magic here. We're going to one up on Andy here. <laughs> Who you like? I like a long shot in this race. Yeah. The seven colorful natives. 16 to one. 16 That'll to work. one. I think that he's the speed of work. the speed in here. Second off the layoff. Quicker than pressure? Number five? Quicker than pressure. All right. He, he was in front of pressure last time early in the same race. So Something to watch right from the start. Raj likes an outsider, colorful native, post parade. There's League of Legends dropping in class today. Yeah, this deep closer is looking for his first win since 2022. It's been a while. Uh, Ram, who ran in the 2021 Preakness. Our current favorite has a lot of angles. Second off the claim, drops in class, and cuts back in distance. Lots to work with there except the price. And then Captain Jack, a perfectly named son of McCracken, the five. Uh, pressure, who, who you believe colorful native is quicker than getting out of the blocks. Yeah, pressure chased the pace in the same level last time, held on well for second after a duel. 
Hot Ticket. Expect him to be far back early. That's not where we expect to see Colorful Native. Rajiv's top selection at 15 to 1 in the opener. Yeah, let's start with this juicy price here. The speed of the speed, second off the layoff. I think he can take this field wire to wire. It's been a while for several of these Raj Super Constitution. Last win, September 2021. Credible fort at the distance last time, getting beat four lengths, um, and good outside post. Uh, the runners in the first of 10 at Oaklawn Park, post time six minutes as we check in with uh, Maggie. Uh, we have the horses getting ready for this opener, but also what are you seeing preparation wise for some bigger races on the horizon? Well, Steve Asmussen sends out a powerful threesome Lafitte in tomorrow's Count Fleet as he will send out the even money favorite in here, Skelly. And he's pretty easy to spot. I know that Rajiv Mirage is uh, going to catch up with his rider, um, Ricardo Santana. But look at that bit he has on. He wears an extended cage bit in addition to an extension blinker covering his right outside eye. It's something that he's pretty much worn his entire career, but he's a big, powerful horse. You know, he's a little bit of your atypical type of sprinter in that he's got a little bit more size and scope to him, but he brings intensity, and he has brought intensity to the paddock, to school here, and get his practice in, along with his fellow stablemates slash foes that he's going to take on tomorrow, including Rivet. He's a real cool horse. I mean, this is just what we say is a dude. Uh, he's a short, compact, he is your typical sprinter. And he's just taking it all in, looking and talking um, to Steve's assistant here, Darren. He said that he's such a cool horse in the mornings to be around, to get on, and you can see it watching him school. You know, the look of Eagles, well, uh, Rivet has got it. And also fellow Maryland bred Jackson Traveler in here schooling as well. And he's coming off the back of a big win last time out in the prep race uh, for this one in the grade three Whitman. More. So looking forward to seeing these three throw it down for the Asmussen Barn tomorrow. But as far as this race right now, we see Ram as a heavy favorite. Now, guys, this is a horse that I'm familiar with going back a ways. And he once upon a time bolted. I mean, and he would do it several times. But what I noticed for his first start for Norm Cassie was that it didn't look as though he wanted to get out at all whatsoever. It's just that the mile and a 16th proved to be too far for him. Now, he was wired that day by Lip Say Bliss in a tougher spot, so dropping down here to the 20, he looks fantastic. I have nothing wrong with him. I see nothing wrong with him physically. He's wearing kind of your typical horse that might be a little bit tough to control, just a Halton bit, and the uh, drop nose band. That's what those horses tend to typically wear. Really relaxed in the paddock, so what I've I like to see a little bit more energy from this horse with the turn back. Yes, especially since he's such a short price. Now, the horse that I thought looked best overall is number eight, Super Constitution, but he's a bit pace compromised. He looks fantastic, though. I mean, he's dappled head to toe, great forward energy, really healthy. But the problem is, in this spot, is that he lacks any sort of early pace, and I feel like that compromises his uh, his chances today. I do agree with Raj that number seven in here could be dangerous as a speed of the speed, colorful native, but Polly, as we check in with you, League of Legends, he's taking a drop of class and could have the class edge. Yeah, this is a confusing race because when you get to the favorite in here, Ram, I, no, no argue that the horse should be the favorite because of the drop in class, but, you know, the horse in here to play would be the five. I mean, just by looking at the rest of the horses, if you look at the rest of the horses, okay, your second and third choice right now, Ram, 0 for 14 the last two years. The two League of Legends, 0 for 13 the last two years. The eight horse in here, Super Constitution, 0 for 10. I am sorry, Rajiv, the seven, Colorful Native, 0 for eight the last two years. A combined 0 for 45. The last two years. So the four, five, and six are the only two horse, three horses that have won a race in the last two years. And the five is in by far the best form out of all of them. And he's a five-year-old. I would think the four as a four-year-old might have more time to improve. I get it. The three on the class drop for me is the, the danger in here to the five pressure. I just think that when I look at the numbers and I just look at the form, I just feel like the five is in great form, loves it here in Oaklawn, five for eight in the try, and you're getting five to two. Uh, and like I said, the other horses just haven't won races. I will say this, if I was going to take one of the O for horses, 
I'm kind of with League of Legends. I think this horse might get a little pace to run into. Johnny Court had a win last week at a big price. And I think this horse is set up for a good race and finds the right field. But I'm going with pressure. Not David Bowie's pressure, but the horse pressure, Lafitte. <laughs> you, you had me at confusing race, <laughs> Paul, this first of 10 at Oaklawn Park. And you see the, the, the fans here and expecting a big crowd for one of the biggest weekends of the year. Tomorrow, that grade one apple blossom, a, a majority of the, of the punters, the handicappers siding with Ram at eight to five. Uh, uh, Raj is not siding with the chalk, anything but going with colorful native number seven at 11 to one as the uh, warm-up continues. Yeah, and I do agree with Paulie about recency, right? In these kind of races, when you see horses- Just tell him he's due. He has you been know, a long you, time Paul, due. You're due, you're due to pick a winner. <laughs> but you know, there is a, a question mark for a lot of these horses. They haven't been at the top of their game, haven't been able to win in a couple of years. And that becomes uh, ha habitual at, at some point. Um, but this is the reason why I'm kind of going with Colorful Native. He, he was running in different kinds of races over the past two years. He's running going a mile um, against, you know, state bred horses. And now he comes off a layoff and, uh, to, and raced in March and made this big improvement. So I'm hoping that this is just an improved horse that we're going to see a, a, a different horse today. That's and it's wishful thinking at some point. Um, but when you're picking the longest odds in the race, it, there's going to be some knocks against the horse, and we're just trying to find some value, some hidden sure, value. Absolutely, especially in a race like this where a little will go a long way, right? Um, I, I know these things are hard to predict. Colorful native, who you think is the quickest now, what do you want to see up the, up the back stretch? Is he three quarters of a length quicker than? Pressure number five, do you expect him to be two lengths in front? What what are you hoping to see up the backstretch from Colorful Native to give him a chance to steal this thing? What I don't want to see is a head-to-head -head duel. I want him to be able to get the lead as easy as possible without being restrained or without being um, dueling out head-to-head. -head. A horse can go faster but do it less pressure because they're not engaged with their rivals. When a horse is engaged, looking at one in the eye, they get competitive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that burns out the gas a little faster. If they go, they run faster, get a clear lead, and they get to start regulating their breathing, they get more relaxed, sometimes they, they burn the fumes slower that way, and they'll have more left in the tank. Take that deep breath. Go as fast as he can, as far as he can. Colorful Native, good luck with your long shot. Number seven, Colorful Native. Ram, though, the favorite at eight to five. Matt Dinnerman standing by with the call. First of ten from Oaklawn live on Fox Sports 2. And running at Oaklawn Park. Colorful Native wins the start. Broke alertly is up on the pace with Captain Jack. These two won two. Colorful Native strides clear. Captain Jack takes a hold and will take back to second. Ram strides up and moves level with Captain Jack down the backside. Pressure and the fourth position three wide. Another length and a half to Super Constitution. Three more to League of Legends and Hot Ticket well behind as no early pace with a half mile to go. Captain Jack tipping off the rail to come and challenge colorful native who holds the inside spot colorful native three quarters of a length ahead captain jack made an early bid towards that front runner begins to give way ram about to pass him taking the second position pressure tries to get into the race and he's moving forward within two lengths of the lead super constitution right behind the leaders trying to get outside league of legends circling the field it's wide open coming off the turn colorful native cuts the corner far outside league of legends with pressure they're moving as a pair Ram is there battling for the win as well. It's pressure with a head lead. Ram alongside in the second spot. League of Legends after making that early move on the far turn flattens out. Ram pressure side by side. Ram on the inside with the head lead. Pressure right there, but Ram got the win. Ram, I believe, got it over pressure. Super Constitution and League of Legends. Who says you won't see a thrilling horse race in a restricted $20,000 claimer. Bang, bang, finish, ram, and pressure hitting the wire simultaneously. Wow. Yeah, and it seemed like Ram got his nose down. At the eight pole, pressure had the momentum and actually went by Ram. Ricardo Santana switched sticks to the left hand. It brought his horse out to engage pressure. And when Ram saw him, looked him in the eye, he actually found a bit extra.
Former Preakness starter, Ram. No Preakness types in here. Let's go back to the start. And this is what you wanted to see, Raj. Colorful native. Breaks sharp with Ramsey Zimmerman. He's going to establish a lead early. And then Harry Hernandez on Captain Jack hits the accelerator as a rider. Let's say you're Ramsey Zimmerman. How aggravating is it when all of a sudden here comes someone else going to apply pressure when things were set so nicely in the early stages? Oh, th this is annoyance at the most because <laughs> if I was Ramsey Zimmerman here, I'd be looking over and be like, where are you going? Um, you know, I'm 20 Where's to 1. Fire? I'm expecting to be, once I set the stretch, I'm expecting to, you know, be left alone. And, and to see them trying to chase me and duel me, I'd be really upset. And he battled. Colorful Nada battled. But in the end, Ram, the, pressure. Well, this is actually a, a really close finish, and it's, I don't think it's official yet. Oh, there it is. Uh, we got the official. Uh, I stopped breathing, Raj. Yeah. Don't do that, man. <laughs> that was a, a, a big bob there. Good bob for pressure, but it still wasn't enough to get the head down. 3-5-2-8 Ram. And, and yeah, again, it just goes to these aren't. We're going to be talking about grade one Phillies and Mares in the Apple Blossom. And top class sprinters tomorrow in the Count Fleet. These are the lower level claiming types, but that doesn't mean they don't put forth stellar performances. Two throwback older horses just slugging it out in the stretch. Exciting way to kick mean off the, the race. We can't find some value too, right? There you go. We'll, Absolutely. No grade one winners today, but we're going to find some value. But we will be talking about some grade one winners a little bit later on. And just getting started at Oaklawn on one of the biggest weekends of the season. Great weather, great crowds, great racing. What'd you expect? It's Apple Blossom Weekend in Hot Springs. Live look, Oaklawn Park. Welcome back. America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2. Maggie Wolfendale, Paul LaDuca, Rajiv Mirage, I'm Lafitte Pinkai. And this one will get the blood pumping. Exciting opener by inches with that tail still going. Ram started in the Preakness three years ago, entering the winner's circle in this $20,000 restricted claimer. Hard, hot victory, Raj, and finally earning that elusive third career win. And what a way to start the day, you know. Like you said, we can get some great entertainment even from some of these um, lower level horses. And this was a really a slug fest between Ram and Pressure. And um, to see Ram come back after being passed 
re-engage pressure and stick his nose down. Just shows the grit of some of these athletes. You've won races like that. You've lost races like that for Travis Wales walking back to the jocks room thinking you had it right there in front of you only to be denied by the slightest of margins. How frustrating for a rider. And you're going to be thinking a hundred different ways how you could make up that one nose of a difference. <laughs> Even if you rode the optimal race, when races are won and lost by such close margins that you can always find the needle in the haystack of a reason why you, what you could have done differently. And that's what really drives you crazy. Mr. Wales, you just got to go back, <laughs> move on. It is what it is. You rode great. Take it, well, like take quarterback it, it throwing is. an interception, jockeys have to have that short memory. He'll be back riding some contenders throughout the course of the program. We're just getting started here at Oak Lawn and in New York, Acacia. Horses in the paddock for the second. It's a good one, Lafitte. As we mentioned, potentially horses that could go on in the future to the Peter Pan. Maybe some later developing three-year-olds here going a mile and an eighth in this first level allowance. That was a quick look at Corporate Power, who's two to one right now. Andy broke his maiden last time out. Yes, it was a win at the distance, a very workmanlike effort for this expensive son of Curlin. He's a work in progress for mm -hmm. Sean Begay. As you can see, if you watch his last race, he's lugging in the stretch. Yep. He got it done and he's talented and the races were legitimately fast. He's a good horse, but he is a horse. And, and, and when he gets over those bad habits, He's going to be even better. He's a major player in this kind race. Kind of one of those typical Suge McGay. He needs patience. He's going to improve with every race, and we'll see what he does today. There he is stepping on track. Javier Castellano going to be aboard well, again. Well, you got the right trainer if you've got a horse that needs patience and time. And, and one thing about Suge, he will not force a, a, a square peg into a round hole. He's going to take the right you know, steps going forward with a horse who's already run fast in both his races. He's got two coming out of the Gotham, including this one, Lightline. I think both the two and three are potential speeds. And while Unique Insight has more speed on paper, Acacia, I think that Manny's going to be aggressive with Lightline. There is Unique Insight. He went by. Here's the other one out of the Gotham Capital Idea. I like this horse. I, I, I thought his maiden win was impressive. And last time out, he didn't run that badly in the Gotham. It's just that nobody was making up any ground. And he had that outside post, kind of caught wide early. New gelding. Here's Brown. Don't stop. Yeah, uh, Sire Big Brown, obviously. And he would have to improve immeasurably to get any piece of this. This is a very, very competitive race. And I, you know, I picked the four. I don't think he's supposed to be an overwhelming favorite here. I think they're wow, very evenly matched, these horses. Too. You can earn a $25 bonus today by playing with Naira Bets. Bet at least $75 each on Aqueduct, Keeneland, and Oaklawn and earn a $25 bonus. Win or lose, all you have to do is opt in at NairaBets.com. There is the one corporate power, $925,000 son of Curlin, and he faced first time out that very salty, very, very fast maiden special weight with Speakeasy and Victory Avenue running one, two. Unfortunately, neither of those two have run back yet, so we don't really know yet how good that actually was that race. Speakeasy was scratched, scratched in the post the parade track. when he ran off in the Fountain yep. of Youth Got loose and scratched as the co-favorite. Avenue was scratched before the race. Right, he's the mage connections yes. in New York bred and obviously has some issues, but uh, it was a very fast race and he backed it up with his effort, but watch him. He's lugging in here. He's yeah. giving Javier he's Castellano kind of pro problems. Right to the rail right there. there you see but Cast it. Javier wants to ride him so much that he's waiting until after the race to get in a plane to go see Rajiv. Down in uh, well, Oakland. I know he's very excited. We, about we that. haven't decided whether or not Javier is actually going to ride in the in the Outblast. Remember, if he's going to take Rajiv's job and Rajiv is going to ride in the Outblast. We're going <laughs> to find out about that. What's That's going the on plot with that? Twist. But, uh, Rajiv is coming out of retirement. Th there, this is a good horse. <laughs> yep. And you know, when we start seeing it, he, he may well win here. And I'm surprised, frankly, that he's not favored in here. Um, he's run well in both of his races. I just worry a little bit about his bad habits. For more on these horses on the track, let's check in with Richie McLeary. Yeah, briefly, guys, just talking about jockeys and flying around. Obviously, Javier Castellano will be leaving for Arkansas. Johnny Velasquez left Kentucky last night, flew to uh, Palm Beach, stayed in a hotel there. Uh, got up early, went to Palm Beach Downs, worked fierceness, and he's already back at Keeneland. He got there in plenty of time to ride. It was a direct flight from Fort Lauderdale back to Lexington, a uh, whirlwind trip, but he got to work his uh, derby horse and uh, didn't hear how he went, but I do know that Johnny made that kind of arduous journey to stick with, and the good ones are worth doing that for. Um, let's talk horses here. The three, uh, Unique Insight. This is a, such an attractive son of Gunrunner. There's such a great balance to him, and I, I agree with Andy. I, I think he plays out to be 
if not the speed, one of the speeds, and, and really making a nice impression. You would expect nothing less from a, a Chad Brown runner. Horse that really stood out, and I like on paper as well, is the four capital idea. He adds just a very short cheater blinker cup, just a little bit to inhibit his peripheral vision. Sometimes it just gives horses a little bit more focus. Uh, <laughs> it says the comment one paced uh, in the Gotham. I think that that kind of bodes well for him going the mile and an eighth. And also, like Andy alluded to, that the track that day was just kind of the horses that were forward stayed on. And, uh, you know, it was hard to make up a lot of ground. But to me, he looks like a mile and an eighth from a physical perspective, should really be in his wheelhouse. And I think he'll just continue to grind. Hopefully he gets good forward position. I don't think you're going to want to give yourself way too much to do on today's racetrack. All right, Richie, thank you. Capital Idea adding blinkers for the first time as we're taking a look at his maiden win two starts back uh, in January, which was on a wet track. And Christoph was saying the addition of the blinkers today is because he didn't feel in his last two works he had shown as much punch in the morning. So that's the addition of the blinkers to add a little bit to him here, but a feeling always that he would appreciate stretching out around the two turns. Do you think he was excited by that little rain outfit that Christoph was uh, rocking down in the, in the, uh, <laughs> the paddock? Uh, I had a text and tell it's not raining him out, anymore. So. Um, <laughs> I like this horse, and, and I agree with Richie. I think he'll be forward. I think he'll be sitting behind the two and three in a very good position here. I agree. I don't think you're going to see an enormous amount of separation. It'll be interesting watching this race because, first of all, there's going to be at least one, if not more, good horses are going to lose this race because mm -hmm. this is a talented field. And I think you could see stakes in the future of a number of these yeah. horses. You've already seen it, the two in stake races going backwards. I know that unique insight is the speed if you just sort of on the raw, who's the fastest horse early. But I really think that Manny Franco is going to come out riding light line. First of all, he's inside of him, and that's the way Manny rides. But also, look at light line's early races. When he was more forward, he actually ran his better races. And I think that he's going to use that speed because of the way the track is and everything. And I believe that because of that, he's going to make unique insight's job a little bit harder. And I'm not sure that unique insight on paper rates to beat this field unless he has a pace advantage. And I just think the light line probably takes away a potential pace advantage, maybe evens things out. But listen, I'm not going to be surprised by any of these horses yeah. winning this race. And light line, you look at his last race where he was kind of off the pace, but he was in a far outside post. Capital Idea was the furthest outside, and Lightline was just one in. And though Lightline broke well, he, like Capital Idea, was never able to clear and get into any position with a race that was dominated forward. And, I mean, the speed in that race was El Rio, was, 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 was El Grande O, oh, mm -hmm. with the horse who ran very well to be second in our Bayshore as yeah. well. So Max those are already fast already. horses. Yeah. I mean, there's a big, big difference between that kind of speed and the speed yeah. in this race. And right, I mean, you're talking about they were still only, you know, two to less than four lengths, two lengths and four mm -hmm. lengths out of it. So they were clearly going fast enough to be extremely forward in this race. Lightline, who finished third in the Withers behind Uncle Heavy and El Grandeo. Two starts back, going the mile and an eighth. We'll see what Manny Franco does with him, tactically speaking. Back to unique insight for a moment. Um, as he finally put everything together last time out, he's the half-brother to Albany Stakes winner Drake's Passage. Another one who kind of fooled his connections early to think he might be turf. You know, it's funny looking at them. They're, they're very similar with horses that well, maybe take some time to come to hand. But Chad Brown said that to me yeah. when he ran him on the dirt first time. He said, I originally thought this might be a turf horse, but then I saw because of the damn side that Christoph kind of got fooled w with the New York bread, mm -hmm. and so he said, I'm going to run the dirt. He didn't run well. He said, okay, now I'll go back to the grass. Well, he ended up eventually being right, and mm -hmm. the instincts that Christoph had were, were correct as well in going the dirt. And listen, he's the kind of horse like Drake's Passage. Maybe he's just a horse that need a little time yeah. before he started showing his best. He can win here, and is a very fair price at 4-1. to one. 8 to 5 now on Capital Idea with the addition of those blinkers going in a salty group, though a compact group, here in race number two. Chris Griffin standing by with the call. Brown don't stop. Goes in. All set. And they're off. Good break from in between horses. Unique insight right out towards the front test. Early speed there at the rail. That's corporate power is now going to be settled into the third spot is out wider. That's capital idea. But they chase unique insight 
Eric can't sell into that first turn. Just off of them, that's Capital Idea. Is now comfortable stalking here in second. Tightly at the rail is Corporate Power in third. Gets passed. On the far outside, it's a wide run here for Brown. Don't stop. Wants to have some forward momentum and get up there with the leader. The trailer in a tightly bunched field is Lightline. As they work to the back stretch, it's Unique Insight who's in front. 24 and 1 for that easy opening quarter there. It's 7 to 2. It's Unique Insight who's doling out the fractions. Capital Idea is right there within range. No excuses. Is just stalking this pace set is now within a half length of the lead at the rail being encouraged to move forward that's corporate power moves in tandem with light line they are now third and fourth as brown don't stop still wide is the trailer 47.54 and just cruising along its unique insight unique insights got the lead capital idea with every shot these two start to get away a touch light line is now alone in third is now shoved along third and losing ground there was corporate power is just kind of stalling in that fourth spot the trailer Tailing off is Brown don't stop, but they've got to get to Unique Insight. It's Unique Insight, who's now kicked it up, is up by a length and a half. Eric Kensell has not asked yet on Unique Insight, who approaches the top of the stretch fully in command. Corporate Power is starting to regain some momentum, trying to put together rallies to the inside of Capital Idea, and the center of the racetrack is light line. Can Unique Insight keep going? It's Unique Insight, still up by about two and a half, three lengths. It's Unique Insight finding plenty with a furlong left to go. Corporate Power is trying Trying to commence another rally here up on the outside inside the final 16th. Unique Insight is still clear. Unique Insight, gate to wire. Unique Insight over corporate power. Capital Idea in one minute 48 and four. Unique insight once again, gate to wire. The first two races both won in that fashion. And give Eric Cancel credit, Andy. He was decisive and aggressive right from the very beginning. No question about it. Man, he thought for a second he could go with him, but Eric just was really decisive and outran him from the gate and was able to control wire to wire. I mean, Capital Idea had no excuse. He was stalking comfortably behind him. He just had no answer in the stretch. Corporate Power made a little bit of a solid run here, but the winner ran very, very well. I mean, this is a quick race, and I know the track's probably playing pretty quickly but 148 84 on the front end an honest pace a nice effort by a horse who as you talked about with drake's passage he's coming to his own now a little bit later in his career very similar horses for sure as you did see corporate power with a little bit of a late run still showing some greenness though uh corporate power as he does flip back to his left lead late. He, he, he kind of lugs in, trying to lug in a little bit with the late run, but probably the only one that really made up any ground. Yeah, I mean, at least he ran a little bit behind a horse yeah. that ran extremely well. So, I mean, in, in reality, I think he just kind of lost a horse that just ran a better race. Um, I don't think he ran badly. I mean, obviously, the two just isn't very good. And it's a disappointing effort for Capital Idea because he was right on top of this horse, and he might not have won, but he could have finished with him, and he really had no real answer. And, and a nice performance by the winner. And, and, and we'll see what happens going forward. But I imagine they'll be pointing towards the Peter Pan. Three, one, four, two. Unique insight. Son of Gunrunner getting the job done in gate-to-wire fashion. Back-to-back -back wins now at the mile end. Eighth, when we come back, more Oaklawn discussion of the Great States coming up this weekend. Can Skelly go back to back in the Count Fleet and defend his title tomorrow? And also making his first start back since running in the Riyadh Dirt Sprint. Country Pig 5 combines the best racing from New York with top races from around the country in one bet. Find it in your track venue and play every race day. Races are posted weekly at nyra.com slash cross country. Racelens is the most in-depth product in horse racing with unique features found nowhere else. True odds, predictive analysis, and pace projection. Racelens, it will change the way you follow horse racing and take your game to the next level. But it's all Pinehurst. Grade one winner at two. Very impressive in the runaway Del Mar Veturity. Graded stakes winner at three. Pinehurst so gutsy. The highest earning son of twirling candy. Pinehurst lasted home to win it for the United States. 
States! Bred on the same cross as Gunrunner. Pinehurst. Standing at Walmack. Breeding in New York State just got a whole lot greener. Starting in 2026 with two-year-olds and expanding in 2027 to include three-year-olds and up, New York Reds on the Naira Circuit will be offered purses matching the race's open company counterpart. That's a nearly 20% increase per race compared to 2023. Bowling season is in full swing. There's still time to take advantage of New York's better-than-ever state-bred incentives. Visit naira.com slash nybreds for more info. As they move through the stretch, it's still Skelly. Skelly maintains a daylight lead, and then comes Strobe. Pirate Rick toward the inside, surveillance making up some ground, and Tejano twist on the far outside, but it's going to be Skelly. Skelly takes the count fleet, start to finish. It just sounds like a fast horse. Skelly, a blur in last year's count fleet, Raj. Tomorrow, his title defense. Yeah, I mean, this was an impressive win in the Count Fleet. He earned a 105 speed figure. That's fast. Uh, that, that is fast. And, um, you know, he's a horse with just so much natural speed, like he showed even in his race in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. He carries that speed whichever track he goes to, not just Oakland, but he's six for eight. Six wins and eight starts at Oakland. And this is his backyard where he does his best work. Skelly, trained by Steve Asmussen, no stranger to the Count Fleet winner's circle. Five wins and counting in Oakland signature sprint. You see those names, the totally Jackie's warrior. Might as well be lit up in neon, Raj. I'm not asking you to compare Skelly to Jackie's warrior or Emma Tolley, but, but just how special of a sprinter do you think we're, we're talking about? Well, if you look at the champion sprinter last year, Elite Power, he's retired. So this opens the door. Uh, there's a gaping hole for a horse like Skelly with the opportunity for him to step up and show that he could be one of the premier sprinters in the country. A stable mate retired as well. Gunite, the opportunity for Skelly, who is the uh, top-ranked North American sprinter and even money, morning line favorite in tomorrow's Count Fleet, looking to become the fifth horse to go back-to-back -back in the Count Fleet. Take a look at the field, three-quarter of a mile dash, half-million-dollar purse, eight deep. Steve Asmussen trains three of the eight. Number two, Jackson Traveler. Number seven, Rivet. And number four, Skelly Raj. You referenced his latest, late February, 7,500 miles away, the Riyadh Dirt Sprint in Saudi Arabia. Skelly shoots his shot, but so does Japan's remake. There was so much impressive things about Skelly in this race. Agree. The fact that he sat off two dueling leaders and still finished up showed some growth in his development because he was a horse that's always been speeding off on the lead. He tracked the leaders and still had his run. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to hold off Remake, who is a top class worldwide sprinter. Came back to run really well in the Golden Shaheen with a lot of trouble. Tuz exited that race, dominated in the Golden Shaheen. I guess you have to look at the travel regarding Skelly uh, all the way to Saudi Arabia and back. Uh, any concerns in that regard? Look, history has shown that a lot of horses that have been knocked out of their best after coming back from these long travels overseas. But he's in the conditioner's hands of Steve Asimson. He's one of the best trainers of all time. If he feels like Skelly is good to go, then I have to believe he's good to go. Skelly for Steve Asmussen, who, who has him surrounded with, with the talent of Skelly, and then the, the depth in this stable of high-class sprinters. And Skelly has to go out and try to beat his stable mates. This was the Whitmore right here last month. Rivet battling inside. Jackson Traveler on the attack. Tejano Twist, not trained by Asmussen, finding his stride late, Raj. How productive of a heat do you think this will be, the Whitmore looking ahead to the Count Fleet? Well, the Whitmore has three of the other top contenders in this race other than Skelly. So these are the top four contenders. Skelly, um, Teano Twist, and Jackson Traveler, and Rivet. And three of them coming out of the Whitmore. So it's definitely going to be impactful to this race. Uh, what a finish. Jackson Traveler denying Tejano Twist by a nostril. I asked you the same question regarding the Apple Blossom. If you had your choice, anyone in the Count Fleet, which would you ride? 
I would ride Skelly. I mean, look at Skelly. This horse, he has an opportunity to really step himself up and be the leader of this division. And if I'm Ricardo Santana right now, I'm feeling like this could be my Breeders' Cup sprint horse. Mm -hmm. And for those reasons, this would be the horse that I'd ride. He's been there before. Rode Matoli to victory in the Breeders' Cup sprints for Steve Asmussen. Santana has already won six editions of the Count Fleet. Asmussen looking for a six. We'll see how it all goes down tomorrow. The uh, Count Fleet, the uh, eighth race on the program of the undercard of the Apple Blossom Post time around 4.55 Eastern. Meantime, race two of 10 on the Friday program. Gorgeous afternoon in Hot Springs. Great to have you with us on Fox Sports 2. And getting ready for this post parade, $12,500 maiden claimer. The entry you're looking at right on cue. Speaking of which, Matoli, my bell by the aforementioned superstar Matoli. Yeah, this one had a race for maiden 30, drops in class uh, with the experience now, should be improving. The entry, two for one, getting six to one. There's Miss Tear. The part of the entry that's be coming from way off the pace, but uh, it showed a strong finish last time. Now, Sky Raven draws the rail. Yeah, the second choice in the betting it has natural speed, should be up close early. One cross, debuting Pennsylvania bred. Not much to go by on the paper, but got some into mischief in the bloodline. That'll work, typically. Number four, Frosty Vi. Uh, it, no, he's dropping in class. Not getting much action on the betting. I would have expected this one to be a big favorite with this big drop in class. Zong's Irish Frost, great name, whatever it means. Yeah, the, the current favorite, who is pretty white horse on the track. Five to two, Secret City number six. Uh, not much in her debut. Not much in the debut, and that steps up in class today. Number seven, Contender, Dance My Way, second in her last pair. Yeah, knocking at the door at this level, the very consistent sort. Uh, Miss Mo Mesa, blinkers on, and a class drop. First race wasn't bad at a higher level. Uh, had a tough race last time in a much higher level. Now takes a big drop and blinkers on. Uh, little dabble do ya. Uh, over a year since her last race. Yeah, hasn't run in a long time and just a few works coming back into this one. And finally, breathtaking folly. A Stan Fisk owned first time starter. First time starters in races like this where the horses on paper hasn't shown much, usually could sneak in and this one is actually taking a lot of betting seven to one, to on one the sure line. wide wide open who did you who did you uh, who did you wind up with real quick before we go to maggie well i wound up with the number four frosty vi at four to one right on cue trained by steve asmus and we check in with maggie here with trainer Steve Asmussen, who will send out a three-prong attack on tomorrow's uh, Count Fleet. And Steve bringing out three of the favorites, too. Skelly returning off his Saudi Arabia journey, um, in which he finished second. I thought a valiant performance. So nonetheless, talk a little bit about him coming back. Where do you see him? He's awfully fast, and there's certainly no slowing him down either. Uh, you covered it all on that, you know, Skelly. I, I think the question is how much the trip to Saudi took out of him. He gave a, a a great account of himself uh, very proud of him but he's back here at Oakland where he has a wonderful win streak here uh, trying to do feel very good about him uh, Jackson Traveler uh, Fountain of Youth last time you know with a, a very good win in the Whitmore best race he's run in several years feel great about uh, having Pratt back on him as well as he responded to him last time and then Rivet who's you know a four-time winner here at Oaklawn and is always capable of a huge race. He's a cool dude but getting back to Skelly is there any way as a trainer that you can gauge how that Middle East trip has affected of course you've done it many times to Dubai and so on and so forth. Well I think it's a lot easier with Skelly being an older gilding you know it's just his personality is He's a very strong horse, he, um, shows a lot on, in the mornings, and his works have been excellent here. So I, I think we've got the good Skelly back. Looking at the Apple Blossom, it's a really fun race, and I thought of many ways you could go as far as a handicapping perspective, but you're going to send out Bellamore, who should offer some value, but two starts back, won the Houston Ladies Classic. How is she doing? Watching her school, she looks fantastic. Uh, very proud of how the filly looks and how she's handling um, as you mentioned, when the lady, the uh, Houston Ladies Classic, two back, you know, third here in the Azari. Um, neither one of those races are fast enough for the Apple Blossom, but that's to be expected. And uh, feel like we are sitting on a better race than the two previous we've had with her. 
Um, circumstances seem ideal uh, this week for it, and she's trained beautifully over the racetrack. And I think it, you know, it's a, a wonderful opportunity with a great mare. She's beautiful. Steve, thank you so much for that insight and time. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, really good stuff with Steve Asmussen, uh, Maggie, with this crowd on hand here at Oak Lawn Park, the eve of the grade one apple blossom. Make no mistake, one of the biggest weekends of the year at Oak Lawn. And Raj, I thought really important drilling down and, and Steve referencing, Asmussen referencing, quote, it's just a question of how much the trip to Saudi Arabia took out of Skelly. Yeah, and we can speculate all we want. It's hard to answer that question until you actually run the race. That's when we're really going to find out the answer. I'm sure that if, if he felt like there was something out of the ordinary, he wouldn't be running him. But it's just not enough data to really know how this is going to play out. And this was the plan. Last year, Gunite went to Saudi Arabia, then went on to Dubai to run in the Golden Shaheen. This was always the plan for Skelly running in the Riyadh Dirt Sprint and coming back home for the Count Fleet. We check in with Maggie. Yeah, looking forward to them. Certainly, Skelly doesn't look as though he's lost any energy from that uh, trip to the Middle East, at least watching him schooling uh, here today. But as we take a look at some of the horses on the track for this upcoming race, I'm going to check in with a Lindsay Schultz trainee. And, and one thing I've noticed about Lindsay's horses is that you do typically make very good impressions. Um, and Miss Mo Mesa is just another one of those. And so as Lindsay is what, in her third, almost her third year of training, sometimes there's these trainers that the horses just always look great, but sometimes they're just not fast enough to run. So I'm wondering if that's the case with Miss Mo Mesa. She was completely outrun in a maiden spe special weight for Arkansas Breads uh, last time out. But she adds blinkers and a fairly significant cup on her today. So she's had some speed in those two efforts. I wonder if they're going to see even more of it here today. Obviously, your favorite in here, Zong's Irish Frost, or I should say lukewarm uh, choice, is is does have some speed. But... Miss Mo Mesa, every time I looked at her, I loved what I saw as she runs for the lowest level in her third career start. Now, let's take a look at some of those first-time starters. Raj pointed out, number 10, breathtaking folly, taking a lot of money. And both of these firsters that I'll mention have a little bit of pedigree. As a practical joke, he can get one to win early. Um, with his three-year-old and up first-time starters, he hits at 13%. I remember the dam. She was a Chad Brown horse canteen for Peter Brandt. Uh, this one, obviously, uh, bred by them. Didn't sell for much. At the Texas uh, sale, only 5000 And this is her first full, but she came in really, really fit and very, very sharp. And usually when horses take money and are acting that way, what does that equal? Speed. So look for her to be forward from that outside post position. And then I do want to mention one cross, just kind of an interesting pedigree for a filly that only sold for 4000 at the Keeneland sale. Golden Sense, decent influence. He wins with about 12% of his first-time starters. And while there isn't much immediate pedigree, the second dam was a multiple stakes winning Washington bred. Uh, I think she went six for seven in her career. And she produced My Lady Curlin, who's a multiple graded stakes winner going long on the dirt. So there's some second generational pedigree. I do think this horse will need a start, but did want to mention that. Just thought it was a little bit interesting here, Lafitte. Plus, they love Pennsylvania breads around these parts. Nobody's saying she's Smarty Jones. We'll see what one cross does in her debut. Wide, wide open. $12,500 maiden claimer. It's post time. Matt Dinneman standing by with the call. Race 2 of 10 Oak Lawn live on Fox Sports 2. A few more runners to load into the gate. Frosty Vi coming up. Go again. Little dab will do. Post 9. And to the outside, breathtaking folly, the first time starter for the Tim Martin bar. Waiting for breathtaking folly. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff. 
uneventful start. Zong's Irish Frost on the lead today. Miss Mo Mesa has early speed too. Dance My Way in the middle of that pair. Those three line up across the track as they speed down the back stretch. A gap of two and a little dab will do. Runs in the fourth position with Frost. Evi, who's there, so is Secret City. And one cross to the inside. Breathtaking Folly joining that quartet and is running six off the pace with a half mile to go. A gap of three to Matoli, My Bell, Miss Terry, and Sky Raven. That trio towards the back together as they go into the turn. Dance My Way and Zong's Irish Frost sprint clear of the pack and they put about six lengths on Miss Mo Mesa who couldn't keep up in the third position. Breathtaking Folly claims the fourth spot is pushed along now as they approach the top of the lane. Frosty Vi joins her. The others well behind the top pair who are in a slugfest coming off the turn. Zong's Irish Frost losing the lead to Dance My Way who has a head lead. Zong's Irish Frost second. Miss Mo Mesa four back in third. Furlong to go. Dance My Way is putting away Zong's Irish Frost and with a 16th to go starts to shake away from the competition. Dance My Way for the Kim Polbarn winning it by two and a half lengths. Zong's Irish Frost holds second. Frosty by third. Miss Mo Mesa fourth. Dueled early, drew away late at nine to two. Dance My Way strikes in the second at Oakland Park. Congratulations, Kim Poole, the trainer. 0 for 55 coming into this race. Gets she her, was due. Gets her first win of the year. Awesome. He was due. He was due. Finally getting that first win. Better late than never. Congrats, Kim Poole. Dance My Way battling early and drew away and really impressive in the latter stages. Yeah, they uh, absorbed that pace pressure from the five, the, the favorite, and then ended up pulling away. At, at one point, we thought that that pace was going to collapse because they were dueling early, but the horse found another gear. And just for the barn for Kim Poole and everybody at the stable and who puts in the hard work there early in the morning, working as hard as the trainers that have the grade one types, just that sense of relief and to see one of theirs cross the wire in front after an extended stretch after a, after a drought 50 some odd races and finally getting that that first win how much that can elevate the spirits around the barn yeah and that sense of gratification when you when you're working so hard and you're passing and you keep on losing you start second guessing yourself and sometimes that's a unfair, unfair way to do it and then all of a sudden you pop up and win a race and you feel like all the hard work you put in comes to fruition. Uh, seven, five, four, eight says the board. I've worked for about an hour and 15 minutes. I, I, I need a break, but, but you're going to stick around. Yes. Yeah, I'll stick around and um, give you a few races <laughs> off and then we'll switch out later on. To get, <laughs> then I'll get a break. <laughs> need the break. I'm stepping aside. Paul Laduca jumping in the cockpit as our coverage continues from Oak Lawn Park. Kim Poole gets that first win of the meet. Dance my way. Pure wets over the line and into the winner's circle results when we come back.
You're watching America's Day at the Races. We turn our attention to the third race at Aqueduct. Coming up next, the maiden claiming for 40,000, going a mile, three-year-olds and upward. Cool operator, the favorite to the outside at two to one at the moment on that drop in class. For Danny Gargan, meeting the rest of the field though, Andy, starting off with conniving. And the longest shot on the board, lower profile connections, and looks a little slower on paper. Drop back down in class for the number three, States United. Has run well enough to be competitive. Did finish behind the winner of the Bay Shore last time. Certainly not impossible here. That was reasoned analysis who pulled that big upset last weekend. Here's Allegrini. I thought this one was a little bit slower than some of them. The last time out ran well enough in a race that I don't know how strong it was. Bounteous was fourth last time. First start in a maiden claiming field. I consider putting him on top on a fast track. I mm -hmm. worry, though, that he's better on a dry track than a wet track. And 9-5 to five now to the outside in the class dropper. Cool operator who also gets blinkers on. I picked him. I don't love him. Danny Gargan's numbers are okay with maiden special, maiden claimer drop downs. There is a lot of talk that we have some big speed track out there. Now, maybe we do. And if we do... This horse is supposed to be in front, mm -hmm. and they probably won't catch him. I am not going to announce that we have a huge speed track based on the first two races today. Not exactly the kind of races you want to declare a huge bias off of. And with a wet track as well, and maybe some horses struggling with it. Right. Uh, we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the afternoon. But the sun is shining now, so we're happy to see that. You can get the inside track on handicapping with Naira Betts. Track stats want to know how many winners go gate to wire in one turn miles at Aqueduct. Track Stats has the answer. For more stats on Aqueduct and tracks across the country, visit nairabets.com today. This is also where the pick six does kick off. We had that carryover of a little over 23,000 from yesterday. On paper, Andy, yesterday it looked like a pretty logical sequence, but there were it was just enough surprise to trigger a carryover. Doesn't take that much, yeah. you know, and a couple of sort of a little bit off the beaten path winners. Race three up next, horses warming up. Let's check in with Richie Migliori. Yeah, guys, I think it's kind of an interesting race, and we're going to start with the two-horse conniving. This is horse making his first start for Carlos Figueroa. If people aren't familiar with that name, he was a very successful horse trainer for a number of years uh, and a lifelong childhood friend of mine. Uh, we actually... Uh, we're working with racehorses since we were about 12 years old together. He does a great job. This is the best I've ever seen conniving look. His coat is resplendent. He's trying to dapple out. He's got that rich, hydrated coat. And he's getting Lasix for the first time. So I'm kind of counting on, with as good as he looks physically, that there's going to be some natural improvement there. And then the addition of Lasix. And I'm not oh, just, I don't trust anybody else in here so much. I'm, I'm going to take a swing with the longest shot in the field. And yes, maybe uh, lower profile profile connections, but a very, very capable horseman uh, with Carlos Figueroa. The three states united, almost went this direction watching him warm up. He left the pony under Jose Gomez, really framed up beautifully, got into a nice rhythm, had his head bowed, very aggressive, made a really nice impression in the warm up. And the five bounteous, I mean, just a big strapping son of into mischief, drops down to the lowest level he's ever competed at. And like all of uh, Bill Mott's horses, uh, you know, particularly the ones here with Leanna Wilford, all look good, and he just made a really nice physical impression. But I'm going to the inside, the two, conniving at a, at, as your longest price on the board. I'll say one thing about our friend, the MIG. He is the loyalist friend you could have. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> Stretching out in distance is conniving. Eight to five, though, on the six. Cool operator. And um, you begrudgingly landed here to the outside? I did. I, I don't love this horse um, because he hasn't really done much running in his races, but he has also been running against significantly mm -hmm. better horses, and he projects as the speed in here. So I put him on top. The problem was I kept trying to make cases, and I really did think about Bounteous, but I worry that Bounteous is a little bit better on a dry track. Um, States United, I think State United is a horse you like because you elevate him a little bit because of Rick Dutro. But he ran in a maiden claiming race a couple races back and really didn't do any running that day at a relatively short price on the same kind of muddy sealed track. Now, maybe Jose Gomez will be very aggressive, and I think it would behoove him to be aggressive. But I think it would also behoove Dylan Davis, who is riding potentially the fastest horse in here. Yeah. And I think with Cool Operator, you're just supposed to air it out. States United dropping back down in class, ran for 50, as you mentioned, similar conditions, two starts back. This one uh, by Run Happy, the full to 
stakes winner kinetic sky as well see how the pace does play out what do you expect with the presence of allegrini he may not be just naturally fast enough but he has been forward in a few of his races he has been forward and trevor is the kind of rider that you know pays attention to the racetrack and i think you have to at least accept that it's not a bad thing to be in the front end and with the lower level horses i think you probably want to be aggressive so i think you'll see trevor mccarthy come out firing and at the end of the day the six is the horse who's the capable of going the fastest mm -hmm. here early. Whether or not he ends up being in front remains to be seen. But I think with equal sort of somewhat aggressive rides early, the six is supposed to be in front. And I believe that Dylan would be making a mistake riding the favorite if he didn't look to take advantage of his natural speed. And he has not been making that mistake lately. Dylan Davis been aggressive out of the gate, especially with horses that have natural speed. And this one getting blinkers on as well. Andy with the pick six kicking off here. Any thoughts on the sequence for those interested in partaking with the carryover today? Well, I think you'll see a lot of people leaning on the number three in the next race, mm -hmm. Sandy Sweet Tooth, who is the horse to beat. I kind of like the one Barron's Bounce. So I would use both of those horses in there. I thought the fifth was very tough. I lean towards the inside two who are both forward. I preferred screw loose, but I don't have a strong opinion. I picked temperamental in race six. The value was kind of lost with the scratch of uh, with the scratch of the five little Lindsay, but I kind of thought she was the worst to beat, but she'll be favored. Um, I prefer subrogate in today's seventh race, but I would use any of the outside three, the seven, eight, or nine in there. Um, in the last race, I like Face of Barrio to wire the field, not because the way the track may be playing, because I think he's the controlling speed in there. And I was against a horse who is the morning line favorite with the scratches, the four Montebello. I'd be playing against him and using other horses like the eight Newport Beach and even the six Chocolate Shake. But I liked Face of Barrio a bit in the last race. Face of Barrio, six to one on the morning line in the nightcap. Fun little sequence here. Good luck if you're playing. And again, with that carry over the pick six, it does kick off here. There is... Richie's top selection, conniving, now at six to one, stretching out to the mile distance. It's three to two now on Cool Operator, the horse to beat on the class drop. We'll see how the race does play out and who is in front early on. Race three coming up, still a sloppy main track at Aqueduct, but the rain has stopped and the sun has come out, which is a very welcome sight. Pick six kicking off here. Best of luck. Chris Griffin has the call. Bounteous and cool operator last to load to the outside. Pick six time. Here at the big A. Cool operator goes in. All set. And they're off. Good speed from Cool Operator from the outside draw. It's Cool Operator alone up top. At the rail, here comes Conniving, is going to try and apply some mild pressure, and they're well apart from one another as they get set to hook up with the backstretch. In that early mix there, but dropping back quickly was Allegrini, is back to a now shared third with States United. The early triller is Bounteous. Well out into the middle of the racetrack, Cool Operator's got the lead. Now Conniving down towards the inside. Conniving puts a neck in front. They went 23-1 and one for that opening quarter mile. They are six lengths clear from the pair of States United is right there with Allegrini. They're third and fourth. From the back, Bounteous starts a rally with Jose Lescano, but has about seven lengths to make up, and they're now chasing Conniving. Conniving is at the rail here, is going to hug that rail, and now getting a little bit closer as Cool Operator was kept in the clear out in the center of the racetrack. Now moves in closer to that rival, and they went 46.45 for that half-mile time, still about six lengths in front of the rest. Trying to rally on as Allegrini is to the outside of States United, and nothing yet here from Bounteous, who's still about eight lengths the trailer as they get set to reach. A quarter mile left to go, and here comes Cool operator to the outside of an all-in conniving towards the inside. Those two still head and head as they reach the top of the stretch. Cool operator trying to push on by. Conniving is not going away without a fight and now Cool Operator kicks it into high gear and Cool Operator is up by a length and a half. Conniving is battling on towards the inside. Trying to commence a rally as Allegrini from the back there with States United. Late run here from Bounteous but getting away. It's Cool Operator. Cool Operator. Four lengths in front and Cool Operator at eight to five. Starts off the pick six. Cool operator wins it tight there. Conniving look to hold off the oncoming Bounteous in one minute 36 and four. Cool operator on the drop in class. The best in here. It was tight for a second, Andy, but I think Richie's pick conniving might have just held on for a second. Hey, listen, Richie had the longest shot on the board, fell out the exacto behind the favor. Nothing wrong with that. And a good 
a good aggressive ride in that one by Lane Luzzi as well, but the six is just better than these and had more natural speed and he just proved best. Uh, he's the best horse in the race. It's not always about how good you are, it's how good you are relative to your competition. And he was just better than these horses. And controlling, we did see a late run from the five, but he, I thought, at least at first glance, like you said, can I be held on for second? But a fairly easy winner in this race at eight to five. Pulling away from his competition, we often use the yeah, phrase, second. find your friends. And that is, as, as Richie says, being a good manager as well, putting your horses in the right company to be able to thrive. Six, two, five, four. And the number six conniving did hold on for a second. So Andy and Richie rounding out the exacta with their top selections for eight to five cool operators. Son of Bernardini getting the job done to break his maiden first time in the maiden claiming ranks. And once again, we saw Dylan Davis be aggressive early. He kind of was outside, not getting too close to conniving early on, but he made sure his horse was forward and in the clear throughout. A little Ussery Alley type ride bit, there. Yeah. He's staying out in the middle of the racetrack. Uh, maybe not as wide as Bobby Ussery, but out in the middle of the track. It's interesting. I think a lot of riders, they get concerned on wet tracks. The rail is dead. So they tend to stay towards the outside and stay off of it. And doing the, 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 the track trends, the track bias every day, I noticed a lot of days where you could say, well, the riders rode like the rail was bad, but there's absolutely no evidence the rail was bad because very few horses were on it and a couple might have been on it and run okay. Well, Shug McGay's horse was on the rail in the second race and, and angled out in the stretch, but he did some running downside. I just think the riders sometimes feel like, I don't want to be the idiot who goes to a dead rail, so I'll stay out in the middle of the track where it's often decent going. I get it. Um, it is interesting to watch though. Number six, cool operator with the win in race number three. Gets the job done as your favorite on that drop-in class. Dylan Davis with another one. When we come back, we'll talk about the battle of the heavyweights that's set for the heavyweights set for the Kentucky Derby. Fierceness with the early speed. And Sierra Leone with the impressive closing kick. Contrasting running styles. Their top two in the point standings as of now. Zandon's poetry in motion, big horse, but light on his feet. And he's always showed up and been consistent and been right there with some of the top horses in training. In the Bluegrass Stakes, he showed his determination and his raw ability. It's over. Zandon wins the Toyota Bluegrass. I feel breeders will be really blown away by what a striking, outstanding looking horse he is. Experience the adrenaline-pumping, suspense-filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing. Be a part of the action with Naira Vets. The sun shines bright on Caraconte. His first crops of racing age are showing brilliance on the racetrack with a high percentage of stakes winners. His versatility is evidenced by winners on all surfaces across the globe. Spanderella could not have been more impressive. The sun shines bright on this value sire. Here down 25, here down 25, here down. Thank you. Right here, 525,000. Caraconte standing at Gainesway. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on, every screen, on every screen every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. We're back on America's Day at the races. Dylan Davis heading to get his picture taken, this time with Cool Operator taking the drop in class for Danny Gargan. Finds his friends in Maiden Claiming Company for the first time. Exactly. Um, you know, a bit of a disappointment for the connections in race number two, but they got the win here. And it, it's just a question of running horses where they can win. He obviously was not breaking his maiden in a maiden special, and he, and he was a $100,000 purchase, so it's not as though they had an enormous investment in him. And uh, he got it done today. Uh, I would be surprised if he got claimed out of this race, and he's basically running where he belongs. 
with the addition of Linkers. He was forwardly placed as well and able to pull away. Long shot number two, conniving, or six to one shot, able to hold on for second. $5.40 winner there in race number three. That's the prices for the third race of the day at Aqueduct. We still have plenty to come, but we have uh, we have some guests to welcome in over at Oakland. Well, I mean, everybody wants to be with Raj. So Leduc yeah. is over with Raj. You know, you know, Paulie, by the way, you've been carrying the load down there for like the entire meet. I mean, they've done a <laughs> tremendous job. And these like carpet baggers show up in town and they sort of take and, over. And everybody so loves you, Paul. Shove Raj right off the desk if I were you, Paulie. I've been called a lot of names, but a carpet bagger, that's a new one. <laughs> Look it up. That is a new one. But yeah, welcome back to Oakland Park. Uh, Rajiv Mirage, along with myself, Paul Duca. We do have Maggie Wolfendale, and I'm just taking over for Lafitte Pinkai. Rajiv, don't get mad at me, okay? No, you're good, man. Come on. Let's... <laughs> well, let. Let's queue up the, the Kentucky Der Derby leaderboard, sponsored by Spendthrift Farm. And we'll get to the, the top two horses that are in the leaderboard. Listen, they're 1A and they're 1B. If you're looking at, like, a boxing match analysis here, uh, uh, Rajiv, you're looking at Fierceness, who's probably a horse that is a horse that's going to try to knock you out early in the race. And Sierra Leone's going to be the horse that's going to wait you out a little bit and come from behind. But let's take a look at Sierra Leone's bluegrass win. And what impressed you the most about this race? Well, what was very impressive about this race was the fact that he overcame a lot of adversity. Sierra Leone was way back early on. He had to pass pretty much all the field, took a lot of dirt early, which is something that he'll probably have to do uh, in, in the derby as well with his running style. Um, this race, though, in stark contrast to the Florida Derby, this was an extremely fast pace early. Sierra Leone came from way off the pace and blew by the field. He was kind of laying in a little bit in the stretch, giving his rider a little bit too much to handle, but he, he overcome all that adversity and still end up getting the win. You think there's more improvement there? Even there's a little greenness there towards the end? Or is he just playing around a little bit with his opponents? Well, one thing about him is he's battle tested. In all his races, he's eaten a lot of dirt. He's passing horses. So it's nothing new to him come Derby Day. It's not going to be a surprise to him early when he starts getting some dirt kicked in his face and having to over move around horses. So that battle tested, it's good that he has that under his belt. It's seasoning. You make a good point because he could be behind the eight ball and still, you know, perform. Where fierceness now, we've seen him be so brilliant. I mean, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, then a Florida Derby Day, he just told everybody, listen, you guys all forgot about me after my last race. And this was a, a straight canter. Two things, Rashid. Do you get a lot out of this race? And is he the horse to beat? Well, he ran so fast in this race. He, he went a mile and an eight, nine furlongs in 148. Sierra Leone did it in 150. He ran two whole seconds faster and seemingly not even asked for his best. So if he can duplicate this race, they're in for a world of trouble to beat this horse. Um, but like you said, he has been the hit or miss kind of guy. Yeah. His brilliant races are just exceeds everyone else, but then he throws in some monkey wrench races. Mm -hmm. Two of his five races have been total monkey wrench races. But this race that he did in the Florida Derby, if he brings that on Derby Day, it, it's gonna be he's gonna be virtually unbeatable. Yeah, and here's the tail of the tape as they're not too far apart. You see fierceness with $1.7 million in the bank. You got Johnny V aboard. Tyler Gaffleone and Chad Brown, both looking for their first Kentucky Derby. Um, you know, I like them both. They're gonna be your first and second choice. Now let's get to the Lexington. There's still points on the line in one horse, so actually two horses. Now Hades here for uh, Mr. Orsino does have a chance if he wins this race. He would probably land about 16th or 17th, right in that on the list. Now, Liberal Arts is the other horse in here for Irad Ortiz Jr. and Robert Medina. If he was able to win this race, he'd land about 21st or 22nd. Now, here's Hades in the Holy Bull, um, where he bested Fierceness after uh, Fierceness did not get out of the uh, gate that well. Um, so if he can get back to this effort and win this race, do you consider this horse to be a factor at any point in the Kentucky Derby? 
Following up on the whole label after watching Hayes wins this race, I thought he was one of the top five contenders for the Derby. He drew off from two of the better horses. Um, fierceness, obviously, he, he pulled away. So he, it was a bit disappointing to see him not perform to this standard in the Florida Derby. But if he can bounce back with this effort, not only will he be really tough to beat in the Lexington, but he, he would actually be a legit Derby contender. Wow. I actually think he's very talented. And when you get to liberal arts, I, I, when he ran his last race, I actually talked to Tyler Gaffalone. He said that he bolted actually on both turns, and he thinks mentally he's just not right there right now. So I, I don't think liberal, liberal arts on the comeback is actually a good bet in the Lexington, to be honest with you. So um, there you go for the Derby Trail, at least going to the Derby Trail. We're going to transition to race number three. We got a mile and a 16th in here for uh, Colts. Three-year-olds, $100,000 on line. We'll start the post parade. Now scratch the seven in here. Um, Chun Money, and we're going to see Eric Aspison in this race. And Keith, brothers running against each other. Rajiv, we'll start with the one. Melt with you. Yeah, dropping in for a claiming tag for the first time. Hasn't shown much at the main special level, but maybe the drop in class will help perk him up a little bit. Here's the two major Mac for Greg Compton. I think this horse should be on the front end i think not a bad proposition at five to one showed speed sprinting dropping in class and stretching out so it should should be definitely a big pace factor no if i goes through the one to be we'll get back to no if i here's always be smart the horse that i think has the most potential in this race but he's been plagued by these bad starts at the gate yeah here's eric asperson aboard the five um for steve dropping down after one start yeah, no factor in an off-the-turf event is trying to find a level that he's more competitive at. Tell him I'm coming for Kelsey Har and Robert Klein. This is a horse that comes from way out of it. Yeah, no early speed, um, but gets a little more distance to work with today. And a little drop in class might keep him a bit closer to the pace. And then Penrod will close it out with Ramon Vasquez. Yep, first time gelding, uh, drops out of a main special into a maiden claimer. Um, Showed some speed in a couple of his races, so it should be at least an early pace presence. Well, this starts a daily double exact, a trifecta, 50 cent pick three. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few. Race number three at America's Day at the Races here. Welcome back to beautiful Oaklawn Park as you're joining 
myself and Raji Moran and Maggie Wolfendell as well here in American Days at the races. And right now, the three to six to five on your favorites, the three in here nullify. But always be smart as a horse that Nick Zito is always like Maggie. Now puts the blinkers on, comes in with a bullet drill. How's this horse look on the racetrack? Well, too, I think we have to take into consi consideration here, Polly, what Raj said about this horse not being able to get out of the gate that cleanly. And when I was watching him walk around in the paddock, he just kind of looked a little bit sticky behind. You know, as we always talk about, they need that engine, those hindquarters to propel themselves and push themselves out of the gate. But when he got out on track here with Rafael Bearano aboard, um, he really kind of got on his toes, looked as though he was moving a lot better, which I appreciate. So I don't know if we're finally going to see this horse in start number five get away a bit cleaner and give himself, well, not as much work to do, especially with those short cup cheater blinkers going on. But I do find him quite intriguing here. Now, don't get me wrong. Your even money favorite, Nullify, looks fantastic. Did get a little hot and washy. Uh, so far in the preliminaries is he kind of steps back up in class. But taking a look at the other drop downs coming out of that same native land race in which native land came back with a win at Keeneland uh, last week with an 83 buyer. But melt with you. This horse is getting back to a fast track for the first time since uh, his late two year old season. I'm wondering if that has a positive influence on him. I love the way that he warmed up here, really moving well with David Cohen aboard and uh, I think he is a bit intriguing just getting back to the fast track and looks incredibly fit. Now, third start off the layoff. Major Mac, he's stretching back out. Another one that maybe we just, you know, hold our hands over the first start. Didn't have Lasix that day. But his lone dirt uh, fast track race since then resulted in his best finish and he projects to be the speed um in here i i, I would think um we'll see what inform does but I, I think that major mac is faster he does look like a horse that wants to run long he's kind of tall spindly looking strikes me much more of a runner that would prefer more distance. So I'm on the positive end of the spectrum at four to one with him trying this distance yet again. Polly deserting me though uh, over here on the stand. How's it? How is it in the tent? It's absolutely beautiful, Maggie, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to be honest with you too. You look amazing in that black dress and the black boots as well on this uh, apple blossom eve. So um, yeah, it's nice and comfortable here in this town. Paul, I hope you're not coming to take over my suite. <laughs> no, I am not. But I'm kind of in agreement with Maggie in here. Like, I, I think Magic Mac is, is kind of the bet in here because I just think this horse can get to the front end. And, you know, what Maggie said about Nullify maybe a little bit washed out. But I thought Major Mac was kind of game in this race. Actually clearing from the 10 hole. You know, when this horse went a mile, uh, Rajit, the horse was able not able to get to the, to the front end, and maybe we'll be able to get to the front end today. Major Mac has so much going in his favor today. He is dropping in class. He's stretching out. He's the speed of the speed. He gets a seven-pound weight allowance with an apprentice on. Uh, this horse, the, uh, the ball is in his court. Um, nullify as a favorite, I, I, I cannot see why Nullify is a favorite over Major Mac. We got one back, so that means we got to go to Mr. Dinnerman, Matt Dinnerman, for the call, race number three. Good luck. And uh, Laroff, per usual, always be smart, a step slow out of the gate. Major Mac from the inside in the pink jacket going to the front. Inform takes second. Penrod parked outside of him. And there's the favorite Nullify in the fourth position, gets to the fence, charging into the turn. Next is Melt with you. Tell him I'm coming at the back with always be smart, the gray horse. Around the clubhouse turn they run. Nine lengths from first to last. Major Mac leads the way. Penrod to the outside, moving level to apply pressure with three quarters of a mile to go. A gap of two to Nullify. Slips inside of Inform to claim third. A gap of five to another pair. Always be smart, taking the fifth position away from Melt with you. And tell him I'm coming well back now. At least a dozen off the pace, maybe even 15 down the back stretch here. Major Mac went the opening quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. Is on top still by a half length. Penrod there on the outside attempting to keep, keep pace. Major Mac opens up the lead to a length with a half mile to go. Penrod in chase mode now second. Nullify getting closer within two lengths of the lead.
lead in form still with him always be smart four from the top two back to melt with you pushed upon his back peddling needs to turn it around here tell him i'm coming remains the trailer as they round the turn major mac in front of neck penrod still right there pressing but he's under a hard ride nullify getting closer he's getting outside he finds room to come outside and try to get to those front runners in form has dropped out of it always be smart still has to get going nullify making his move to the front major mac alongside of him but nullify with a furlong to go passes major mark in the final furlong and kicks on major mac second huge space back to always be smart in third nullify coming home strong to break the maiden under keith asmussen nullify by three major mac holds second always be smart third tell him i'm coming passes three runners from the back to complete the superfecta Three, two, four. As Nullify gets the job done here for Keith Atkinson and D. Wayne Lucas, son of American Pharaoh, just is going to run by Major Mac here in Carlos Barbosa. Very impressed with the ride from Keith Asmussen today. He had this horse sat in the pocket. He was patient, bided his time, came off the turn, tipped out into the clear. Just a, a perfect. You can't write write it up any better than that. You know, but this horse has really improved since stretching out um, around two turns. Steps up today in class and gets the win. Yeah, and you know, in his last race, he didn't have the best of trips, and Nyquick um, was really good last time. Give props to Major Mac. I thought Major Mac ran a good second. So, 3 2 4 in race number three, Acacia. On to you and Andy in New York. And I will say this you're, you're obviously who you are, but Rajiv and I together are way better looking than you two together. Wow, shots fired. You know, I had been being shots nice to Polly. Shots fired from Paul. I clearly realized I made a mistake. And now, Polly, <laughs> I'm going to go back to my normal cantankerous nasty self. You've just earned it. <laughs> Paul, we had a moment the last time I, I was at Oakland together. I can't take we you insulting. We were passing out Girl Scout cookies I, on the apron. I thought what we had was special. I can't allow him to insult you like that, Acacia. <laughs> I, I really, you know, I, I cannot allow that to happen, Polly. I'm going to have to defend your honor. You're dead to me, LaDuca. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize. You know, you know. Sometimes I have that that front where I want to hand out like you know the Girl Scout cookies, but I'm not really that, Rajiv. <laughs> yeah, I'd stay out of we it, Rajiv. Really, about really I would want. We are for the fifth race today at Aqueduct to see Andy's namesake screw loose run. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a gelding, by the way? A new gelding. No, I'm just getting gelding? excited about. Yeah, I'm namesake. just getting excited about Hades. Ooh. I hear he's a big Derby contender, Raj. <laughs> Be top All right, the derby. this is going off the rails. I'm pulling the plug. It's time for the post parade for the fourth race. New York bred made in special weight at Aqueduct. Here's Baron's Bounce. I like Baron's Bounce in this race. Raced on a rail I don't think was a good place to be last time. May have needed the race, and it's going to step forward today for Linda Rice. First time starter will be next, Boom Boom Thunder. Not a lot to recommend from a pedigree standpoint. The second damn little turf. 11 to 1 right now, not taking much money for a first time starter. There is Sandy Sweet Tooth, 4 to 5. No doubt the horse to beat in this race, and maybe one of the bigger singles for a lot of people betting smaller money in this pick six. And I can't argue this horse ran well, lost to a stable mate in his debut. Third on debut. We'll try to get to the winner's circle today. Here's Z Dancer cutting back in distance. He's just had too many chances, mm -hmm. and I just prefer others. New Gelding, here's the five, Clancy Fancy. Now, this horse can be forward in here, and if you really feel like speed is carrying, this horse might be able to outrun his odds. He's definitely on his toes out there today. And Wohop, uh, run me through the name again. I can remember quite a few late nights at Wohop down <laughs> on Mott Street. A lot of people I'm sure watching are familiar with Wohop, the restaurant in Chinatown, but open for a long, long time. Um, this horse was entered earlier this winter, quite a while ago, as I remember. Don't know the story, but taking some money. Mm -hmm. But is this horse taking some money? Is there just sort of nowhere else to go besides the three and one? Four to one on Wohop, first time starter for Bill Mott. That's the horse, though, that is four to five. Sandy Sweet Tooth getting a big warm up under Manny Franco. We'll talk more about him and the rest of the field after this on America's Day at the Races. Nashville dropping out of it and then collusion illusion. What a spectacular return for Charlatan, who will romp in the run happy Malibu stakes by four and a half emphatic lengths. Charlatan, ultra impressive. It's a new day for a new king.
this sport, it takes just one special horse and a lot of people that believe in him. By Champion Arrogant from the family of Broodmare of the Year, Better Than Honor, rose to prominence in the Grade 3 Peter Pan, displayed power in the Grade 1 Belmont, cemented his three-year-old championship in the Grade 1 Travers, defeating a champion two-year-old, Kentucky Derby, and Preakness winners. And the Eclipse Award goes to Archangelo. Archangelo, standing at Lane's End. General admission tickets are on sale now for the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival at Saratoga, June 6th through 9th. Admission is just $10 on Thursday as well as on Sunday for this historic event. Visit BelmontStakes.com slash tickets today. Racelands is the most in-depth product in horse racing with unique features found nowhere else. True odds, predictive analysis, and pace projection. Racelands, it will change the way you follow horse racing and take your game to the next level. You're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2. We have New York Reds in the spotlight in this upcoming fourth race. And for more information on the New York Breeding and Development Fund, you can check out nybreds.com. But also, there's a 19% increase in New York bred maiden purses in 2026. And pay is to have a New York bred. There's never been a better time to have a New York bred foal. So for more information on how to qualify your foal, visit naira.com slash NY breads. There is the number three Sandy Sweet Tooth as we'll take a look at the first race for the scalding by Blaine. And he finished third as you mentioned beaten by the stable mate that day. 71 buyer speed figure all signs pointing to the fact that this is just the horse to beat this spot. Yeah I mean there's absolutely nothing wrong with this effort. Um, the, uh, Iris now the one thing I will say and it's probably um, it's probably not really that relevant, but I think it's worth mentioning is the horse in the lead here who finished second, Irish Tenor, was a complete no-show in his next start. Now, I just tend to think that horse didn't show up that day because it was too fast to race, but I, I do think it's worth pointing out at least, especially when you're dealing with the horse four to five. There's not many options. Either you're gonna make the first time starter woe hop or you're trying my one Baron's Bounce in all likelihood. I'm trying Baron's Bounce. For more, let's check in with Richard Migliori. Uh, yeah, well, we'll continue with the three Sandy Sweet Tooth by Claiborne Farm Stallion, the Breeders' Cup Classic winning blame. Listen, he ran terrific on debut, and you'd have to think he'd improve. He's a horse that carries good weight, and I'm sure he'll even be a little tighter uh, for that effort. And he's a very deserving favorite. Uh, I was trying to identify who I thought would be the speed of the speed here because I do think we've seen enough to point out that you want to be forward. You don't necessarily need the lead, but you want to be involved. I mean, conniving, holding on for second, the last race, I think, is evidence of that. But I just wish uh, Clancy Fancy, the five, looked a bit better in the coat. Just And I don't have any reference point anything to compare it to but he just has a little bit more of a dryish kind of a coat the six wall hop is a really good looking individual uh, you know two first time starters in here that i'm interested in and wall hop for uh, tom gallo's dream maker racing really has a nice look i was talking to liana wilford bill mott's assistant she was saying they gelded him in february then he started training much better after being gelded and now i'm going to try once again, the longest shot in the field, the first time starter, number two, Boom Boom Thunder. I liked his work pattern coming to, the, to this. I liked four back, that bullet gate drill. Was talking to uh, Bonnie Lucas about this horse. She said he's been very quick in the morning and she expects him to have speed. I'm gonna swing again with the longest shot in the field, guys. All right, Richie, thank you. 18 to 1, a generous price on first-time starter. Boom, boom, thunder. And um, some great information provided by Richie as well with the six woe hop, who you had mentioned um, you thought was entered earlier this winter. And that would certainly explain things. Scratch gelded, given a little time, and then come back to training. Yeah, it's just hard to know if he's taking money because there's not much else. But he has gone down to 5 to 2. I like the one Barron's bounce. I believe he's going to run much better. Um, but I think you have to respect the money that woe hop's taking. But we're saying sweet tooth is much the worst to beat. It would be foolish to not. To not Suggest, suggest, suggest otherwise, even though I'm trying to beat him. Sandy Sweet Tooth, second time starter. So, so did they name, this is a Michael Dub horse, but I feel like Sandy well, Sweet Tooth must be named for Sandy Goldfarb, yes, right? Yes, because he, he has a couple other Sandy horses, and, and Mike has said and they that are they're friends. named after Sandy Goldfarb. So okay. I'm, Does I guess Sandy, Sandy name horses for Mike? Tooth. I don't, I don't know. see him returning the favor. Sandy, you better get on that. 
<laughs> there goes the number five, Clancy Fancy. Loading in without the rider is a new Galdang coming back off a bit of a layoff. Lane Leslie will climb aboard in the starting gate. Just Hard. about set. One more to load. Hard not to see this horse forward. Has that speed and he is sharp in the preliminaries. One more to load in as Lane climbs aboard. Race four at Aqueduct. Here's Chris Griffin. We'll hop to the outside. All set. And they're off. Sandy Sweet Tooth from in between horses right out to the front. It's Sandy Sweet Tooth and Manny Franco. They are quickly up top and up by a length and a half. Here towards the outside, Clancy Fancy is trying to join this leader. And in between horses, that's Z Dancer. At the rail is Baron's Bounce, who's now alone in fourth. From the back, we'll hop is trying to rally on with the trailer. Boom. Boom Thunder, they're chasing Sandy Sweet Tooth. Sandy Sweet Tooth went 22 and one for the opening quarter mile is three to five on the board. The favorite is in front. It's Sandy Sweet Tooth Z Dancer from in between horses right there in the two path. Three wide there is Clancy Fancy trying to rally on from the back. It's a big gap, about seven lengths back to Baron's Bounce. Boom Boom Thunder is starting to commence a rally from far back and we'll hop. Three across the racetrack as they join the favorite at the top of the stretch. It is Sandy Sweet Tooth trying to find more towards the inside. Sandy Sweet Tooth is still in front and trying to widen once again is doing just that. Z Dancer continues to chase up on the grandstand side. Clancy Fancy from the back. Barron's bounce is rallying on. Sandy Sweet Tooth is still holding him off and is three and a half lengths in front. Three to five. Sandy Sweet Tooth wins it on the front end. Z Dancer second. Then came Clancy Fancy and Barron's Bounce in 1 minute 10.5, 8 seconds. If you're just tuning in on Valley Sports San Diego, we're glad to have you with us. Valley Sports SoCal in San Diego. You're watching America's Day at the Races. Acacia Kwan and Andy Serling here in New York. We also have our team out at Oaklawn Park as it is Apple Blossom weekend coming up. But here at Aqueduct, Andy, we just saw the fourth race in New York Bread Made in Special Way. And there is Sandy Sweet Tooth, who is your favorite. Ridden like the best horse in the race and finished like the best horse yeah. in the race. And we are seeing speed holding on very well. And it seems not just that speed's doing well, it's, it's tough for horses to make up ground on this track. So I do think it's an advantage to being forward. But this was also a very logical three to five shot getting it done. And with an eight to five and a three to five kicking off this pick six in the carryover, most players are alive, but there's still a long way to go. <laughs> Best of luck if you were participating in the pick six with that carryover today, which kicked off in the third race. This is race four. It was three, four, five, one. Your three to five favorite, Sandy Sweet Tooth, pulling away mild late runs from the four Z dancer and the five Clancy Fancy. But as Andy mentioned, no real significant ground made up in the stretch, something to keep an eye on as we have seen forwardly placed horses doing very well on the track today. Yeah, it does seem like it's in that race, the two chasers holding on, I and mean, maybe the one was mistaken to stay that close to the inside, but it just doesn't seem like horses are making up ground. But Sandy Sweet Tooth with the victory, son of blame, second time starting New York bred, breaks his maiden today under Manny Franco, aggressive ride and pulling away from his competition today for Rick Dutro. That is the fourth race coming up, he finishing up here at Aqueduct as we take a look at our set over at Oaklawn Park. We have Paula Duca and Rajiv Mirage with us now. Now, Paula was not very nice to us before. I was hoping Lafitte Pinkai was going to be back, but we'll still have to wait for him. Paula, you still got a few weeks left. You're in <laughs> trouble with me. I'm just going to work on it. I'm going to yeah, wait and I'm going to jump. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to apologize to you. Maybe I'll send you guys a telegram. Yeah. Send cash. Okay, on the, uh, <laughs> let's get the prizes for race number three, where Nullify, your favorite, did get the job home. The son of American Pharaoh for D. Wayne Lucas and Keith Aspison. And they've been a potent duo. I mean, like, you, you keep talking about Keith Aspison and Steve Aspison win races, but Keith's won a lot of races for, for D. Wayne. Yeah, and it seems like he's entrusting him with the vast majority of his mounts right now yeah. in the barn. Um, because Bearano finished second on this horse last time. He ran a credible race, and he, he switched jockeys, put Keith on, and um, it paid dividends because couldn't have gave him a better ride. Yeah, he was kind of keen early on, and 
And the two kind of got away. You can see Carlo Barbosa, he looked underneath his legs like he had horse, but the three was just had the momentum and just went on by. And like you said, he's gotten better finishing on a racehorse as well too, Rajiv. Yeah, and Nullify seems like a tricky horse to ride. You can see him switch leads, swap leads a couple of times. He still hasn't quite polished off yet, this horse. He hasn't quite figured it out, but he's a horse on the improve. And actually, he ran an 87 buyer last time. He might have even ran close to that today. This is a horse that is really um, stepping up his game. Yeah, even money shot here, Keisha, but I think in the next race, we're not gonna get an even money shot. Wide open in the fourth, back to you. Forward to hearing your thoughts, Polly. Thank you. As we had a short price favorite winning here at Aqueduct as well, Sandy Sweet Tooth with the victory. Just best building off of that very good debut. Yeah, I mean, this is just the best horse in the race. And yeah, to the track maybe help this horse. Yeah, but you're still talking about a horse that was three to five for good reason and ran back to that debut and built on it. And I just heard from owner Michael Dobby said that uh, Sandy doesn't buy yearlings. So he doesn't name horses Clark. for him, but uh, he said he gets to buy dinner. So nah, it's not a bad deal it's for It's an Dobby. even trade-off. Yeah. It's not you a know, bad he's, deal. he's had some good success with some horses named after Sandy as well. Listen, if it works for you, yeah. then keep doing it. I like it. Sandy Sweet Tooth. I guess Sandy's going to buy dessert as well. $3.30 winner there in race number four at the Big A. As uh, coming up next week we are going to have the OBS April two-year-old in training sale. The sale will kick off on Tuesday. The under tax show underway right now in Ocala. And this is the time of year when everybody's restocking the barn, looking for the two-year-olds, looking for the exciting prospects who could potentially win first out at Saratoga. And listen, there have been horses to come out of the sale to do very well going forward. It is an extremely popular sale. Do you know how many horses they're, they're hoping to sell? Uh, I don't off the top of my head, but there are over a thousand, well over a thousand wow. cataloged. Um, obviously, there will be some. But there was a big March sale this year, too, right? March Bigger than normal. March sale was pretty large as well. Well, the Gulfstream sale uh, that Basic Tipton used to have at, at um at Gulfstream Park no longer taking place. You do see a lot of horses kind of shifting over to these uh, two-year-old sales this time of year. We'll take a look at a couple, though. We, we showed some fast workouts yesterday, and we'll take a look at hip number 95, 195, which is a Nyquist filly consigned by Eddie Woods. And I thought to show this one because this is going a quarter. Oftentimes, you'll see the 10 flat looking for the fast eighth of a mile breeze. Some consigners, like Eddie Woods, will work a lot of horses a little bit longer going two furlongs on the track. This one went 20 and four, but you have an opportunity to kind of see horses stretch their legs a little bit more. Sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to get going as well. And Kwai Kate was a Stone Street Todd Pletcher yeah, horse, I believe, that was actually winner. a decent That's runner early mm -hmm. in her career. And she, she's had some production, I think, that was she's okay. She's had a couple of runners so far, no kind of stakes quality horses as of yet, but we'll see what that right. Nyquist filly can do. And Eddie Woods, of course, a, a very well-respected consigner as well. Showed you one of the faster workouts of the sale yesterday at 9 and 3. Here's another one that went 9 and 3. There's actually now been three horses to go that time, uh, the fastest that you'll see them go in eight. This is a Matoli filly for Hartley Dorenzo consigning hip number 335. And Matolis, they get runners. They really hasn't, haven't had that big horse as of yet, but to go nine and three is a very fast workout. Oh, I love Matoli. I mm -hmm. think, you know, I, I think a case when he was second for horse of the year behind Bricks and Mortar yeah. could be made that he could have been horse of the year that he year. Was tremendous. And one yeah. race that he lost, he was on a dead rail in mm -hmm. Saratoga. And I think if he had won that day, he might have been horse of the year. He had a great year, and you know, obviously, you say he's had one crop so far, and you never, you know, you don't want to get too excited by one crop, and you never want to get too down on a horse, and we'll see. He was a fast and talented horse. Well, there's still a lot more to go. The under tax show is still underway, and as mentioned, the OBS April two year old sale will kick off on Tuesday. Look forward to being there, taking a look at these horses, and I believe I'm actually saying goodbye for now. I'll be back reporting a little bit later. When we come back, Greg Wolf will be on the set and talking about one of the truly special racehorses we've seen in recent history, Zenyatta, a two-time winner of the Apple Blossom. She had plenty of success at Oakland Park.
Zenyatta under a full head of steam on the extreme outside. Four of them across the track, and it is Zenyatta to the outside with brownie points. Ginger Punch can't keep up. It's Zenyatta and brownie points as they drive for the wire. But Zenyatta under Mike Smith is going to pull away. And Zenyatta goes to four in a row with a flawless performance, winning the Apple Blossom by four. And Zenyatta flies to the lead in the middle of the track and takes command. To the inside, B. Fair is still there second with 10, Tap Tam. But it is Zenyatta leading away. Tap Tam is second, B. Fair running third. They're coming home under a hand ride. It is Mike Smith and Zenyatta in a triumphant return to Oakland. She wins the Apple Blossom Invitational by three and a half. Oh, the great Zenyatta, the only two dirt starts of her career until that Breeders' Cup Classic when she just missed against Blame. The fourth and 16th wins of her career. And that first one that we saw, I mean, she just inhaled that field, including the two to five favorite Ginger Punch with the reigning division champion. I think the argument that a lot of people suggested that maybe synthetic racing hurt Zenyatta is a fair one because you look at her dirt races and they might have been the three best races that she ever ran. Um, so I, I think there is a valid argument that she could have been a better horse if she'd run on dirt. And the funny thing about her is, you look at her pedigree, all the good horses from the family besides Zenyatta were all turf horses. But yeah. she ran extremely well. And I mean, one of the Oakland fields, she just overlaid them. The other race, though, that was a good field and she crushed them. 19 for 19 until she just missed against Blame in a race that she was about two miles behind early in that race. Apple they Blossom winners fast. named Horse of the Year. Azari? The, the Serling Eclipse Awards had blamed the Horse of the Year in 2010. I'm just letting you know. The, the important, well-respected Serling Awards gave it to the horse that actually beat First her. First hearing the, about this. The, the Breeders' Cup <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Pretty amazing, though, that three you know, female runners named the Horse of the Year, and they all came out of that race. And, it's a very you know, historically important race. I mean, it really is. It really is. It's a big one. It, talk about a big purse, too. 1.25 million. Bob Baffert just collected the richest purse in Oakland history. Now he's going to try and collect the second biggest purse um, in terms of races in their history with this one. With a Dare Manor, 9-5, to five, morning line favorite. Let's take a look at this race by the numbers. Nagra running back in 1969. And the most wins, three-time winner is Ari. Back to back to back. She was special to watch. Most wins by an owner of the great Alan Paulson. Campaigned as Ari had a win back in 1998 as well. Most wins by a trainer, Hall of Famer. Bill Mott, last coming back in 2014. Very young Bill Mott. Yes, it was. Mike Smith had a couple of those that we just saw on the great Zenyatta. And Apple Blossom winners to a Breeders' Cup victory. The last to do it actually was Zenyatta back in 2008. Named champion in the same year. Wow. Pretty recently, Latruska, she was so tough on the front end. And as Apple Blossom winners, named Horse of the Year. We just showed you that list of the three to do it. That's the apple blossom by the numbers and another very good field assembled this year. And some, you know, intriguing runners. We're going to see how they blossom into runners now in their four-year-old campaigns. Wet paint, going to try and do this off the bench. Difficult task, taxed, um, at least got that sprint coming yep. in. Last year's Black Eyed Susan winner. Yeah, she needs to build on it and get faster, but she did run well that day. They're going to have to beat a dare manner, and if you like her, don't dream of getting that nine to five too long. I think she's going to be even money, and I think she should be. She's going to be forward. She's going to be tough, and I just think Adair Manor may be better than these horses. Terrific card on Saturday, and as we pointed out, historically significant race as well. Let's send it back to Hot Springs. Polly and Rajiv for more. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, it's going to be an intriguing apple blossom. You made a great point with wet paint trying to do this um, coming from off. Uh, a layoff, but some talented horses tax. But Andy makes a good point. They're all going to have to beat the Bob Baffert runner, Adair Manor. Okay, let's hit race number four uh, right now. Rajiv, let's make a little money here for the late pick five. By the way, 10 races on the card today. So the pick five will start in race number six. And we'll start with the post parade here. We got a full field of 11, no scratch. Now, this post parade is a tiny bit on uh, on tape label. We'll start with the run, one, red line overdrive. $900,000 son of Nyquist looking for a second career win in this 12-5 claimer. 
Uncle Barley's the two coming in with some nice drills. Yeah, coming off a long layoff, second at, at this level last time. That's the metric here for Kenny Jansen off the claim from Dan Ward. Claim third for 10,000 last time, steps up to the 12 5 level. Here's Fasten for Keith and Steve Asmussen. Big maiden win last time, four lengths, um, next logical spot. Michael Roan will send out a Munnings one for 15 with Joey Belmar. Sir. Sir. <laughs> one for 15, got beat seven lengths in this, this distance and level last time. Impressor um, for Harry Hernandez and Todd Jordan does have a little bit of sp a pace. Yeah, I had a bad break last time um, off a long layoff. Second off the layoff, might look for some improvement today. Again, Eric Asperson and, and Keith riding in the same race here. This one's seven to one, American Icon. Yeah, this son of gun runner is one career win from 22 starts, but it's coming off a good third place finish with some traffic last time. Worth the money and Super Renzo are big long shots in here. We'll get to the 10 here, Cravensworth um, off the claim for Dan Ward. Yeah, it closed well last time um, for second place. Steps a little bit up, up off the claim. Um, hoping for a pace meltdown to do and his best run in the late. 11, yeah. I'm with you. And the 11, Berdinos does possess a little bit of speed. Gets Carlos Barbosa, so you do get some, some weight off, about 8 to 11 pounds off. Yeah, weight off here. A horse with some speed. And um, in a race that lacks a good amount of early pace. We'll start with the four fast, and okay, we'll start with both of the, the absent horses. And this is a horse, like you said, broke the main last time out for 12 5 on February 9th by many um, in an 11 horse field. Uh, now been laid up since then, and you know. Can this horse go gate to wire again? You know, the hardest thing is to face winners for the first time, and that's just what this horse is doing. The biggest class hike in yeah. horse racing is going from your maiden win to race against horses that have already won. However, this horse is in the prime spot to, to be able to do that because he was a dominant maiden winner. He won by four lengths, and he gets into a race where there is no clear-cut horse that, is, that really looks solid at this level. This looks like a subpar level for a low-level claimer. Yeah, and when you think about it, he doesn't go over his skis, right? He puts him right back in for 12-5. Here's the other Aspis in charge with Eric aboard. Son of Gunrunner dropped for the 12-5 last time. Didn't get out of the gate great, uh, Raj, but did run well after that. Yeah, exactly. So this horse, um, he, he didn't come out the gate well, and he, he came on good at the end. Um, so the, the issue with this horse is he's one win in 22 career starts. He, he doesn't, he just, I just don't like that too much. But I found a horse that I think we should take a look at. The number nine, Super Renzo. This is the kind of race where there's nothing standing out on paper. He's dropping in class. He's cutting back in distance. He's a significant long shot. I, I think this horse is a sneaky good horse with enough tactical speed to put himself in the race. I think this horse could upset the apple cart. As you saw there a little bit, we have a $200 deposit match. You get to Naira Betts if you actually want to play this nine here at 34 to one. I do never complain when somebody gives me a horse at 34 to one. I don't need much explanation. Um, because I'm the kind of guy that I respect my colleagues. So when they come up with a horse at 34 to 1, I'm looking at the horse. And you're right. There is not much in this field. Because when you look at the 10, Cravensworth, okay. 7 to 2, third choice. But is he actually a really good bet? This is a horse, he's going to fall out of the gate. He breaks dead last in almost all of his races. Now he's going to make up some ground. But you pointed out something to me. You just didn't really like the way he was warming up. Yeah, he looked a bit stiff on the warm-up. He didn't look like a horse that was fluid in his stride. And um, th that made me feel like we're not going to see even see the best version of him today, which he would actually need to see the best version for him to win. Now, I don't know if that's how he always looks. Uh, my first time seeing the horse, but I don't like what I see from him on the, on the track. <laughs> for Apple Blossom Weekend, right, I have a trivia question for you. Okay. Since it's Apple Blossom Weekend. Okay. You know that Zenyatta won in 20... 10 and 2008, right? Yes. Do you know who won the 2009 Apple Blossom? 2009 Apple Blossom. Hmm. Yours truly, Rajiv Mirage on 7th Street. Z I was a Zenyatta sandwich, 7th Street. And I. <laughs> Zenyatta sandwich. 
That's actually actually good. And there's probably a 7th Street deli that sells sandwiches somewhere around New York City as the horses are getting closer they and closer. They might have the on the menu, right? <laughs> that is true. Let's take a look at a couple of the fringe horses that are getting bet here. The two is getting bet here for Aaron Shorter, who's had a sneaky good meet. He takes his horse off Brittany Vandenberg, tremendous trainer. And the three, asymmetric here for Kenny Jansen. Um, which one would you prefer be between the two or the three? I really don't like either one of these okay. horses too much. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd pick the two because he has more back class, but he hasn't run in a long time. Asymmetric is a horse that just doesn't ha have that knockout punch. He, he runs decent races, runs credible races, but he settles for a lot of minor awards. Yeah. The more I look at this race is the more I like this number nine horse. Um, I just feel like Super Renzo is in a prime position with this dropping class, cut back in distance. I think he's going to be the horse to beat, and he's 28 to 1. I'll land on the one red line overdrive. I actually think the one's got way more speed than people think, and I think this horse could get to the front end if Rafael Brerano gets aggressive. Race number four here. Good luck if you're alive in the early pick fours and early pick fives. Let's go to Matt Dinnerman for the call. And uh, Laroff. Worth the money going towards the lead today. Here's Fasten on the engine early. On the inside, red line overdrive's not far off. Fasten with a head lead. Worth the money right there to the outside. Red line overdrive to the inside. Super Enzo, four deep on the course. Uncle Burley right behind that quartet in the fifth position. Just a length and a half off the lead. A gap of four to Asymmetric. He's running in midfield. American Icon alongside of him into the far turn. Impressor in midfield with Sir. They're a length better than Bordinos, who just passes a weakening sir who's dropping to the back of the pack with Cravensworth as they round the far turn. Red line overdrive punching forward on the inside to take a head lead on Fastened who's coming right back at him. A three deep Super Renzo joining the fun on the front end with a quarter mile to go. Uncle Burley right behind the leaders has gotten a good setup as they swing off the corner and then comes Asymmetric needs to pick it up. Down the lane Fastened red line overdrive side by side. Uncle Burley has gotten the perfect trip. Can he get there? He's on the grandstand side, plugging away. Uncle Burley on the extreme outside, hits the lead from Fasten and Redline Overdrive. That's how they'll finish. Uncle Burley, your winner. Fasten second, Redline Overdrive third. Cravensworth from far out of it snatches fourth. Uncle Barley gets the job done. And good job here by Aaron Shorter to get this horse ready off a long layoff since July 23rd. And maybe the board showed you at six to one, came in with a bullet drill. And a nice ride here by, by Ramon Nassis. Yeah, that, he was getting bet like a horse that they thought would run his A race, which would be definitely capable of winning this race. And I'm expecting that's because of that 48 and one bullet workout that he showed coming in. And he delivered to that today. He was much the best. Sat a perfect trip. Um, Vasquez had him tucked in behind the speed duel and just tipped out right in the perfect time. And something I've noticed about this Oakland track, Front runners aren't holding on to win. Mm -hmm. It happened the last time I was here for the Arkansas Derby, and it's happening today again. Horses are coming up from a bit off the pace. It seems like the best way to ride this track. We've seen Keith Asmussen do it earlier today. We've seen Vasquez do it now. It's just a good track to just sit off the pace and make that last run. Yeah, it, it seems like that. You know, you got to give credit to the, the other two runners in here. I thought that fastened ran a good race along with red line overdrive the two horses out were battling for the front end but don't take anything away from uncle burley this horse was 10 to 1 on the morning line you get 6 to 1 so this will spice up your early pick fours and your early pick fives here so that will do it for me on set lafitte will get back in here i'm gonna go over to here rajiv's gonna go where on a quick vacation Going on look a, a two-hour vacation. He's going to go on a little siesta. A siesta. The program's going to go on a little siesta. And when we come back from that siesta, Lafitte and I are going to be on the desk. Hey, 650, 650,000. 
War of Will, standing at Claiborne Farm. Experience the adrenaline-pumping, suspense-filled action of the sport of kings no matter where you are with Naira Bets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Bets. Number one is Mo Donegal by Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come on for the finish, and it's going to be tight here in the Remsen. Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donegal and early voting. And it is Mo Donegal to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. With you in our continuing live coverage this Friday afternoon of America's Day at the Races, brought to you by Hill and Dale at Alapa as we get set for the late pick four. Coming up here in South Ozone Park, New York, six and a half for a long sprint, 25,000 non winners of two life. The condition, Greg Wolf, by the way, stepping in for Acacia Clement. Good to be with everyone as we get set for a load here shortly. And we're at a track that actually might have a track bias, as we have seen speed dominating, and it's been very tough to make up ground. And the one and two are both the forwardly placed horses. I'm not sure why Screwloose is such a big price here at four to one. I think she's the value in there. I can respect Royal King as well. I prefer those two horses. They were the two I would have focused on here. The Royal King figures to be quick early in here. Let's head downstairs to Mig. Yeah, and we'll start with that one horse, uh, Screw Loose. He's outfitted for the first time with an extension blinker on the outside. We talked a lot about extension blinkers yesterday, and I've seen just uh, a rash of horses, you know, ha having extension blinkers added to their uh, equipment. Um, this horse also returns as a gelding, so he's kind of getting a full makeover. Love the way he warmed up under Trevor McCarthy. Really big, aggressive warm up here. And Andy, I won't say you have a Screw Loose because people that live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. I think it's pretty safe to say I've got at least one screw loose. The uh, two-horse Royal King, not only do I think he plays out to be the speed of the speed, he looks outstanding. This horse is just so dappled out, and really that rich, hydrated coat. Liked everything I saw from him. Uh, I was talking with John Toscano, his conditioner. He said, yeah, we want to be on the lead. Uh, you know, John, a very astute horseman that, you know, recognized that speed has been good today. Uh, you want to be forward. Then the uh, outside horse, Midnight Express, he's turning back in distance. Just got to talk Talk about him because he's just really well turned out. He was the second best looking horse as far as from a physical perspective in the paddock. I just don't know turning back in distance if he's going to have the kind of speed he might need to, uh, you know, play to the strength of the racetrack, if you will. Guys? I'm shocked at the money the seven is taking. When he won, he rode a gold rail to victory. Maybe somebody knows something that isn't in the PPs, but he's not fast enough to be five to two in this race, and he doesn't have early speed. Uh, I'm not sure the two is going to easily clear the one here, and I got to think Trevor is going to hold his position. Richie, you you have more excuse for a screwless than me. He's been dumping his head a lot more than I have, but uh, I, I think it's between the one and two as the two speeds here. What? Meanwhile, you know the Linda Rice runner. You better be joking. The four. Gosh. What do you think of this one? I, I don't like his recent form. I, I thought his last race was awful. His race two back, he was the favorite in a, four, in a field where five horses hit the wire together. I mean, could he win? Sure, of course he could. But I, I just think the one and two are the right two horses in this race, and they're both supposed to be forward. And on this racetrack, I, I would prefer to take horses that are forward. We're just not, it's not only that speed is holding up, it also may be that closers are being a bit hampered by the racetrack. Meanwhile, Midnight Express, the seven, now becomes the well, favorite. Based on what? It's like there's a tip or a story or something. He's slow. Um, he has no speed. He had an absolute dream setup when he won two races back. Maybe people see that he won a muddy track and they're not able to analyze the race properly. But for my money, he's a massive underlay. 
Um, I don't get it. Do you? Uh, I thought the one, two, and four, and maybe even a little bit to the three, that would have been my fourth choice in the race, if that. Yeah. Yeah, the seven, the money is a little bit perplexing. Maybe people are being suckered in by his win a wet track, but that was not a particularly good effort, and he just rode a gold rail that day with a sensational ride. To me, I agree with you, Greg. He should be fourth choice here, at least on paper. Will be the last to load, Romero Mirage for Rudy Rodriguez on the post-time favorite outside. Let's go upstairs, Chris Griffin, to kick off this pick four. Is it? All set. And they're off. Good speed towards the inside here from Royal King and also Perliano. They're going to be in the early mix and they're one, two. There's Running Lucky wants to be up with this leader, but Royal King is going to stride away as now two and a half lengths in front. It's Royal King tightly at the rail is the lone leader. Here comes Running Lucky is trying to move in closer here from second. Perliano is now a shared third as Midnight Express is moving to the outside of that rival. They are four lengths in front of Screw Loose, who's at the rail, has now taken fifth to the outside game misconduct. The Triller. You better be joking. 21 and three pumped up opening quarter mile here for Royal King. It's Royal King. No turning back is two lengths in front. Now getting closer is running lucky from the back. Midnight Express is trying to launch a rally. Royal King is still in command. At the rail, that's Perliano from the back. Screw loose trying to make up that ground with game misconduct. And you better be joking. They've got to catch the runaway leader who went 44 and three for that quick half mile time. And Royal King has not come back to the field yet. It's Royal King and Luis Rivera Jr. They are still well clear. Royal King is finding plenty so far with a furlong left to go. Down towards the inside, here comes Perliano as this leader starts to get a little weary up front. It's Royal King gonna try and hold on here for a final 16th. Screw loose from out of the pack. Screw loose trying to, trying to time it perfectly. It's a photo finish. Oh, that was tight. Did Royal King hold off the oncoming screw loose? Then came, you better be joking. In one minute, 18 flat, it's a photo. Talk about having a race in command. Royal King, the two, but then here comes screw loose from the back of the pack for a photo finish. Very tough beat for the two, the track helping them or not. This was an extremely fast pace, and uh, he, he, he may have won the bob, but he still lost the two. That's just too fast, 2176. Screw loose, didn't break. Settled in back and last, but Trevor McCarthy never gave up. He saved ground, he angled out in the stretch, and looks like Screw loose and Mark Hanna get the money here as the one and two, as we talked about before the race. Looked best on paper, and they ran one, two. Why they were betting the seven, we still can't figure it out. I don't even think he beat your three for fourth, Greg. Your long shot three. It was a photo, and he came up short. One, two, four, seven. Ooh, close for fourth. He did get that photo. He, beat, <laughs> he would have got beat out of the super. That would have been a brutal beat for you in the super, Ouch. Greg. It's a good thing you didn't bet that super. Seven to two on your winner. Um, coming from very far back for this win, and for Royal King, you mentioned that quick opening quarter, 44 and three for the half as well. And he still almost won yeah. going that fast, but it took a very good ride from Trevor McCarthy to get the money. I think Trevor was surprised when he didn't break, and he just made the most of it and got it done. Mark Hennick, Windy Lee Farm, home bread. But Trevor McCarthy, as you mentioned, gets the second win of his new Geldings career by a whisker with the Bob at the right time. We'll have the prices from this one uh, when we come back. I'm going to have a new partner when we come back from a break as well. That's it for Andy today. I'm done. What time are you back tomorrow? I'm on with you. I'm on from about 3.30 to 7.30. They'll be at Oakland. You and I will be just up here playing games. No, we're going to have a major role in that show. Uh, we're going to have the story <laughs> of the Bond family farm as well. It is all in the family. For James and Tina Bond and their kids, we'll tell you about all their successes and how they make it work when we come back.
Back with you on America's Day at the races on our Fox Sports 2 coverage. It's brought to you in part where you can play it all at Naira Bets. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. You ever cruise down Times Square? Once in a while. Have you ever been with the kids? Uh, they've never seen it. Not yet. They will wow. one day. Okay. Brand new experience. But cool experience. You know, so many crazy things happened during that COVID time, but I was able to bike down through Times Square just emptiness. Wow. It was it was surreal. It's like the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Sarah L. Bodwi joining me here on the desk as we get set for the latter half of this card here from New York and the best still yet to come out from Oakland. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of exciting races, competitive fields on the way. And of course, the whole crew down there seems to be having a good time so far. This horse did not break well. And on the way that things have been going this afternoon, did not look like things were going to wind up well for Screw Loose. What a performance to get up and win in the final jump. And I think with the way that we've seen this track playing so far today, where speed has really been dominant, you have to upgrade this performance almost because, as you mentioned, he was a horse that was coming from further back, did not get out of the gate all that quickly. And Trevor McCarthy was relentless with him, not giving up to be able to get his nose down just in time over your pace setter in this race. So big effort from him here today, especially consider the way the track has been playing. But also too, and Andy brought up a good point, um, Maybe upgrade Royal King to even a defeat because he went so fast in this race. Pace. He should have been nowhere right. probably in the end and took a photo finish to get him beat. That's how close it was. $9.60 for Screw Loose. Trevor McCarthy, Mark Hennig, the new gelding with the victory in here. Let's set up race six. Seven furlongs, New York Fred. Allowance, optional claiming field and racing colors. Wow. Opening up right now as a three to two favorite. In this spot, Bond Barn, rider change. Kendra Carmouche on Queen's Masterpiece right now at 2-1. to one. For Bond Racing, it is truly a family operation based in Saratoga. They always seem to shine during those summer months up at the spa. From Travers winner, Will's Way, to Whitney winner, Tisway, Buddha, Barons, and many others. James and his wife, Tina, are living out their dream as best friends and business partners. As a little boy, this was a dream. We've got a farm that most people would, um, would die for. It's gorgeous, we're so proud of it. I think it was predestined for us to have New York breads. I was lucky enough to have a horse called Le Carrier. Le Carrier was second to Cigar in the Breeders' Cup in 95. He was a New York bred. You know, New York's really getting it right. I mean, you look at Tis the Law, Funny Side, uh, so many great horses, Four Star Dave. So you're seeing them every day at Saratoga, Belmont, Aqueduct, throughout the country. They're, they're winning races. It's the greatest program, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, we're lucky we're breeders too, so we get a few more awards. We breed a lot of our own horses, but we have bought some of them as well and put into the partnership. We maintain the majority of each horse and we sell five, 10% shares. We're heavily invested in each horse as well. It helps us with the risk, but it also gives them a lot of comfort in that we're taking the majority of the risk. These horses are are professional athletes and they're your sports team when they're when they're going in the gate and for us to share this with so many people across the country that have joined our partnership and that's really rewarding we found this place and we redid it we've had it for 23 years it's a 44 gridley street we're a quarter of a mile basically down from the seven furlong pole on the main track and it's a little piece of heaven the walk is the greatest thing for me personally because I get to follow my horses, watch them come back, I can make sure that they're okay all the time. It's actually an education process because the horses actually get to be around vehicles, cars, but the horses get used to it. We use clear cord a little bit to do some figure eights inside uh, just to kind of give horses back that farm life that they started with. I think it's great the horses are out of the stall for about an hour, you know, which is really nice for the horses. We've been fortunate enough to have some really nice horses and some of them were a little slow early in their life, mentally, physically, and they became good horses. They're giving their all, straining with every stride. Will's Way has won it. Will's Way was a horse that threw his heart out and he chased it. He was amazing. One of my greatest horses, if not the greatest. 
My heart always went to Barron's. They were on six grade ones, I think, in a row, and he went to Dubai twice. He was just an iron horse. Tisway takes the Met Mile with style. Tisway won the Met Mile, and of course the Whitney, and you know, then was syndicated to Spendthrift. And he was a good horse. Buddha was an exceptional horse. He was a star, he beat Fidel Dioro in the wood, Memorial. They just want it more. That's, that's all you can say, you know, and that, uh, you know, we're just lucky to be around them. We bring different things to the table. I come from a corporate background, and he's the horse person, so I think I see things from different ways. Well, I was her dream job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just, okay, we gotta straighten it out right now, okay? Uh, it's fantastic. We are best friends. We've been best friends for 40 some odd years. When you work with your best friend, uh, great things happen, and um, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Such great people. Always great to see them have success. Uh, sons Kevin and Ryan, big part of that operation as well. And there's their horse, Queen's Masterpiece. What do you think of the bond runner here in this upcoming race? I mean, this horse has helped with some of the scratches in this race because this is one that does like to be forwardly placed. And you can really toss the last race as she was eased in that start. She was running against a much better field, I feel, as though than this. But at the same time, this is a barn that does a great job. But this is a barn that does a really great job with horses that have a little bit more recency, ones that have had a start under their belt to get back into racing, fitness. And over the past couple of years, they haven't had as much success with horses off a little bit of a break like this one is. It's what did win first time out, though, this filly, so we'll see. Uh, right now, eight to five favorite board telling a different story. Kendra Carmouche again will be aboard while the post parade coming up when we come back from a timeout. Big weekend coming up in Hot Springs. Javier Castellano, what a year it was for the four-time Eclipse Award winner. First ever Derby, first ever Belmont, yet another Travers. Looking to kick off things the right way with a big mount in the Apple Blossom. We'll talk about it next. It's a domineering display by the ultra-talented McKinsey. McKinsey! Right there, a million two hundred thousand. Eighty million twenty-five, million twenty-five hundred and fifty. Mitchell, five hundred and fifty thousand. And now five hundred. And a million, five hundred thousand. Thank you. Eighty million, four hundred and fifty. Eighty million, seventy-five. Four hundred and seventy-five thousand. You're watching America's Day at the Races. Line change, joining Paula Duca on set. I'm Lafitte Tenkai. How cool is this? Right out your hotel door, down the hall, down an elevator, through the casino, maybe a couple of hands of blackjack, maybe the one-armed bandit, Polly. And at the back of the casino, the doors part, and you're in the paddock here at Oaklawn. Yeah, that's the cool part, is you can see Look at that. you walk into the paddock, and you can make a, a right, and you're in the casino if you wanted to just turn that around. Yeah, but tremendous 
work done there. Such a such a cool experience here at Oakland and on one of the biggest weekends of the season. And that's a big reason why tomorrow's grade one apple blossom. Take a look at number seven, Honor DeLady, seven to two on the morning line. And her most recent effort, this was the Royal Delta, February, Gulfstream Park. Polly, you'll see Honor the Lady. Like she does have to be encouraged early. She really doesn't like the crop. Like none of it's all that pretty, but she's improving. She wins on that afternoon and quickly rising in the ranks in that distab division with how much she's improved on dirt. Yeah. You make a great point. She don't. She's got the swishing tail. She does not like the crop, but you gotta love the way she reaches out with her head. You can mm -hmm. tell she's leaning and, and reaching for that wire. And you made a great point. You know, after the race in the Saratoga Oaks Invitational, they tried her on a soft turf. They had hit the reset button, so they said, "Let's go to the dirt." And she's just been a different filly. And the other thing is, Lafitte. You know, there are some obviously four-year-old fillies in this race with tacks and wet paint. But those are the horses that maybe you want to kind of lean towards because they are progressing. I, I know Adair Manor is going to be probably tough, but this is a horse that's progressing at the right time at age four. She has to be ridden. Safi Joseph has emphasized position. And now with Javier Castellano riding for the first time, what will he do trying to establish forward position with Ana the Lady and Polly coming off that, you know, Fairy Tale 2023, the seven grade one wins, his first derby, his first Belmont, seeking a first grade one win this year, and what would be a first apple blossom victory for Javier Castellano. Well, I think what's make Javier Castellano so special and some of the, the great rides that he's had in his lifetime, and then one of them is Keen Ice, is their horses are a lot closer than you think. I mean, Keen Ice was a lot closer than a lot of people think when he upset American Pharaoh and the Travers. He is a very aggressive rider. And in the one thing about Javier, he'll place her in the right spot. It's just whether she's good enough or not. And I'm sure he's watched that tape. He'll probably stay away from the crop and probably, you know, you know, just probably stay off a little bit off of Dare Manor if he can because, you know, she's going to be really tough to handle. But Javier's done. This is old hat for him. First time he's ridden this filly tomorrow in the grade one Apple Blossom, one of two grade one events at the meet, the Arkansas Derby, now the Apple Blossom, and Bob Baffert, Juan Hernandez, looking for the grade one Oaklawn Sweep. These are not grade one types, just $30,000 claimers, non-winners, three lifetime. Two minutes out, we check in with Maggie. Thanks, Lafitte, and we'll check in with your current favorite. That is number two in here, Southern Sunset, as he'll make the first start for the Chris Hartman barn off the claim, in which he drops in class. And look, Chris Hartman plays the claiming game very well, and you get that high percentage um, by spotting your horses correctly. But I almost take this one because he is such a, I don't know, he's such an odd horse as a negative with this drop in class because he has, as you see, three starts back, runs this monster race to break his maiden, and then he's virtually ease in his subsequent start against uh, an allowance field, and then he takes that drop and he gets the win here. But he's a horse that always lugs in. Uh, he did it pretty much every start for Kenny McPeak. And then, two, if you go back to that start where he was virtually eased, he tried to run up behind horses, and Manny Esquivel had to really, really you know, cr tap on the brakes and, and check him quite severely. He's a horse that just strikes me as one that has does not possess that self-preservation um, characteristic. And, uh, yeah, he can win here. It's not a great field, but I do think that uh, there's some question marks with the horse who, as far as equipment goes, is just wearing a ring bit, does wear a, a short cup cheater blinker, kind of typical of what he has in the past, although I will say that I know that Kenny Peak did run him in a Halton bit, so a little less of a bit this time around. Moving on to some horses to the outside. Number seven, Long Crow. Honestly, he's the one I kind of want. Yeah, Phantom Rye came back, albeit on the turf. We'll see him a little bit later on the card here, too. Um, but at least, you know, he's one that I think is coming out of two decent efforts. His main problem is his lack of speed, but he looks fantastic just purely picking horses on physical appearance he's the one i want and then there's dance mo who does drop out of some tougher starter allowances um last time he, he was five to six wide in the first year and he got a bit headstrong and he's a horse that wants to be forward now i think he's gonna have a little bit of a run for his money with the presence of the louisiana bred racy by bill billy racy B something like that um who was sharp but i will say that dance mo 
He is quite sharp throughout the entire preliminaries here. So maybe we see some pace uh, up front early and it sets up nicely for number seven in here, Long Crow. But got to wish my man, Polly LaDuca. Happy birthday, Polly. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that, Maggie. What are we doing for your birthday tonight? Kind of a school night, kind of a big day tomorrow, but still, what are we doing? Well, here's the deal. When you get over 50, do you actually celebrate a birthday? You know, like, we're gonna, you, you we're get, like, find 50, out. and everybody's like, oh, okay, that's great, you know? It's, and then you get 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, all the way through 59, kind of stinks. <laughs> Let's be honest. We still have to celebrate. Well, let's celebrate with the eight winning here. Yeah, you like the eight here before you give me the sales pitch. What are we, why? Well, the reason why I like Dan Samo a little bit in here, two back, the horse I thought should have won the race. And, and Maggie's right. This horse is very, very keen and likes to pull a little bit. And I think Walter De La Cruz has got to get him to settle back. I, I know he went gate to wire, but I, I think he might be better with a target. And I like seven to two. I, I think this horse is should be the favorite in here but i understand why the the public's going to two they see those big races but those two big races were on sloppy racetracks Let's see if paulie can celebrate his birthday <laughs> with a win here dan samo the favorite the 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 hard to ride southern sunset at six to five matt dinnerman with the call race five live from Oakland. dan samo and walter de la cruz to the outside Six to five for number two, Southern Sunset. First off, the claim for Chris Hartman, Rafael Bejarano aboard. And now Dan Samo goes in. We're ready to go. Harleazy backed away, now re-entering his post position. Now we're ready. And uh, Laroff. On the far outside, Dan Samo gets into it early. Southern Sunset adding blinkers today. Aggressively ridden, strides in front. Dan Samo in the second spot, joined by seven flat. And Bobby White, Bobby into the turn. Those four pretty much across the track. But Southern Sunset, he's got a narrow lead here in the early stages. About a length in front of Dan Samo. He's trying to cross over in second. Seven flat alongside of him. Bob White, Bobby easing off the speed is down on the inside of that pair. Within a length and a half of the lead. Another length and a half, the little sweet thing. Race. Billy is joining that rival. A space of four to Harleazy. And Long Crow is at the back of the pack as they head down the back stretch. A contentious pace battle. Southern Sunset still with the lead, and he strides out as I say that. Southern Sunset opening up the lead to about a length now. Bob White, Bobby in the second spot. Dan Samo stalking the pace today in third. Little sweet thing making up headway on the inside to be within two lengths of the lead. A length and a half to seven flat is lost position. Then Racy Billy racing alone. Long Crow is out of last passing. Harleazy, who drops to the back as they round the far turn. Southern Sunset, three furlongs to go. The pacemaker, three quarters of a length. Bob White, Bobby comes out of the crowd to come up and turn up the pressure. And those two are a neck apart as they round the turn. Two and a half back to Dan Simone in an all-out drive. Little sweet thing alongside of that rival. The others have got to get rolling as they come off the turn. Southern Sunset, Bob White, Bobby on the outside right there. These two together as they head down the lane. Southern Sunset a little bit Green trying to lug in here. Basically brushed the rail about 50 yards ago. Bob White, Bobby still right there as they come for home. Long Crow getting into it third. Trying to come on. Is ducking to the inside. Southern Sunset keeps going though. And Southern Sunset's going to win. Southern Sunset over a charging Long Crow. Third home was Bob White, Bobby. And little sweet thing checked in fourth. Southern Sunset wins at 6-5, to five, but whether it's Manny Esquivel or Rafael Bejarano, this gelding gives his riders absolute fits, Pauly. Yeah, Rafael did a good job. This horse almost hit the rail, and you could see he had to grab a strong uh, hand to the uh, right rein to keep him straight. And then when he responded left-handed, he rebroke a little bit. He looked like a drunken sailor down the lane. And you were looking like the egg was kind of kind of re rally, but good call by Maggie saying that, listen, Long Crow's the only horse in here that can make up ground. And he started to pick it up late. He just ran out of time. Two, seven, three, eight. Southern Sunset. Yeah, it's like he keeps winning, but now with Chris Hartman, they're going to have to keep tinkering and figuring this out. This is two straight races that he was able to prevail.
but at the same time, like literally scraping the proverbial paint. Well, I thought it was a great ride too. I mean, to be aggressive with just the best horse, right? You know, we saw those two numbers on a sloppy racetrack. We were wondering, okay, is this horse the same horse on a racetrack that is fast? And I think Raphael took it out of everybody's hands and said, listen, come catch me if you can. And he hung a couple horses out wide and Long Crow ran well, but take nothing away from the winner. He was the best today at 6-5, to five, and a great job again by Rafi because that horse almost jumped the rail yeah. for a split second. Yeah, some, some dicey moments there. 2-7-3-8, results forthcoming. Oaklawn back to New York. Greg with horses in the paddock for the sixth. Yeah, and there's a man who always seems to have a smile on his face, Kendra Carmouche. She has a pickup mount on Queen's Masterpiece, that James Bond filly we've been talking about who continues to take money right now uh, off the bench, 8-5 to five favorite. Yeah, you're kind of surprised at how the betting is going so far in this race. We saw a lot of early money on racing colors, and now that's really switched towards the outside to a horse that I do think at least will have some more forward position than racing colors will early on in this race as she comes back from a little bit of a break. Yeah, racing colors is going to be very, who I believe opened as the favorite, yet yeah, did not expect to see two to one on this rail five-year-old mare is going to be very far back early. Six minutes to post. We'll get to the post parade in a moment. Let's bring in Jonathan Kinchin for more. JK. Thanks, guys. Yeah, look, I, I like the six in here. You know, often, I think in, in racing, we look at the last race, and, and, and that seems to be the most important one. It's not always the case. Obviously, the last race didn't go well uh, for Queen's Masterpiece. And even after that race, when, when there's a bad race and then there's a little bit of a break afterwards, it gives me even more comfort in knowing that possibly there was a reason that that happened. If you look at the race two and three back, forwardly placed at Aqueduct in November, forwardly placed in, in Aqueduct, at, excuse me, at, at Aqueduct in October. If one of those two races is found, which I, I, I tend to believe the way this horse is being bet on the board, that that's likely to happen. And like I said earlier, that last race, it didn't go well, but there was a break after that. And so I'm assuming that she had a little bit of an issue after that race. Maybe she was a little tired, maybe a little over the top, and they've kind of reset the deck and I feel like she's going to run significantly better. And the tote board also is telling me that I might be right about that. I'm going to take the six, guys. Yeah, Tote Board's definitely telling you that as we begin our post parade. Here's Racing Colors. Tote Board's telling you this one may run big as well, despite coming from way out of it. I'm a big fan of hers. She's run well at big prices in the past. This is too short on this racetrack, though. Five to two, temperamental. Chris Engelhart claims off of Rob Atris, blinkers off. She's taking a step up in class. She has been a little bit inconsistent at times. Should have won that last race. Harlan's Bond, David Donk Barn sends out. More often gets a piece of things rather than getting the win for herself. And I think you're seeing the price reflect that. We're stable mate here. Five-year-old mare, three-time winner, Silk and Dollar. I'm a little bit interested in this horse. She should be forwardly placed more so than she was last time out. Queen's masterpiece, the patented Kendra Carmouche warm-up here. Yeah, you know, the intentions with her to be in a forward position, especially towards the outside. And you can toss that last race. Something must have gone wrong. And now she comes back fresh in here. And that's your group. She's still favored right now at 2-1. to one. Let's go downstairs to Mig. Yeah, guys, I'm going to talk about all the even numbers here, starting with the two temperamental who can show uh, good speed at times, although she does take the blinkers off, and I do think she might be just a touch suspect at the 7 eights, but she looks fabulous in the coat. This five-year-old mare by Practical Joke making a real nice physical impression as my notes almost blew away. Give me one second, guys. Um, Four horse ultimately my top selection. That's Silken Dollar. Uh, you know, she spent most of her uh, career either on turf or uh, synthetic, but she has decent speed. You get Alicia Ruiz, who uh, I think this Philly really showed great speed with two back. And I think just the way she looked and her demeanor, and she's already won at the seven for a long distance, she's going to be my top selection. I, I, I think she's going to be forward. And even though we saw a horse come from far back in the last race, that was a scorching pace. And I don't think you're going to see that kind of scorching pace here. I like what I'm seeing from Silken Dollar in the warm up and the six Queen's masterpiece. She looks terrific. Uh, you know, I, I, somebody much smarter than me years ago guys said oh, you always forgive a horse one bad race and you don't coronate a champion off of one good race so last time obviously something went awry but she looks fantastic made a nice impression in the paddock continue to make a nice impression on the racetrack for the bond uh, barn and you know you get Kendrick Carmouche, who, a guy who's always aware of track trends and usually puts horses in good position she looks great hey and also we ran the bond feature just a, a little while ago 
usually has a high percentage of, of winning after we play the feature. She is really on her toes. She makes a nice appearance right now uh, at 5-2. to two. But finally, favoritism moving to, to temperamental. Let's get back to the rail horse, though, racing colors. And you know, look, we just saw a horse, even though the horse on the lead went incredibly fast. And maybe that was part of the reason that horse weakened late, but the horse come well off the pace in the last race to win. And maybe it's a sign that the track is evening out a little bit in terms of fairness, in terms of which running styles can be effective. But this was already a race that didn't figure to have a ton of pace on paper. And with the way that the track's been playing throughout the majority of the day, you have to kind of wonder if things are going to set up for her. And while she's in great form and has really been outrunning her odds in multiple tough spots as of late, I do just kind of wonder if she's going to have a little bit too much to do. And she's a horse that's gone off at big prices in the past. So taking three to one on a horse that's generally in that 10 to one range, it's a little bit tough to do. Yeah, you leave yourself a lot to do like that. And you, know, you still can run very good, but nine of her 27 career starts, she's come up second or third. We'll see what happens here today. Eamon Harkey will be back in there. At least, you know, he's gotten to know her pretty well being aboard the last couple of starts, in, including a win two starts back, but up to three to one right now. Still pretty significant money for her. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, a couple horses came out of this race, but at the same time, to take a horse that is one that is in this good form right now, but has gradually stepped up the class ladder versus a couple of other horses that are coming back with maybe some questions to answer. I completely understand wanting to go in a little bit of a different direction. And I think that when you're looking at the horse who's your current favorite right now, Queen's Masterpiece, you can toss the last race. You could say that she should be forward in this spot, but nine to five, a little bit short for me. When you look at how this barn does with bringing horses back off of a rest like they are, 61 to 80 days on dirt. This is a barn that's only one for 22 over the past three years doing so, which tells me that some of these horses need a little bit more recency to be their most successful selves out on the racetrack. Maybe need to race into fitness a little bit. Meanwhile, there's Silken Dollar, 5-2. to two. Another one who's made a good appearance here uh, in this race. Certainly caught Meg's eye, one of the David Donk runners in this group. And another one who could be at least tactically close. And she really wasn't as aggressively handled in her last start. She was in a little bit of traffic before fading in the stretch. And she got bumped around a little bit at the break out of there. But she was the one sort of drifting out, initiating that contact. Maybe they can get her a little bit more forward, get her a little bit more in the game today in the shorter field. The biggest price on the board is you know, really the only one not being given a shot here is that three Harlan's bond, the other donk runner. And she's consistent, but she's kind of consistently a cut below some of the other horses that she's going to be facing in this spot. And if you like nine to one, go for it. She, she runs her race every time. I just don't know if she's quite good enough. Racing colors stepping in. Heeman Harkey again won on this five-year-old mare back on February 11th. We'll see if she gets a little pace to run into in this sixth here coming up. Five to two on temperamental. Favorite remains Queen's masterpiece. Bond Barn off since January 19th. Kendra Carmouche with the mount. We're set for the sixth. Let's go upstairs. Chris Griffin, the call. Silken Dollar. Queen's masterpiece. Is it all set? And they're off. Broken a pretty even line. Temperamental is right there with early speed in between horses. Here comes Harlan's Bond on the far outside. That's Queen's Masterpiece. Silken Dollars in that early mix as well. Four across the racetrack. The one taken back. That's Racing Colors as they work up the backstretch. Four still across the racetrack here, and they move quickly now. They start to pick up the tempo. It's a pressured pace early on. The far outside, it's Queen's Masterpiece is right there with a head in front. Silken Dollar is holding that three wide position. In the two path, that's Harlan's Bond. And now taking off some of that early heat here is Temperamental is taken back by Manny Franco. Now being encouraged to get better position here as they work into that far turn. 23 seconds flat. It was not that quick, but it was pressured. 23 seconds flat and still four of them tightly bunched here. The trailer 
is Racing Colors. It's Queen's masterpiece trying to sh shake off the competition with down towards the inside, Silken Dollar. Harlan's Bond is tightly at the rail. Temperamental got off the rail, has moved towards the outside, is trying to catch the leaders as they reach the top of the stretch. 45 and 3 for that half mile time. They still duke it out up front. It's the gray Silken Dollar who's now put a neck in front. Queen's masterpiece is trying to stick with this rival. Down towards the inside, it's Harlan's Bond who's alone in third, is making up some mild ground inside that final furlong. Silken Silken Dollar's got the lead. It's Silken Dollar. Harlan's Bond with some late momentum, but running out of time. Silken Dollar wins it. Silken Dollar wins it over Harlan's Bond. Queen's Masterpiece in one minute 23 and four. Silken Dollar, David Doc Barn, Eliseo Ruiz, fourth career win for this five year old mare. And that was a really smart ride by this five pound apprentice because there were a lot of horses that seemed to have some intention of going forward early on in this race and he didn't get all caught up with trying to be such a part of that early pace pressure. It allowed his horse to sit off a little bit, still keep that position in between horses, and then have enough to be able to stride forward in the later stages of this race. And I think that we're still dealing with a track that's pretty kind to front end speed. As you saw, Racing Colors not able to make up any sort of significant ground whatsoever. Temper, I don't know, the, the horse didn't show up. Temperamental, a horse that just really didn't show up either. At a short price, co-favorite Silken Dollar, slight second choice in here with the win uh, for the Donk Barn. There's the gray, first win in five tries here at Aqueduct. And we'll have these prices for you coming up in just a bit, four, three, six, two. Here in the sixth at the Big A. We're gonna take a timeout. We'll be back, more coming up here from Aqueduct and from Oaklawn, and we'll talk Derby picture as well, 22 days away. Doorknock looking to follow in Mage's footsteps. His brother won it last year. Can he equal the feat on the first Saturday in May? Stay with us. Is coming down the center. Hit show is there. King's Barnes gives way. Angel of Empire with powerful strides down the center of the track. But there's one for long to go. Two fills fights on. But Mage has taken the lead. Angel of Empire's a rallying third. Time is running out to catch Mage. Mage digs down deep. Urged onto the wire. Onto the wire to win the Derby. 
Kentucky Derby winner Mage from last year, bringing Javier Castellano his first ever Kentucky Derby win. I mean, it's incredible that that was Javier Castellano's first Kentucky Derby victory because he's a jockey that's just had so much success overall, but has really put together a banner year last year and has gone on to really do so so far again this year as well. And now it's little brother trying to do the same thing, right? And, you know, you look at that bluegrass last time out and was not where he usually is forward, winds up fourth in there. Danny Gargan says he didn't love that dirt in the face and Derby Day that they're going to go back to what's worked for them, being on the lead or, or right near it. The, the only problem is there's another horse that's going to be there too named Fierceness. Exactly. And when you have that time to figure out if you can rate your horse and you have the time to try that experiment, you should at least take it with a horse that you're pretty confident is already going to be in the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby. It didn't work out. Now they know what they need to do with him to give him his best chance to be successful and if he ends up burning himself out on the front end with another horse, so be it. But you have to give him his best opportunity to be successful, to win the race. Are there enough seats at Churchill Downs to no. accommodate that ownership group? <laughs> wow. Uh, we will find out, you know, who shows up. He's obviously shown immense talent, um, even though at, at times... Um, it's not been quite as focused as you would like, but the talent is there. Do you think there's the talent enough to win a Kentucky Derby? I don't know. I mean, I feel as though he's a horse that has run very well so far, but I think that he met a very weak field in the Fountain of Youth once all those scratches came forward. And I think that the rating experiment didn't work out in the bluegrass. So they have to try something a little bit different, a little bit new with him and see if he can get back to being that horse that was so promising early on in his career. I just don't know if he's quite gone on from there. Yeah, tough, tough couple of preps, because even the prep before that, that was a race that was sort of just decimated by scratches, and you didn't learn a lot from him. He didn't really get tested all that much. No, it was basically like an allowance race, right? I mean, Ladombro was second. This was a race that did not really tell us anything about how he's developed and about his ability going forwards. It was just kind of an easy workout for him, given all the scratches. Back in the race we just showed you here at Aqueduct Silk and Dollar. Two to one, slight second choice again for the David Donk Barn, owned in part by Bruce Lunsford, David York, and Eliseo Ruiz in the irons for the victory on this great five-year-old mare by Central Banker. This was a good ride by him. I thought it was a very patient, very conscientious decision to be able to just feel out how those pace players were going early on, take his horse back a little bit, and make the move at the right time. Seventh race, interesting runner has opened up early as the favorite, Subrogate. Off since July of last year at Mama, this horse was showing a lot of ability early uh, in his three-year-old season and went to bench the bench for a long time and now makes the comeback. Six for a long sprint, first allowance condition. You have Radio Red on the rail, obviously a, a very talented runner for Danny Gargan. Yeah, and uh, Danny Gargan, of course, trainer of Doorknock and Society Man as well, who we both going to the Kentucky Derby. This is a horse that has some ability, and at least you know he can sit off of horses. He doesn't need the lead in this spot, and there are a lot of horses that seem like they might, but Speed has been playing well. Dylan Davis will have the call on Radio Red. We'll have more on the seventh race at Aqueduct when we come back from a timeout. Look who's got a big contender in the next at Oakland to start off the late pick five. Amos Barnes. Sending out the Reds, who we got familiar with here in New York, the 8-5 to five morning line favorite. Standing at Claiborne Farm. There's a big, bold, beautiful world waiting to be explored by you and your friends, of course. But not just any friends, the best of friends. The kind of friends who let you do you. Because in this world, it's positive vibes only. And when you get in the zone here, you stay a while. These aren't just good times, they're the best of times. And your time is now. So come explore. Resorts World. Early voting comes inside. He wins the brief. Disarm. Takes the 
bat win. And Tima, they win the Bat Park Pennsylvania Derby's Wicked Halo, who wins the Raven Run Stakes. Nobody catching society. Red Root One Cyber Knight has won the Haskell over Tima and Donna in the Forgo. Sierra Leone wins the Toyota Bluegrass. Two million three hundred thousand. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. My favorite race is the 2019 Kentucky Oaks with my horse, Serengeti Empress, crossing the finish line first and everything that she brought to us with that win. I don't know what it's like to actually be an athlete in a major event, but I think that walkover is about as close a feeling as you can get to it because it, you just feel electric inside. They're off in the Kentucky Oaks. I really wasn't watching her out of the gate because a horse had stumbled and lost its rider. And I immediately turned to that horse to make sure she was okay. And then I turned my attention back to Serengeti Empress, who was making the lead going to the first turn and saving ground for the 13 hole. That was the plan. So everything to this point is going great. My wife had turned to me and said, 46 and change, that is too quick for a half mile. And I turned and I said, not for my horse, it's not. Turning for home, I thought she cut the corner great. She's going to take a challenge right here. And I'm like, uh-oh. But when Serengeti sees this filly out of the corner of her eye, she re-breaks, takes off, and it's right about here where I realize I'm going to win the Kentucky Oaks. As they come down to the line, Serengeti Empress has taken the Kentucky Oaks. And I remember raising my hands like this, and then one of my friends patted me on the back and I lost my balance. And I fell into my daughter and I fell into my wife and we hit the floor. And everybody piled on like it was uh, like we just won the World Series. I must have thought about a million things at the same time, but the most overwhelming thought in my head was my parents. And I always hoped I could do something in their lifetime that would make them proud, a signature race. And this was it for me. I mean, how do you describe something that just makes everything in the world seem great? I don't know what's in the future for Tommy Amos Racing Stable, what big races might be out there, but uh, for me, this will be the one, and she'll be the one. I'll never, ever forget her. That moment, that mare, those colors, Dr. Joel Politi, and probably like the greatest post-race celebration in yeah. the history of great post-race celebrations. Yeah, I've said this to Tom. Tom's a dear friend of all of us. And I said, you know, the one thing I figured out of all of this is that Colleen can take a hit. Yeah. <laughs> His poor wife, I mean, she's pretty good at taking a hit. And Tom just laughs at me. But yeah, listen, uh, that was a golden moment for a guy that's, you know, kind of been a father figure to me throughout the years. Hmm. Tom is kind of guy that is a no-nonsense guy, tells you like it is, it'll let you know if his horses are alive or not, they're doing well. But I, I've learned a lot from him off the racetrack as well. He's such a, a, a great handicapper, too. I don't think a lot, and he's great on TV. Um, but that was a special, special moment. You're right, that celebration is up there. It was, and that, that, by the way, he said he got to that. That was like a clip. That was an illegal block <laughs> yeah. in the back. That, that was, was legit. That was, yeah. And like a mosh pit scene there. Serengeti Empress. And our, like our friendship aside from Tom, like what a fast, tough, classy Serengeti Empress. Like what a mare. Yeah, and sometimes you look at like that race in the Oaks and you wonder, was that her best race? I, I don't know. Maybe the race at Saratoga. I still can't believe she won that race at Saratoga, but she had the heart uh, of a grade one winner. And the way she won races, she just was relentless on the front end and a special horse for Tom. He always told me, he said, listen, this horse has heart and she'll run through anything. And she did on that day. Serengeti Empress, Tom Amos, well represented here with the Reds, number three at eight to five, field of eight, $45,000 claimers running a mile, post time two minutes, we check in with Maggie.
Yeah, the Reds looking great in all the preliminaries. Real uh, vigorous warm-up, too, we see from Christian Torres for this Tom Amos trainee. I, I will say the Reds maybe not quite as bulked up as when I had last seen him. Granted, that was... Going back away is here nearly a year and a half um, when Safi Joseph had him in Saratoga. But I do like what I'm seeing as we'll check in with a horse who's looking to get his third win in a row. That's number five, Phantom Ride. Uh, shipped down to Sam Houston, got the win on the turf with Eric Asmussen. And now he's back with Keith Asmussen aboard his back for their father. And I, he just strikes me as a horse that's doing very well right now. He looks fantastic. He's happy. Just that great kind of you know, energy that you want to see from your horses. That's not nervous energy. It's just, yeah, let's get out there and do this type of energy. So I think he was a, a good alternative if you're not looking for three to two um, versus now three to one. A horse that I find kind of as a bit of a conundrum. Number one, perfect flight. Now, there's a lot of back class with this horse, right? I, I mean, a previous stakes winner. He's run in some really nice fields, including three techniques, Skippy Longstocking, Frost, Frosted Grace. And two starts ago, Robert, uh, excuse me, Peter Miller was you know, willing to give him up. He was the beaten favorite that day. Diodoro takes him, drops him again. Again, the beaten favorite while putting the blinkers on. Now, Ramo Quet takes him, puts him in for the 40. Um, He's not quite the same horse that I remember going back to last year uh, when he ran in that optional allowance here and finishing third behind Cotto River. He's a little bit not lighter in a bad way, just not as bulked up, um, not as robust looking. Uh, but once he got out on track, he got very, very sharp. I have to give props to uh, the pony rider and her pony as he wanted to try to bolt going the right way. And they managed to make the turn with him to get back going the wrong way to do the warm ups at the head of the stretch here. But I wonder what they do with him. They, as Paul always mentions, Ramon Vasquez, one of the most aggressive riders here from the rail. Do they get a bit aggressive with this horse from that rail position? Um, and I wonder if that makes them a bit more competitive, makes them a bit more brave than what we've seen as of late, guys. Pedal to the metal, question mark. Paul, perfect flight. Ramon Vasquez? He's He's been hot of late, too. Ramon can flat out ride. He's been running hot the last couple of weeks. And I'm with Maggie. Like, he likes to push forward. Like, I've said this forever. But when you get a horse that's a little bit lazy, Ramon likes to um, get a horse involved in the race. Um, I, I kind of think the Reds here is over bet at 8-5. to five. I Right on the morning line. Nothing against Tom at all, but this horse hasn't won in two years. I mean, and I get it's been a short 2024, but was winless with with only one second place on the resume. The four uninvited guests was my conundrum type of horse, because hmm. if you look back to his races, there's a couple of races on his form that he can get back to, I think, that would beat this field. He had a no in the 10 hole. When you draw the 10 hole out here, it's really tough. Then he drove the mud last time. Would not Harry Hernandez better rides, who's a very good rider. Now, Bearano jumps aboard. I think the four three to ones is actually pretty good value. Uninvited guests, none of those at the racetrack ever. <laughs> the Reds, only the ones that give you bad tips. <laughs> <laughs> the Reds wonder who would win in a sprint the Reds or Ellie Dela Cruz. I think Ellie Dela Cruz runs about 24 <laughs> miles an hour, but he, he, he probably have long, might have while. longer yeah. legs. Yeah, true. <laughs> the Reds for Tom Amos, eight to five, the favorite, ready for the late pick five, live from Oak Lawn. It's post time. Here's Matt Dinnerman. Into the outside post, Mr. Thunderstruck. Remember, everybody, this race starts and ends at the green and yellow pole. Right where they're starting, they're going to end there, too, for this mile affair. Mr. Thunderstruck up to the gate. We're ready to go. Start of the late pick five. And uh, let off. Perfect flight was a little bit slow to go. Search engine put into play. Phantom Ride takes back. Outlier moving up to claim second, but Search Engine is the leader approaching the turn from Outlier, who runs in the second spot. Perfect flight makes his way into third. Phantom Ride is next right behind him. A gap of two to Mr. Thunderstruck. Uninvited guest to the inside. Roman Centurion is one runner beat. The Reds, the favorite. He's at the back of the pack now as they approach the backstretch run. Search engine, the leader here by three quarters of a length. Outlier 
first second on the hip of that pacemaker. Perfect flight and a good gallop runs in third. A length and a half to Phantom Ride. A similar margin to Uninvited Guest. Then the Reds getting a little bit closer. Takes the third last spot from Mr. Thunderstruck, who's dropped back a few positions. Roman Centurion at the rear of the field. Ten behind as they approach the half-mile pole. Search engine still in control of things on the lead. A length in front went 23-3 and three the first quarter. The half in 48-2. and two. Search engine a half length in front. Outlier to the outside. Getting closer as they go into the turn. Perfect flight in a pocket. He's got some horse. Phantom ride pinning him in down on the inside as they round the turn. Uninvited guest needs to do more. He's five lengths behind under a ride. The Reds. He's being asked to get going behind the leaders as they start to pack up on the lead. Coming to the top of the lane. This race went at the 16th pole. Perfect flight. Just dove to the front. He found a seam on the rail and blew right past search engine at the top of the lane. Perfect flight. Opens up by two. Phantom ride second. Search engine back in third. Perfect flight in front. Phantom ride coming with a late surge. He's coming fast. And Phantom ride got it. Phantom ride over perfect flight. And then search engine photo for fourth. Thrilling finish in just in time. Phantom ride picks off perfect flight in the shadow of the wire in the sixth at Oaklawn. Wow. Yeah, great call by Maggie. She liked the one here, perfect flight. And Ramon Vasquez gave this horse a great yep. ride. But the Asperson barn is a rolling. I mean, when you're just hot right now, and Keith gave this, produced this horse right at the right time again and gets the job done. And like, you know, Maggie said, you, you, form is all form. This is three in a row now for this son of Candy Ride. Five, one, two, three. Oaklawn prices forthcoming. Greg, time for the feature at Aqueduct. Yeah, thank you, Lafitte. Six furlongs here, first level allowance race here. And this is the remaining half the entry uh, kingdom here for David Jacobson. He's looking for his third win in a row, but this is a tougher group that he's run into in his last two starts. I thought he was interesting, though. Radio Red gets the rail. He's yet to win against Open Company. He's held his own, though, finishing second last time out. The speedy Defusky Island, not quite as quick as he used to be. No, but maybe his race last time out and three back indicate that that form isn't totally lost. I just don't know if he makes the lead here. Cool Kathmandu for Charlie Baker. He's still lightly raced. He comes off refreshing. He just really hasn't run a race fast enough to be competitive here. Be the boss ran a big race on a muddy sealed track last start. Yeah, absolutely. Beating excellent timing, and at least you know that he can pass some horses. Excellent timing. Speaking of him, he has a race that blows anyone in this field away. Problem is, three starts since then, he's not backed it up. No, but at the same time, he was off a layoff last time. He has that speed to be possibly the speed of the speed in this spot as he goes second off the bench. Surprise, he's 5-1. to one. We'll Me see if that too. price comes down. Subrogate, very interesting runner. He's the one who opened as the favorite. He's been off since July of last year, making his four-year-old debut. I do like the cutback in distance for him. His only win was sprinting, which is what he'll be doing today. Let's see if he's ready to go off the break. Back with us, trackside, let's go to Acacia Clement. And we'll start things off, Greg, with the number two, Radio Red, who does not have a good record on a wet track. And he is this kind of big, solid type of physical that doesn't usually handle a wet track well. Now, last time he ran very well, but it could also be that he just doesn't like kickback. And in his last race, Dylan Davis, who rode him that day as well, kept him in the clear. He was forwardly placed. The race was dominated up front. And they just went one, two around the racetrack, his face completely clean towards the end. He's a bit of a quirky individual as well. Um, often they have to use a blindfold to get him into the gate. He can be really revved up in the preliminaries. He's on his toes today as he always is, but overall he's acting just fine and staying with the pony for the warm up. I expect him to be forward once again because as we had some rain earlier, there is some moisture in this track and um, do, do seem does seem like still you want to be forward. Now the number nine subrogate is off of the layoff. We haven't seen him since July. This is a horse that always carries a lot of condition but coming back now as a four-year-old, he really has developed and, and just everything's kind of in the right places now. Um, he's a big solid horse, but he does look fit. He's well muscled. He was very sharp back in the paddock as well, but not over the top either. The front wraps do go on, but that's not an uncommon thing to see for the barn. And sometimes you'll see it more frequently when there is a track with moisture in it, just to add a, an extra little bit of coverage there too. I like what I see from this horse coming back and um, we'll see if he's ready to roll off the bench, but all things so far looking like he should be ready uh, for this spot. I thought the seven be the boss ran very well last time out. I 
did give my pick in until I, I saw him warming up and I wish he was just extending and reaching a little bit more in the warm up just now. Um, but overall, he's a horse that since the last time I saw him, he really has strengthened up, put on a lot of muscle mass and just really seems to be a horse that's doing very well right now. Was able to run down excellent timing last time out who was loose on the front end and there could be some company for excellent timing in here as well. And I, I liked what I saw from Be the Boss back in the paddock and hoping that he could get uh, a good setup in here and being a New York bred. He won the second level New York bred allowance last time out. Now goes to the uh, A other than for open allowance in here. And that's the beauty of having a New York bred and plenty of options and conditions to go through. Jonathan, I know that you were hoping though for the speed of the speed. Absolutely. I, I like excellent timing quite a bit in here. Um, if you look at this horse, he's, he's always shown a lot of speed. And I think that when horses like this that have this style, it's that kind of all out, run you off your feet speed. I think that fitness is obviously very important. Excellent timing came in off a 296 day break last time on March 10th when they ran, caught a muddy racetrack, ran well that day, just got a little bit tired. I really, really expect the six year old to take, six year old, excuse me, to take another step forward because his game is being able to run the entire race and really get to the bottom of his gas tank. And I worry that maybe his gas tank was a little bit light last time coming in off of that long break. I expect him to run much better here, and I love the draw for him as well. Yeah, I definitely expect a lot better here second off the bench. He had every right to get a little bit tired last time out off the bench. He did, and honestly, he didn't even run that poorly in that effort when he was coming off such a significant layoff. And Be the Boss is a horse that is pretty good in his own right that was able to run him down. And he also had that edge of recency, too. And while I don't know that we're ever really going to see the 94 buyer speed figure version of excellent timing, he ran an 88 last time, and an 88 still puts him right in the mix, especially with how we have seen this track play so kindly to front runners so far throughout the day. If you really do believe that he is the speed of the speed, which it seems that Jonathan and I do, you're getting a decent price right now on him second off the bench. Manny Franco will be aboard. See if that price continues to come down on him. Nine to five. Meanwhile, on Radio Red on the rail who has some, certainly some big races on the resume. Let's take a look at him in action back on March 2nd when he wound up second to factually correct. He's run well as of late over most of his recent starts. I mean, he's basically been in New York bred company throughout the majority of his career. And the only times that he's stepped out of it were the Gotham Stakes as a three-year-old in this race right here. And he showed that he at least belongs in the conversation with Open Company, running an 88 buyer speed figure in this effort, finishing second. It was a decent field as well that was behind him, and he should get a nice tracking trip. At least you know he can handle a wet track as well. He's probably sick of seeing that horse. He's glad there's no <laughs> factually correct around who's beat him the last two times he has not won. As we get a look at Dylan Davis... He'll be the pilot for Radio Red. And it looks like they will load this horse without him, being a, a little troublesome there at the gate. Does he have the blindfold on? He does to try and get him some of these horses that don't like tight spaces. They put these blindfolds on. And Acacia says that's normal what they do with Radio Red each and every time he comes to that starting gate. Yeah, they get to know everybody's routine really well to try to make this go as quickly and easily as possible for everyone. And of course, Dylan, very familiar with that as well, just hopped off, knew what he was getting himself into right away. And it seems as though they've got him mostly in now. And as soon as the starting gate crew does their job with Radio Red, Dylan will hop aboard. Dylan, of course, coming off a of meet title, Aqueduct winter meet, and started equally as hot to this spring meet. He's been impressive, and, and when Dylan's riding well, he gets himself into the game early on. He always seems to find some forward position with his horses when he's on one of those hot streaks. So there he is hopping aboard, the two-to-one favorite. Meanwhile, price has come down a bit. Excellent timing, that eighth is speedster with Manny Franco down to three-to-one subrogate. See what we get out of this horse making his four-year-old debut long layoff for the nine with Jose Lizcano, competitive seventh. Here in South Ozone Park, Chris Griffin, the call. Yeah, man, do be the boss. Excellent timing. The 
Suppergate. Is it? All set. Front of the gate open there. Looks like for supper gate. Now in. And they're on. Good speed towards the outside from excellent timing, but has plenty of company. Cool Ketmandu is in there with Kingdom, and now the front two hook up. Excellent timing in Kingdom, and they fly early. Here up on the outside, it's Subrogate, and Jose Lescano is now stalking from third, starts to move in closer as the lone leader is now excellent timing, who's dispatched of Kingdom, who's back to third. Cool Ketmandu broke with the leaders, is back to fourth, and they went 21 and three for that opening quarter mile. Excellent timing is flying up front. Subrogate is right there from second. Here comes the run from the back. Can be the boss is moving towards the outside of Kingdom. They're going to be third and fourth as they approach a quarter mile left to go. Losing some ground is cool. Katmandu Radio Red starts to inch closer and at the back it's Defusky Island. They haven't got to excellent timing yet. It's excellent timing. Went 44.46 for that fast half mile time. Subrogate with every shot up alongside towards the outside. It's Subrogate who's on that wrongly but has now got the momentum. Excellent timing right there. Radio Red from out of the pack grandstand side is also trying to make up that ground would be the boss inside the final 16th will subrogate hold on radio red catching with every single stride subrogate does hold on subrogate wins it over an oncoming radio red excellent timing and be the boss in one minute 10 and one so a horse who didn't debut until April of his three-year-old campaign. He had shown a lot of ability early on through the first four starts. Hadn't seen him since July of last year. He comes back and beats a very good field here off the bench. He does, and he got himself into a good position in this race, sitting right off of excellent timing, who went fast early on in this race. It seemed like this was going to be a race with some pace in it, and it certainly did not disappoint. This is a race that's probably going to come back as a pretty fast effort for this group, and he was able to get that win off of the layoff, and a little bit green still. I mean, he's so lightly raced, still figuring things out over this muddy racetrack, but he put it all together at the right time to get the win. Subrogate, he is undefeated sprinting. It's only Very done true. it twice, two but for two. this is impressive to do this <laughs> off the bench. Uh, Four-year-old debut, maybe much better things in his immediate future. Jose Lescano on board for the win. Radio Red, he always seems to run very well, but a lot of times just comes up the bridesmaid. And that's what happens when you have that kind of running style, right? You always put yourself at a little bit of a disadvantage. You need things to work out for you on the front end for those horses to start coming back to you. And he ran very well, especially given how the track's been playing today. Nine to two upset here in the seventh at Aqueduct. We'll have these prices to come. Nine, two, eight, seven, finish. We're going to take a timeout when we return. The Asmas and team. we got to throw in Eric now as well. Brothers going to duel in the next race coming up. Steve and Keith already with a win today, though, with Phantom Ride. And eyeing a big weekend with Rivet in the Count Fleet and Bellamore in the Apple Blossom.
We're back on our Friday coverage, Fox Sports 2, America's Day at the Races, and the seventh, our feature in the books here at Aqueduct Subrogate. Off the bench, what a performance from this four-year-old. What a four-year-old debut for the son of Arrogate. Winter Circle lead-in brought to you by Fasic Tipton's industry-leading selected yearling sales, the July sale, Saratoga sale, and New York bred yearling sale, all taking place this summer. Nominate your yearlings today at phasictipton.com. If this was a starting point for his four-year-old season, I'm excited to see what's next. Me too, and I think this is going to come back as a pretty fast race and earn a higher number, so it'll be interesting to see if they maybe want to think about testing some stakes waters going ahead and keep him sprinting because he was very impressive today. $11.40 for the win on the comeback here, Subrogate. Let's set up the nightcap quickly. Seven furlongs to close out the Friday card here in New York. $14,000 claiming race, all for sale for that price. Horses who've not won three races lifetime. Montebello, a big drop in class here for Rudy Rodriguez. The last start, though, does not inspire a ton of confidence. It really doesn't. That was a tougher field, so at least you do have to give him that. But even when you look at his race, two back off of a little bit of a break, I feel as though he was helped by where he was on the racetrack that day. You wanted to be inside. So I just, I don't know how good he really is in four to five, a bit too short. All right, we'll get more on that race in a bit right now. Back to that performance by Subrogate. Let's go to Acacia. And I'm so happy to be joined by his trainer, Jorge Duarte Jr. Subrogate, as he came back now making his first start as a four-year-old. It just really seems like everything's in the right place. He's really developed a lot. Yeah, he's a very handsome horse. Uh, we always liked him. A uh, little setback in the summer, but uh, he really matured over the winter, and he came back fresh today. Good setup. So we're happy with the performance. You said to me before that he was well meant right at the beginning as well. Always some high hopes, thinking maybe some bigger things down the line from this year? Yeah, we'll take one step at a time. Uh, you know, last year we stretched him out and stuff like that. Very solid at short distance. So uh, we'll talk to the boss and everybody and make sure everybody's on the same page. And definitely a good springboard race today. It was a little bit reluctant to switch leads to what were your thoughts about the finish in the stretch? He's had this uh, little bit thing going on where he has tardy to switch leads. I talked to the jocks, we tried it in the morning. Maybe that's just gonna be him. Uh, the setup today was perfect, outside post, speed inside. So we'll take one step at a time. Good to see him back, a nice performance. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks for everything. Subrogate with the win. And yes, sometimes, Greg, when they don't wanna switch leads, the best thing to do is to just leave them alone. Yeah, see if they can get that sorted out with his horse, but didn't seem to, to hinder him. Jose Lizcano, Jorge Duarte, Colts next stables. And showing a lot of promise here. They gotta be very excited with this performance and what they can start kind of mapping out for the rest of the year with this horse. Absolutely, and he has so little racing under his belt already that you have to imagine that things like switching leads and being a little bit more mature and keeping a straighter path, those will come with time and racing experience. And it's possible he could get even better than what he just showed us today. We're gonna move on to that eighth race when we return from a timeout. More coming up from Oaklawn as well. And speaking of that big Saturday coming up in Hot Springs, not just the Apple Blossom, got the Count Fleet and Skelly, his last state's performance. Introducing a stallion, as top class as they come. In 22 career starts, he won or placed in 12 graded stakes, competing in 15 grade ones, earning over $1.7 million. His undisputed speed is evidenced by seven 100-plus fire speed figures, a three-time grade one winner, Raging. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one of a kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. than a quarter of a mile to go and Greatest Honor starts to get away.
greatest honor. He's an easy winner in the Holy Bull. And here he comes now. Greatest honor finding his best stride right when he needs to. And he's going to run down during the clock to win the Fountain of Youth. As they move through the stretch, it's still Skelly. Skelly maintains a daylight lead. And then comes Strobe. Pirate Rick toward the inside. Surveillance making up some ground. And Tejano twist on the far outside. But it's going to be Skelly. Skelly takes the count fleet start to finish. Leaving a vapor trail in last year's count fleet. Skelly, 100th. Stakes win at Oaklawn for Steve Asmussen, and tomorrow Raj Skelly out to defend his title in the Count Fleet. Yeah, and this horse is just a special horse. Um, he's dominant at this track. Six wins from eight starts. He's coming off uh, arguably one of his best races mm -hmm. in defeat when he tracked the pace in, in Saudi Arabia and finished second, um, it's just all the stars are aligned for him to really be one of the top horses, not only for this race, but in the division. Top ranked North American sprinter trying to join that list. Dave's friend, Bordenero, semaphore man, speaking of Oakland legends, Whitmore, actually a three time winner of the Count Fleet. And tomorrow, the half million dollar Count Fleet, three quarter of a million dollar purse. And Steve Asmussen trains three of the eight in Jackson Traveler, number seven, Rivet, and Skelly, even money on the morning line. His most recent effort in the States on a wet track, his 2024 debut in the King Cotton, and simply doing what he, this is what Skelly does, Raj, runs his competition off their feet. Yeah, he has that natural speed, and Ricardo Santana knows him so well, he doesn't take it away from him. He utilizes that speed, puts them in chase mode, and once you start chasing this horse, and then he re-brakes, he finds another gear. So it's just a tough horse to bypass. That ability, run with him, run you into the ground, let him go, you'll never see him again, but showing that new dimension you were discussing in Saudi Arabia, in the Riyadh Dirt Sprint, from off the pace, he engages the leaders, opens up, and in the end, just gets run down by a world-class sprinter, Japan's remake. And I think this race in defeat is arguably one of his best, I'm if not you. his best race, and they learn so much more about him. He's not a one-trick pony. He doesn't have to have the lead. If someone else wants to go super crazy for lead, he could track like he did this day, and he still put in his run. He was not beat by a slouch. And even, even the fifth place finisher came back and blew out the Dubai Golden Shaheen. So. Tuz. Tuz. In sensational fashion. Steve Asmussen, last year he had Gunite. He ran second in the Riyadh Dirt Sprint. He went on to the Godolphin, to the uh, to the sprint on, on the undercard of the Dubai World Cup. Uh, but this was the plan all along for Skelly after the Riyadh Dirt Sprint to bring him back for the count. Fleet for Asmussen looking to pad his stats in this particular event. Already a five-time winner. Earlier today, Maggie with North America's all-time leading trainer. Here with trainer Steve Asmussen, who will send out a three-prong attack on tomorrow's uh, Count Fleet. And Steve bringing out three of the favorites, too. Skelly returning off his Saudi Arabia journey, um, in which he finished second. I thought a valiant performance. So nonetheless, talk a little bit about him coming back. Where do you see him? He's awfully fast, and there's certainly no slowing him down either. Uh, you covered it all on that, you know, Skelly. I, I think the question is how much the trip to Saudi took out of him. He gave a, a great account of himself, uh, very proud of him. But he's back here at Oaklawn where he has a wonderful win streak here. Uh, trying to do, feel very good about him. Uh, Jackson Traveler, uh, Fountain of Youth last time, you know, with a, a very good win in the Whitmore best race he's run in several years. Feel great about uh, 
having Pratt back on him as well as he responded to him last time. And then Rivet, who's, you know, a four-time winner here at Oaklawn and is always capable of a huge race. He's a cool dude. But getting back to Scully, is there any way as a trainer that you can gauge how that Middle East trip has affected a horse? You've done it many times to Dubai and so on and so forth. Well, I think it's a lot easier with Skelly being an older gilding. You know, it's just his personality is he's a very strong horse. He um, shows a lot on, in the mornings, and his works have been excellent here. So I, I think we've got the good Skelly back. Looking at the Apple Blossom, it's a really fun race, and I thought of many ways you can go as far as a handicapping perspective, but you're going to send out Bellamore, who should offer some value, but two starts back, won the Houston Ladies Classic. How is she doing? Watching her school, she looks fantastic. Uh, very proud of how the filly looks and how she's handling. Um, as you mentioned, won the lady, uh, Houston Ladies Classic, two back, you know, third here in the Azari. Um, neither one of those races are fast enough for the Apple Blossom, but that's to be expected and uh, feel like we are sitting on a better race than the two previous we've had with her. Um, circumstances seem ideal uh, this week for it, and she's trained beautifully over the racetrack. And I think it, you know, it's a, a wonderful opportunity with a great mare. She's beautiful. Steve, thank you so much for that insight and time. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Asmussen looking to go back to back in the Apple Blossom. Last year's epic edition with Clarier running down the Kentucky Oaks winner, Secret Oath. And a point he made about Skelly. He's saying, yeah, the good news is that he's an older professional sprinter, but that you know, it's a question of how much that trip to Saudi Arabia took out of him. Yeah, it's a long way to travel. And he also ran a hard race. I mean, he laid it all on the line. Um, so tra the travel plus the, the extent that the race took out of him, it's hard to tell how they're going to come back out of that. And it's only to see him race. <laughs> uh, you know, you can only do what you can as a trainer to prepare him and then put him in the race and see see what happens. Yeah, like you said, a concern, but the fact that it's Steve Asmussen and he is running him, he must like what he's seeing from Skelly, enough for him to be himself, show up, and potentially successfully defend his title in the Count Fleet. And, and bottom line, as you pointed out, this is the kind of horse that can create fans because we're going to have a chance to see Skelly f for more for, for more races moving forward. Yeah, and that's one of the cool things about him being a gelding. You know, people sometimes are not excited about geldings. I'm so excited about Skelly being a gelding because we he, we don't see him get pulled off to stud too early. And and if he, he's only a five year old, so he's a relatively young horse, he could be a horse that's actually we haven't seen the best of him yet, and that could be scary. One of the most exciting horses in training, Skelly. You'll have a chance to see it with us tomorrow on America's Day at the races. The Count Fleet on the undercard of the Grade One. Apple Blossom. Less than a minute out, race seven. Look at this. Raj wide, wide open. Arkansas bred $12,500 claiming sprinters. Three quarter of a mile dash and a seven to two favorite. Three to one now. I'm the machine. Who'd you wind up with? Well, I took a stab here with the number three stomping hot rod. He's just a horse that is in form, knocking at the door. I don't really see anything that I love here. And the one thing I don't really love about him is the fact that he's going to be an early pace presence. Mm -hmm. However, if he, I think if Vasquez is a, I've seen him ride earlier, he's a patient jock. I think he's going to put him just off the pace setters and, and probably get first run on the closers. And I think that's a great formula to, to make a big impact in this race. Three to one. I'm the machine. Uh, your thoughts on the six-year-old drawn inside, UVC, and uh, the hot hand of Keith Asmussen looking for a third victory on the afternoon. Yeah, this is a great post for this horse on the inside. He'll be able to sit there and save all the ground. Um, however, his last race in March, which was a, a month ago, prior to that, he hadn't run in about seven months, six months since the j previous July. In, in a claiming race where the claim was voided. So I wish you would be able to know why he was off for such a long time. But he did come back with a, with a credible performance, with third place finish last time. Uh, the book ends, talking UVC. There's Campisi at 12 to 1. Uh, to the far outside, Raj, are your thoughts on Choctaw Zip, uh, an odds on winner last month uh, in the mud? What are you expecting from him today? Well, he, yeah, that was a good race last time he won. And, and having recent form in this kind of race is always a big plus. 
However, he's taken an actual step up in class, even though he's running for a lower claiming race, because he's running, he's only have two lifetime wins, and he's running against horses with m many more wins, multiple lifetime wins. Wide open. These Arkansas bred sprinters filing into the gates. Tepid choice. I'm the machine, number seven at three to one. Matt Dinnerman with the remainder of the load and call post time race seven live from Oakland. Heritage Park, post position four. Aspen Club. Colonel Barton in the white and blue. Forsaken coming up. Two back, Reef's Destiny. Into the outside, Shakta Zip. We're ready to go. UVC broke open the front of the gate. Didn't get anywhere, but opened the front of it. So we're going to have to have an assistant starter go back in front of the gate and close that gate. Here comes one right here. This race begins the late pick four. Ten races, of course, today here in Hot Springs. And then tomorrow, our 12-race card featuring the Apple Blossom, grade one, 1.25 million, and the grade three count fleet for a half a billion. UVC, gate closed for him. They're going to back out UVC. The vet's just going to take a look at him, make sure everything's okay here. Five to two for the outside runner, Choctaw Zip. Four to one for number seven. I'm the machine. Bet down from the 10 to one morning line. UVC given the green light to compete. Reloads into the gate. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff. A little bit of a tardy break from Allo and Ray, but he's out alert lane. He's going to come up and press the issue early. Heritage Park strides in front, leads a half length from Allo and Ray. Aspen Club is three deep on the course. Colonel Barton a joint third with him. Choctaw Zip is next with Forsaken, who's running four lengths off the pace. A gap of two to stopping Hot Rod in midfield today. Then comes I'm the Machine, passed by obviously two into the four turn run. UVC and Reef's Destiny, they're next. And Campisi is at the back of the pack as they round the far turn. Heritage Park has the lead here with Allo Enri, and Allo Enri sticks his head in front. Heritage Park back in second on the fence. Aspen Club is three wide, making a move, and there goes Aspen Club to the front with Joseph Belmer as they hit the top of the lane. Aspen Club at the top of the stretch, a little wide off the turn, but he's in front here. Heritage Park in second, Allo Henry between them third. Then comes Colonel Barton trying to pick up pieces. Choctaw Zip extreme outside. It's still Aspen Club the gray. Here comes Colonel Barton. Here comes Choctaw Zip into third. Colonel Barton diving forward on the inside to challenge Aspen Club. Colonel Barton, Aspen Club right there fighting back. Aspen Club on the outside got the win. Colonel Barton's second, third home was Choctaw Octa Zip and then Allo Henry. Driving finish and an upset 23 to 1. Aspen Club repelling the late charge down on the inside from Colonel Barton and Eric Asmussen. Aspen Club, big price and an upset in the seventh at Oakland to kick off the late pick four. Yeah, Aspen Club hasn't been showing any speed. Uh, breaking slowly in his last three uh, starts. Today he broke well, tracked the pace, and that looks like that's what did the trick. Joey Belmer, Aspen Club, 23 to one, results forthcoming. Greg, horses on track for the night, Cap at Aqueduct. Yes, they are. And here's a look at our field face, Abario Romero Raj uh, at 7 to 2. He's a horse that does like to have some forward position, just hasn't really been able to see it out as of late. Here's a look at Montebello. So the 7 to 5 favorite drops down in class. And I understand that he's been facing tougher horses, but I just don't know if he has the ability that it looks like he has from his race two back. Fight fiercely. Can he make a case? Not really. I mean, he's yet to be competitive in two starts for this new barn, but he did take back at the start last time out and was detached from that field. Chocolate Shake has probably the two best races of anybody. They came at the end of 2022. Right. They've been so long ago and not really much 
offered last time out, claimed away from Linda Rice, and dropped down for Rob Atras. And Newport Bridge on the outside. There's the gray with Luis Rivera Jr. I think this horse is a little bit interesting. His last buyer speed figure of 65 does make him competitive in this spot as he goes second off the claim. With more on the favorite, taking that big drop in class. Let's go to Acacia. He is, and the class drop really should be a key for Montebello, and probably just from a pure physical standpoint, he, he does look best against this group. He looks great in his coat, in his weight, um, but he's a horse that obviously is a little bit tough to trust, and he's one that hasn't been able to stay on the racetrack as much either. But dropping in for the 14,000 in here, I think he fits. Um, he certainly could be able to just find his friends. He had a big solo warm-up under Goken Kokakaya uh, out on the track, moving well, and like I said, maybe just in the right spot in here today. The number two face of Barrio, as Sarah mentioned, has speed, just hasn't been able to sustain it lately and uh, kind of hustled out and then faded last time out. He's going to stretch out the extra furlong to the seven, which I don't mind for him, but I, I am always a little bit concerned when horses are showing speed and are not really able to sustain it in the stretch and then trying to do that for an even longer bit. Maybe he'll be able to kind of get comfortable on the front end, but I don't know. Newport Bridge is very sharp in the preliminaries in here and uh, while face of Barrio could be the controlling speed, I don't know if I necessarily trust him. He was very quiet, a little bit dull for my taste back in the paddock. He did perk up a bit more out on the track, but I do wish I was seeing a little bit more energy from a horse that um, does have quite a bit of speed. The six chocolate shake, yes, those good races were a long time ago and with previous connections. But last time it was his first start off of a layoff um, with Linda Rice and dropping in class. He was claimed out of that effort. And yes, he was squeezed back at the start that day as well, but he, he's actually shifted over to favoritism. I thought I was being a little clever, but he just looks terrific in here. I, I'm thinking that we could see him turn things around. I've loved everything that I've seen from him in the preliminaries. JK? Thanks, Acacia. Yeah, I love that you said that because the biggest question you have with a horse like Chocolate Shake after getting dropped like that and then running poorly is uh, what condition is Chocolate Shake in? And, and, and your push that he looks tremendous makes me feel comfortable in this selection. And look, here's the thing. This horse was bet. Uh, now, he was a dropper, uh, but he was bet in a $25,000 race. Now he's even in lighter, cheaper, 14000 And he's just got some back numbers that fit. Rob Attress, throughout his career, when horses moved to his care, first start with him, 20%. So he, he can definitely improve a horse. I'm, I don't think people are cutting in line to improve horses off of Linda Rice, but I think Rob Attress is in that category of someone who could potentially move a horse up off of anyone that he claims from. So, I, I, look, I, I think the tote board is telling you that Chocolate Shake is live as well um, based on you know some works in the morning or how the horse looks and basically just on some of the back numbers. Uh, I like Kendrick in here at this spot, try to get this horse a little bit more forward than he typically has been in the past. Uh, but I'll go with the six chocolate shake at eight to five because the other option here would be two to one on the four Montebello. And that's not a good enough price for me to make the switch off the horse I like the most. Yeah, so eight to five on a horse who had shown that ability that we talked about, came off a long layoff, had that troubled beginning as well, maybe with a cleaner break. Things go a little bit better today. Hopefully. I mean, I never really necessarily take it as a good sign for an outfit that is so sharp in the claiming game to have taken a horse at a bigger price tag and then not be raising them up in class or bringing them back at the same level. They're dropping this one down. And so he makes some sense in this spot. He is getting some class relief and he does have races to go back to that certainly make him the winner in this spot. But he's also a horse that when they have those incidents on the racetrack where they might clip heels or something might happen during a race mentally, you don't always get them back into it, even if physically they're ready to go. Three to two favorite public behind Chocolate Shake. Kendra Carmouche will have the mountain here to close out this Friday card here in New York. As we see this long shot midnight worker we missed in the post parade load up. It's been about a year since he's hit the board, almost exactly. See how forward this one tries to be. I don't know if he'll be an impact late. The four stepping in, so the favorite was the favorite. Montebell actually was odds on at one point, dropping from 35 down to 14. But two to one second choice right now. Chris Griffin with the finale on this Friday card from Aqueduct. Shake.
Newport Bridge. Goes in. All set. And they're off. Chocolate Shake breaks right out on top. It's Chocolate Shake right to the front. Chocolate Shake is now chased by Montebello. Yellow Blinkers at the rail, holding that position. That's Midnight Workers trying to push on through. In between horses face of Barrios in that early mix. They are very tightly packed as Newport Bridge joins them up at the far outside. Five across the racetrack. The Lone Trailer. That is Fight Fiercely, who's now five lengths off the battling leaders as they work up the backstretch. 22 seconds flat for the opening quarter mile. Face a barrio. has got a nose in front. Challenging towards the inside, Midnight Worker will not give up that rail position. Three wide comes Chocolate Shake, who was the early leader, is now back to third, is three wide in that group. Montebello just off of them. Here comes the run from Newport Bridge. Is the gray up on the outside going to be four wide as they get set to reach a quarter mile left to go? The trailer is still fight fiercely. They went 44 and 4 for that half mile time. Chocolate Shake is back in front. Under a full drive is Midnight Worker. Face of Barrio has dropped out of it. Also trying to make up some ground from off the pace Newport Bridge fight fiercely the leader is Chocolate Shake and Kendra Carmouche and they're trying to shake loose here's Montebello yellow blinkers grandstand side is the one building the momentum coming after Chocolate Shake inside the final furlong it's Chocolate Shake who shrugged them off so far Montebello just not cutting into the margin back there to third is Midnight Worker Chocolate Shake will win the finale it's Chocolate Shake who wins it Montebello Midnight Worker and Newport Bridge in one minute 23 and three. This horse looks like a winner almost every step of the way. Kendrick Carmouche seemed to be traveling very easily here. Second off the bench win. First off to claim Rob Atris. And got this horse some forward position when he didn't really have that in his last start. And I think that made a big difference for him today as he got that little bit of class relief as well. And some horses that normally have that early speed, face of Barrow being one of them, wasn't as prominent early as we maybe expected, kind of rushed up and then faded badly, but he had plenty left for the stretch of this race. Chocolate shake, three wins now, eight career starts. And Rob Atris claims off of Linda Rice in a victory here. Being told the winner was not claimed, so he's gonna go home with the Rob Atris barn. The two and the eight gonna be going to New Barnes. Interesting. Where would you go next with this horse? Well, obviously, can go a little bit tougher, you would think. You um, think they would have to try. so easily here. Maybe a step up in classes in his future, see if he can get back to some of those races that he was running in the past. Those were pretty good. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what this, <laughs> what this figure comes back. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would think after this, Gotch is probably pleased. He's going to be getting this horse back in the barn. Six, four, one, eight. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, Manny Franco, great three winner, coming back to New York. Comparative short price favorite, but a difficult field she'll be facing coming up this weekend.
Back on our Friday coverage. Third and final leg of the Triple Crown. You will see the 156 running of the Belmont on Fox Saturday, June 8th. Will we have a Triple Crown on the line at historic Saratoga? That'd be pretty cool, right? Be amazing. Imagine. We talk about that every summer, how that uh, population inflates. It is, it is gonna be next level with a Triple Crown event in that great town. All smiles, Kendra Carmouche on Chocolate Shake with the victory here first off the claim for the Rob Atchers Barn. This was an impressive win and pretty easily done as well. A horse that was a part of that early pace, still had enough to hold off Montebello, who's really the only horse making up ground in the later stages of this race. Six, four, one, eight. Pick six, just over $2,400. Pick five. 530 bucks. We went to break talking about uh, Mount Manny Franco. We'll continue on for Brad Cox comparative. Even money favorite Sunday in the top flight invitational at a mile and an eighth. That Bayacoa, bit of an assist with a poor start from the primary speed in there, hot and sultry. Still able to get that victory, had to battle for it. This is an impressive effort, and this is a horse that's shown a lot of tenacity, a lot of gameness when another horse has come up and challenged her. She's been able to really fight back in a lot of her races since coming back off of the bench since her non-effort in the Black Eyed Susan, where clearly something went amiss that day. But I think it's her last race that you have to be a little bit worried about, right? She kind of just didn't really show up in that Azari, but if she runs her Bayakoa, she absolutely could crush this field. Really, you think so? I do think so. I think Tizzy in the Sky is going to be a tougher customer than making her even. I don't know. I thought even money was awfully short on her. We'll, we'll find out on Sunday. Um, that that win, too, definitely benefited from the, the fact that another speed didn't get out of the gate in that spot. Um, she's obviously very talented. She's very good. Tizzy in the Sky, though, her main competition in this race. Kendra Carmouche will be aboard. And she, too, when she's been successful, she's been forward. In the last couple of starts, she has not been forward which is kind of a surprise in a way that they've changed up the tactics with her and her last race. Also a little bit of a disappointment at Gulfstream, but this was a good effort finishing second to Dr. B in that gopher wand. And I just kind of wonder necessarily where she is in terms of her numbers, in terms of who she really is. Is she that 91 kind of horse or is she that horse that maybe is a little bit slower than that? And if she's that 91 kind of horse, maybe she does get the job done in here. See, that battle looks like it really comes down to those two. You got Linda Rice with movie Moxie um, in this race as well, five to one from that outside post, but they're going to dominate the wagering comparative and Tizzy in the sky with quite a few stakes races on that Sunday card, and that'll be some early stakes action. That's the third 2.23 Eastern start time. Right on time. All right, we'll see you for that, hopefully on our Sunday coverage. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. More coming up, including with our crew out in Hot Springs. Features still to come. And of course, Saturday, Coaching Club American Oaks winner Wet Paint. Four year old return. She will come off the bench in a grade one company in the Apple Blossom. Is she ready for it? We'll be back. The Cross Country Pick 5 combines the best racing from New York with top races from around the country in one bet. Find it in your track menu and play every race day. Races are posted weekly at naira.com slash cross country.
Eclipse champion Blame, standing at Claiborne Farm. Breeding in New York State just got a whole lot greener. Starting in 2026 with two-year-olds and expanding in 2027 to include three-year-olds and up, New York Reds on the Naira Circuit will be offered purses matching the race's open company counterpart. That's a nearly 20% increase per race compared to 2023. Bowling season is in full swing. There's still time to take advantage of New York's better-than-ever state-bred incentives. Visit naira.com slash nybreds for more info. Gorgeous afternoon in Hot Springs. Welcome back. America's Day at the Races here on Fox Sports 2. Three left on the Friday Oakland program. Right back at it tomorrow. Apple Blossom Saturday. And it is the America's Best Racing's Race of the Week. Field drawn Sunday. One of the most prestigious races for Phillies and Mares in the country. Nine deep, $1.25 million purse. Top class Phillies and Mares. And while Adair Manor number four is the morning line favorite, we're going to start with number three, Wet Paint Raj. So good at Oakland last season. A perfect three for three in this grade one victory at Saratoga last summer in the Coaching Club American Oaks. Yeah, the best version of Wet Paint is definitely a top tier Philly. She was a top three row Philly coming out of Oakland last year, going into the Kentucky Oaks, which made her the favorite. Mm -hmm. She showed that she is that caliber by winning this grade one, the coaching club Oaks, but she hasn't run in a while. And she's gonna be facing Adair Manor, who is on peak form right now. Are we gonna see the best version of wet paint on a five month layoff? Not sure. But Cox was on the fence as of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, wet paint. The target trying to get it ready for the apple blossom. It has been done before on four separate occasions. Horses that last race in the Breeders' Cup that won the apple blossom. How do you expect things to shape up for wet paint? Where do you expect Flavia and Pratt to, to situate her in the earlier stages for her to be most effective in the apple blossom? Well, I don't think they're going to change much, right? She's shown that she's very effective sitting off the pace. She hasn't run in, a, in a quite a while, so when a horse is coming off a layoff, you kind of want to tend to be a little bit more conservative early on with them as to not make them get tired too quick. So I expect that he's going to be more on the conservative side, let her sit back, drop back early, and then come running. The faster the pace is early on would be the more beneficial to wet paint. And that's, that, and that's her track. And Bob Baffert next to Unstoppable at Oakland. We know that he has the favorite at Air Manor, but wet paint uh, her last three races. And as you mentioned, the reason she was favored in the Kentucky Oaks, how good she's been here at Oakland. Yeah, that affinity for the track is definitely something that you would take into high consideration. Undefeated. There's a reason she's undefeated. She loves this track, so she has a lot going in her favor in, in that aspect. Uh, this race, uh, all about championships. The grade one apple blossom. We'll have it for you tomorrow on America's Day at the races. Uh, one of the biggest days of racing every year at Oakland the count fleet as well and you look at that list Raj the, the Phillies and mares that have won the apple blossom and been named champion the same year it, it's one legendary superstar after the next and and that's why I use the reference this is a watering this race is a watering hole for legends because these horses aren't just good horses they're great horses you think about horse of the year have the gras um, champion Azari, Zenyatta, some of the best horses that I've seen in my lifetime and that I've heard about have came through hot springs in the apple blossom. Who's next? We'll find out around 645 Eastern, the 60th running of the grade one apple blossom handicap. Uh, getting ready for the eighth race here. Horses on track in a post parade with field and there's the updated odds good allowance race Phillies and mares mile and a 16th hundred and forty thousand dollar purse rose parade drawn inside Raj the current eight to five favorite yeah this is a very intriguing race this rose parade ran a great race winning by five lengths last time breaking her maiden shows a bullet workout since now that was in the slot rose parade uh, make me believe her last two races on wet tracks stepping up to this level should be an early pace factor flashy last last three races on wet tracks this is the horse that i like today made an early move into a fast pace Pay, paid the piper late, but <laughs> I think she'll be turning the tables today. Wow, would buy. Wins have been hard to come by for Scott Becker. Several seconds and thirds. Uh, Pretis here, the five in Ricardo Santana. Date with Skelly. 
in tomorrow's yeah. Count Fleet. This one ha doesn't have much early speed, looking to close in late. The overlay, Paris Style was the 9-5 to five morning line favorite. Finished ahead of uh, Flashy Lass in her last start, um, but Flashy Lass gets a better post today than she does. Long shot bump in the night, graduated in her latest by a former horse of the year, Ghost Sapper, then My Good Fortune, does her best running from off the pace. Yeah, a big stretch runner, will be far back early on, but beautiful looking filly on the track. Eight of them, good allowance race, post time for minutes. We check in with Maggie, starting with the quick Rose Parade drawn inside. Maggie. And what a great story it is behind Rose Parade, as this is one of the last horses that the late Toby Keith country star purchased in tandem with owner Danny Caldwell as they kind of join forces towards the latter half of Toby's ownership uh, career, if you will. And uh, they like the pedigree with this curl in Philly, rightfully so, as the dam a half to Preakness winner Exaggerator. And she really kind of looks like that line, too. Big, leggy Philly. Uh, that gets herself really on the muscle. I love what I'm seeing from her. I, I think she is a deserved favorite. We'll see what she does, though. She was able to break her maiden, granted, on the slop last time. So back to a fast track where we did see that big jump in figures. But she comes back with a couple of bullet works since, uh, excuse me, after that workout and, or excuse me, after that race. Uh, so she's sharp. She's going to be forward in here. And I really like what I'm seeing from her throughout the entire preliminaries. I do want to touch on number three, Flashy Lass, as well, uh, where insensitive, she was a prohibitive favorite that day. And she was able to just kind of wear down those leaders. Where Flashy Lass, she was forwardly placed. I thought she moved just a touch early, where... Yes, I, I get why the move was made because she had to kind of put away those front runners um, and try to kick away from the field, but ultimately it proved to be the wrong move. So we'll see how she's handled today. Maybe a little bit more of a patient ride. She is one that w is warming up beautifully. Uh, big kind of rangy type of filly where I really like the mound of 16th for. I think it makes a lot of sense in this spot. And uh, like you guys said, Paris style not taking much money as we get it over to Polly. And I think, Paul, rightfully so, she was the one I was least excited about. Yeah, and I think the public's thinking, okay, well, her lone win was going around one turn, and this is two turns, so she's not uh, obviously um, been up to par around two turns, and maybe that's the key, I guess, because, you know, when you look figures-wise, pair style is the horse to beat, but she's not really getting betting here. And, you know, you go back to the – the filly on the rail, she was dynamite last time out. She's been dynamite in her first two starts. But, you know, when you face winners for the first time, you have to ramp it up a little bit. I do think she will go to the front end, um, and she'll be the horse to catch in here. And Flashy Lass is the other horse in here that probably will be on the Mary Chase in here at 2-1. to one. But do you want to take a horse at 3-2 to two facing winners for the first time? Uh, I think the rail, the horse has been working well in the morning. Obviously, there's some talent there. Um, but when I look at some of the other runners in here, I thought you could find some value maybe underneath. You look at the eight in here, uh, my good fortune for Bayaron and Hartman. This horse launches from way out of it. So they're going to have to speed it up a little bit on the front end. But this is a horse that also I think can make a good for off the pace. Jonathan, I'm going to land on the five. Prittis in here, a little bit of a long shot to hit the board. I don't know if this Philly can win this race, but I think she's going to sit in a really good spot, maybe second or third as the one's laying the fractions out. And I know you like the one here a little bit, and she's probably going to be tough. Yeah, Paul, I, I, you mentioned the eight. I wanted to pick the eight, but as I was looking at the race, I started to kind of, okay, where is the speed going to come from to set this thing up for the eight? And I landed on one speed horse, and it happened to be the one who I think is – better than the eight and likely loose in here uh, that makes a tough recipe for the eight i think the eight's inter interesting to use underneath but for me i'm gonna land on the one rose parade who i thought was uh was 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 the likeliest winner in this spot down on the inside i like at times in a lone speed situation when a horse draws the inside because i know that, that you're gonna get one type of ride from there there's not gonna get any cuteness no trying to rate the horse send away from there hold that position make the shortest way around there, saving ground and have something less left for the stretch uh, i think the three to two is actually pretty fair on rose parade at this point lafitte 
Jonathan Rose Parade, yeah, six to five now. There she is, and here's what she did on the 22nd of March, Raj, in the slot, Rose Parade, in command, turning for home, and widens on this field. Well, yeah, this was a very impressive win. She ran fast early, and she sustained it, and that's a tough weapon to have. When, when a horse can maintain that high cruising speed at this long distance and, and even find an extra gear in the stretch, Though, though that's a dangerous weapon to have. So very impressive maiden. Today she goes against horses that have already broken the maiden and have a little bit more season, a little bit more experience. Tougher competition, yes, that was on a wet track, but a solid debut uh, on a fast track, War Rose Parade. Uh, what are you looking for in terms of tactics from Dela Cruz on Rose Parade and particularly Flashy Lass, who you like going in with Keith Asmus in at two to one, the second choice? Yeah, I think it's clear, cut and dry that Rose Parade from the inside post has to establish the lead. De La Cruz is going to come out, establish the lead. I think it's going to make him a prey. And the predator is going to be Flashy Lass. Flashy, I expect Flashy Lass to be sitting right on the hip of Rose Parade. It has a perfect tracking post just outside of, of her in the three spot. And just kind of just watch her, watch her, and wait until the perfect time to take over, which I expect to be in deep stretch. How does he put Flashy Lass in a position to, to stalk and track instead of chasing? You don't want to chase. Well, initially, you have to let them run out of the gate and establish that position. Once you get in that position, because Flashy Lass has enough speed to naturally put him there. She showed it just off of 47 and one. She was just a half a length off. So she has that natural speed. It won't take her out of her game to be sitting close. And I think that tactical speed is going to just put Flashy Lass right in that hunter cat bird position. Watch it right from the start. Matt Denham with the call. Post time race eight live Oaklawn. And uh, Lara, uneventful dispatch. Wildwood by on the lead. Rose Parade now moving up from the inside to snatch the lead away. And it's Rose Parade in front. Make Me Believe follows that rival to claim second. Wildwood by third going into the turn with Pretus. And Flashy Lass inside of that pair rides the rail around the clubhouse turn. In the sixth position is the gray pair of style. She's seven ahead of Bump in the Night. And my good fortune, voided of early paces at the back of the field with Bump in the Night. Down the back stretch, they run now. Rose Parade on the lead by a half length. Make Me Believe tips outside into the two path to press the pace from second. Flashy last third with Pretus. They're side by side. A length and a half better than another pair. Paris style makes her way inside of Wildwood by a gap of two to my good fortune. And Bump in the Night drops to the back at a big number, 69 to 1, as they make their way towards the half mile pole. Rose Parade went the opening quarter in 23 and 4 fifth seconds. The first half, 48 and 3. So a modest, sensible tempo here set by Rose Parade, who leads three quarters of a length. Now a half length. Make me believe on the outside, applying the pressure as they go into the turn. Flashy Lass still third with Pretus. Wildwood by being asked to go in the three path, joining Flashy Lass. Those three pretty much together as they round the far turn. My good fortune is next. Paris style and bumping the night is well out of it. Top of the stretch now. Rose Parade being challenged by Make Me Believe. Flashy Lass getting pinned in behind horses. She's got a lot of horse. Tries to get outside as they come down the lane and then Wildwood by as they come down the stretch. Make me believe as put away Rose Parade. Wildwood by coming on the scene though, taking the lead and Flashy Lass is tipping outside into the second position and she's grinding away after Wildwood by. Wildwood by Flashy Lass trying to reel her in late. It's Wildwood by in front and Wildwood by finds the wire in time. Wildwood by over Flashy Lass, then Paris style and make me believe. Desperate finish and at 11 to 1 Wildwood by just able to hold off flashy last in the eighth Oakland watch the inside post position the favorite Rose Parade Raj and a slight stumble bobble getting out of the blocks yeah it was a, a little bit more than a slight it seemed pretty significant Rose Parade took a, a nose dive coming out of the gate which hindered her from getting to the lead right away but she recovered and established the rail um, there's a lot going on in this race uh, Paris style in the first turn had had, had some um, watch Wildwood by who ran so well and just misses and in, in, in right here on heels and flashy in tight and rank down on the rail or uh, what flashy last yeah flashy last had a rough trip she had checked in the first turn she was timed in 
while while Wildwood Bay was in the clear, and that's the difference in the trip, right? Um, Wildwood Bay got a clear run on the outside, while Flashy Lass is, is desperately looking for a way out. Finally, Keat was able to extricate himself from the inside and get him out, but by that time, the momentum had propelled Wildwood Bay, and, you know, Flashy Lass was still giving it her all to get there. Big effort, Flashy Lass, effort. but Wildwood Bay at 11 to one, Francisco Arietta, and we mentioned, Pre-race, Scott Becker. Horses have been running well. Wins have been hard to come by, right? Just the one win in all these seconds and, and, and thirds and in deep stretch, he had to be thinking to himself, hey, here we go again. Yeah, I mean, you know, nine seconds for Scott Becker, a trainer, and only one win. And today he won a really nice race here. This was a good set of horses, $140,000 allowance race. And Wildwood Bay, who has been close, runner-up finish two starts back and got me the length the last time, got the best trip today. You want to know how big the purses are around here? That is the smallest purse of any allowance race you will see at Oakland Park. The smallest, 140,000. Uh, it's, it's great for, for a smaller stable like Becker to win a race of this caliber. It, it's really good, goes a long way. Upset here, 11 to one. Wildwood by over flashy last. And for the favorite, Rose Parade. What a pro Wildwood by taking it all in. But not only the, the stumble at the start and then aggressive pulling along the back stretch. Not her day today. The day belongs to Wildwood by results. When we come back to left on the Oaklawn program, plus tomorrow's Apple Blossom and Bob Baffert, lifetime stats at Oaklawn. Gotti, Arkansas Derby win two weeks ago. Tomorrow, looking for a second Apple Blossom with Adore Manor, last year's top ranked California mayor. You're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2, as always, brought to you in part by Hillendale, Atalapa. Pristine afternoon here in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where race number eight is won by the Florida Bread. No steer its colors, Francisco Arietta with the salute entering the winner's circle. Well-deserved victory. Scott Becker had to sweat this one out late. Wildwood by just finding her best stride, but the filly you like, flashy last, Raj, is doing the same. Yeah, flashy last, you can tell that Keith had a lot of horse and he was desperately seeking a clear path while Wildwood by was able to get the momentum and, and a catapulted to the lead coming off the turn. And that, that was where the race was won and lost. 
by a neck. Wildwood buy 11 to 1. Six lifetime win, 2420 for your would-be $2 investment over flashy last pair of style. And again, for the favor, Rose Prey, just not her day right from the start. Yeah, I mean, when she stumbled as bad as she did, it almost scared her. You can see her get up and just jump into the bridle. And she then she went from being stumbling, being back, to being overly aggressive. So it's like, you know, stepping on the brakes, pressing on the gas. It's just so hard to recover from that. And um, definitely a filly with some talent. But today, you know, with all everything that happened, she didn't show her A race. And I'm kind of starting to wonder, I wonder what her A race is. Is, is she this good? Because she was a big favorite. Yeah. A lot of, uh, she gets a lot of just experience in general. I mean, that was only her third career start. So we'll see how Rose Parade responds moving forward. Wildwood by strikes, turning the page. Rosh, and another good allowance race. $140,000 purse. What do you know? Three-year-old filly, six furlong sprint. And Grazia, the one to two favorite with about 21 minutes to post. But all eyes on tomorrow's grade one, Apple Blossom. And for two-time Triple Crown winning trainer, Bob Baffert. Yeah, this is his home away from home. Oaklawn Park made his debut in the 93 count fleet. Since then, all right, so 39 victories, but considering 31 of them have been stakes wins. And yeah, he's in Ted Williams country, batting 420 for his career. The graded stakes wins 25 and counting. Of those 25 graded stakes wins, six of them are the grade one variety. Just two weeks ago, his fifth Arkansas Derby victory. American Pharaoh went on to capture the Triple Crown and tomorrow seeking a second. Apple Blossom Plum Pretty having struck in 2012. Bob Baffert here at Oaklawn, indeed his home away from home and looking to pad those stats with the favorite in a dare manner. Number four, nine to five on the morning line. He's looking for that Arkansas Derby Apple Blossom sweep Oaklawn's two grade one events. Same can be said for jockey Juan Hernandez. Yeah, when Bab Baffert comes over here to Oakland, he doesn't come for the hot spring bath. <laughs> he comes to win. Um, and, you know, he, this, this Philly Adair Manor is definitely the horse to beat in this race. Uh, you, wet paint coming in, not having raced since the Breeders' Cup. Adair Manor has raced this year. She finished second in the Beholder Mile at Santa Anita. How much of an advantage is the recency having that race and did you lose any any faith in Adair Manor of being defeated in that Beholder Mile? Her defeat in the Beholder Mile produced her highest speed figure ever. I guess so, not then. So it's not that she made a, a regress to get defeat. She arguably ran the best race of her life in defeat. So it makes me feel like she's close to her peak, if not at her optimal best right now. And we don't know what version we're Look, going from three to four, you expect that natural progression, right, for wet paint, from a three-year-old to a four-year-old. However, it's not always like that. And when you don't see a horse for four to five months, they could be a positive, but it could also be a negative. So I, it's hard to determine for us what version of wet paint is going to come, show up, but it needs to be the best version to, in order to take down a dare manner. Uh, Adair Manor, Paul, who is uh, seeking a second grade one victory. What are, you, what are you expecting from her tomorrow afternoon in the Apple Blossom? Well, I think she's the one to beat by far. And I think you got to put in things in the context, too, here. Because, you know, Rajiv makes a great point. I, she lost nothing in defeat. I mean, she ran her lifetime top when it comes to buyer wise or any kind of uh, metric that you use. Um, she's shown that maybe she could pass horses where before maybe she could pass horses but she just dominated horses like Desert Dawn and some horses that were you know a little bit less than her but you look at a dare manor and you, you just go okay that last race was off a five-month layoff and she ran her top and that was her five-year-old debut so she could actually move forward which could be scary for the rest of the horses in here and she's got the tactical speed to stay close, I don't think she needs the lead at all. She's definitely the one to beat. And I would think when you look at the numbers at the end of the day, she might go off at about even money or so. And perhaps just the Bob Baffert factor alone, Rajiv. Uh, let's say you're one riding a dare manner. In a perfect world, how do you want to be situated early on? 
Well, Adair Manor seems like a jockey's dream to ride. She has so much natural tactical speed where she puts herself in the race, but she doesn't need the lead. So it gives you all the options. I think it's the kind of race where you can go in comfortably. You know you're not on a one-trick pony. You, the, the, the dynamics of the race is actually suitable for her because there's not a lot of speed. I would put her, come out the gate, let her break, and put herself wherever she wants to be. Just be a good passenger early. Let her get into a rhythm and, and take it from there. California-based mares have done so well in the Apple Blossom over the years, we'll see what Adair Manor does. The 9 to 5 morning line favorite. Tomorrow's grade one Apple Blossom post time around 645 Eastern. We'll have it for you right here on Fox Sports 2. And the depth of this field. Taxed. Rags to riches. A former claimer and a grade two winner now. Taking on the big girls. Taxed tomorrow. Looking to spring a mild upset. The grade one Apple Blossom tomorrow evening from Oaklawn. Liam's Map, a two-time grade one winner with six consecutive triple-digit buyers, including a 114 to win the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He's already taking the lead as a sire with grade one winners Basin, Wicked Whisper, Colonel Liam, and Juju's Map, plus multiple six-figure yearling sales and two-year-old sales up to $1.2 million. Proven on the track, proven in the sales ring. Liam's Map, only at Lane's End. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every screen, every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Latruska is back to second. Swiss Skydiver is two back in third. And Monomoy Girl has a final furlong to get. But Latruska is battling on bravely. Monomoy Girl a length. Latruska doing her level best. Monomoy Girl, Latruska battling back. Latruska, Monomoy Girl, Latruska! That was Latruska's coming out party. First grade one win in the States. She would go on to win five in a row before she got beat in that Breeders' Cup Classic, but it was a championship season. Showed how incredibly game she was in that performance. You don't often see horses get past and then come back towards the inside, especially not when it's a champion horse to your outside in Monomoy Girl. And that is what started that stretch of races for her that she was so incredible and dazzling in with her display of speed. I got to see her with the personal ensign myself at Saratoga that year. She was really cool. Four of those five wins in a row, grade one victories. Apple Blossom winners to be named champ. She was the last to do it back in that incredible 2021 season, but some incredible names have really kind of started their seasons in this race. Close Hatches, Hob de Grace, and Yana Zeri went on to become Horse of the Year. Great Passiana, Bayakoa, just an incredible list of names. And we'll see who can add their name to that prestigious list. Coming up on Saturday truly is one of the big races there is early on in the year, really, for a great one in this distaff division. And we're going to talk about a horse who had 
you know, a big year last year. Kind of a surprise, a former claimer wound up winning the Black Eyed Susan. And the way that she came back looks like she could have a monster four-year-old season taxed. It was a big statement for her to come back with in this race, to be able to fire fresh off of the layoff. And she was so far back early on in this race and really got rolling late to finish off this one well and win very comfortably. You can visually see an acceleration from her towards the outside there, the big gray. And it's only a stepping point, right, going forward in terms of what she might be capable of this season as an older horse. And I think that they have to be pretty enthusiastic about what they saw with her return race. It is visually really impressive to see that. And, you know, unlike wet paint, she gets that even though it was just a sprint, that prep race in her to set her up for this grade one. She has that recency edge. You know that she's a horse that is going to be able to fire fresh, but then also now has that fitness coming in, whereas wet paint, we don't know how she's going to come back in this spot. Christian Torres, leading rider at the meet, will have the mount. It's been a great story for trainer Randy Morris. We'll see if tax can rise to the occasion. Let's go to Maggie, who caught up with the man who'll be aboard on Saturday. Here with Christian Torres, who will be with tax tomorrow in the grade one apple blossom and Christian we saw her come back at a sprint distance last time but she was able to with approval of the stewards work out till the seven eights talk a little bit about the explosive move she displayed down the stretch yeah um, she's a nice failure you know and she seems to run like any distance so um, Randy was just giving her um, the race to get her prepared for the for the apple blossom I mean, he even told me and um, I was Trying, we're gonna try to get approval from the stores back and get um, um, a gallop out after the race, and um, we did. And she actually exploded down the lane, and, and uh, we were not expecting to win the race, but she, you know, she's a nice filly, so um, she just exploded and, and, and ran a good race, and even galloped out even better. And she's been working good in the morning too. I've been, I worked her um, twice already, and she, she's feeling good. So hopefully she show up tomorrow. And Christian, being on her, and, and like you said, you, you both were concerned about the six furlongs. How much more does a mile and a 16th play into her favor? Um, honestly, she's a filly that she relax. She can be close. She can be, behind, you know, three or four lengths behind uh, the pace. And she's, she's a nice filly. She just does whatever I ask her to do. Like in that six furlong race, I just let her get his own rhythm and, and then ask her and she... Um, she was there for me and um, going long I rode her at Churchill one time and I was just behind the pace a length length and a half and and, um, and she ran good she ran a good third that day so um, hopefully we can get a, a nice trade but she's a feeling that she does every, everything right. Real quick I want to ask you about your mount here in this upcoming race the Louisiana bread she's won three races where many of these are just looking for their second you rode her to a third place effort first time out for you as a rider, how important is it to have multiple wins with a horse over your competition? Yeah, I love I, I, that my my thing. I love to to um, win a lot of races with one horse. Yeah. And um, and I rode her first time out. Uh, she was like, she was right behind the pace. She was very professional and um, and she did everything right that day. You know, it was just first time out. The last 16, she got a little tired, but after she went to Louisiana, I saw that she won. Um, a uh, couple races down there, and she seems to be improving. So um, hopefully we can get a nice trip today. All right, Christian, good luck. I'll let you get, get on her. Thank you. All right, Christian Torres, he will be aboard Freeburn here, but reunited with Tax, a legitimate and major player in tomorrow's Apple Blossom. Thanks, Maggie. And great to see him get an opportunity in a huge grade one like this. Such an incredible meet that he's had. He's been on a couple of... Uh, winners in Kentucky Derby preps, as you see, Catching Freedom with the Smarty Jones, Timberlake in the Rebel, and see if he can get it done on tax. Obviously, you got to be very excited uh, the way she came back to start off her four-year-old campaign. Absolutely, and I'm sure that's a mount that he wants to retain throughout the year, going on to those bigger and better things with her, especially with how she came back so easily to win that sprint race. That'd be a great card on Saturday. Grade one Apple Blossom, one of the most prestigious races there is in that distaff division. Let's send it back to Hot Springs. Championship implications in uh, April. Tomorrow's grade one uh, Apple Blossom. But first things first for Christian Torres, a date here with Freeburn. Uh, as far as your handicapping, you kind of had to pivot here. You liked Brooklyn Drew going in. She's out. Who'd you wind up with? Well, I like Floating Beauty. Brooklyn Drew being out, I caused some 
problems for me because I thought there was going to be a fast pace in the race that would set up good for Float and Beauty. And now with Brooklyn Drew as one of the main pace setters being scratched, it might soften up the pace a little bit. But I'm still you sticking You saw the Float stats, right? You saw what Baffert does here at Oakland. You're going to try to beat the guy who wins at a 42% clip I'm, I'm, here I'm with Grazia. Yeah, I'm going to lean on the 58% that he doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't win, win this time. <laughs> Grazia, but, uh, there she is. Uh, team Muth, Team Adair Manor. Hernandez, Baffert, then Freeburn, and there's Christian Torres. Yeah, three wins lifetime. That's big at this level because everyone else has just won one race or two. Your top selection, big price, floating beauty. Yeah, I'm hoping that there's going to be a hot pace in front. She comes out of a key race. Yeah, she with does. Tarifa returning to win the Fairgrounds Oaks and Badia <laughs> also coming <laughs> well back done. to win the stake. Well done. Divine gal for Donnie Von Hemel, outsider at 19 to 1, then Moonlit Lady. Uh, Impressive. Front running winner in her debut late March. Yeah, fast filly. She opened up five lengths uh, after setting a very fast pace. This is a nice filly. Uh, Lady Moscato just graduated on the 17th of March. Yeah, and when you see Wayne Lucas horses trend upwards, they usually continue that trend. Aztec Empress to the outside, longest shot in the field, 36 to 1. Change the jockey here to Gabriel Saez, so he's running with the full weight of 117 pounds. It's big step up off a cl Big defeat in a claiming race, now in an allowance race. Mm -hmm. They must see something they like. You know what the players like here is this $140,000 purse. This three-year-old Philly event, six furlong sprint with all eyes on Grazia at three to five, JK. Uh, what about number six, Moonlit Lady, in that fast debut win right here at Oaklawn? Yeah, I mean, look, it was, a, it was a maiden claiming race, but it was an expensive maiden claiming race. Lives just like a maiden special weight, in my opinion. And you said, like you said, it was a fast race, and that's what speed figures do. They can help you evaluate class. They can help you evaluate different uh, races from different places, different distances. Moonlit Lady ran extremely well in this race, especially for a first-time starter. The pace was fast. She set that fast pace, and she held off the oncomers. I think she has an opportunity to really take a step forward. She was late switching her leads there, but she's just figuring it out. Like I said, it's her first race. I think she's going to take a step forward in her second race. And I think the real value on Moonlit Lady is the fact that when Baffert goes anywhere, people can't get enough of betting his horses. And especially a place like Oaklawn Park that always has such a significant on-track crowd, they're, they're going to have people uh, that, that are going to play horses like this just off the trainer's name. I, I think that uh, the six Moonlit Lady should probably be four to one, maybe even a little bit shorter. And if I'm getting six to one, that means I'm firing up that Naira Betts account and making a wager. Polly? Yeah, I'm kind of with you, JK. I understand where you're coming from. I, when Bob Baffert comes into town, yes, he wins a ton of races. But this is, I think, getting a little bit overboard here at this price, considering, you know, there's some other talented fillies in this race. And, you know, if you want to lean on her debut, it, it was okay. But it wasn't, you know, eye-catching to deserve to be like one to two or one to five, which she is right now. You know, when I look at some other horses in here, where she's three to five right now, you know, the two could put pressure on her early. Freeburn, obviously, who's very quick, a Louisiana bred. And I think Freeburn might do the dirty work for a horse like Lady Moscato. I think the seven in here has got a big look. I think Rajiv hit the nail right on the head. When Mr. Lucas's horses get good, they continue to get good. And this horse, Lasix and Blinkers, and you look at his past performances, her past performances, she's been favored a lot. So obviously, she's always shown talent in the morning. And I think last time out, Maggie, she showed a little bit more professionalism with the Blinkers on. I think she's trending forward. But can she beat the one, Mags? Yeah, I know, Polly. It, she's a great option in here, I think. Um, I, I She didn't really catch my eye. I didn't see much change physically um, with her from two to three, but she definitely ran some very respectable races up at Saratoga in that juvenile season. Um, but I do want to touch on number one in here, Grazia, um, who is the horse coming back off the layoff. And, you know, last time, I, I don't you know, put any blame on Flavia and Pratt, who probably riding to instruction, but this filly broke so quickly, he immediately took her in hand not to engage the other Baffert horse. This is the problem when you have multiple horses from the same uh, connections in one race. And then it just kind of took the heart out of her. I wonder if she's a horse that um, might now need Lasix in which she gets here. She came in really settled, but once she hit the racetrack, 
I see why they're turning her back in distance, because she has been on fire, like somebody lit a Roman candle underneath of her um, as she has not stopped prancing and really being on her toes. And she looks incredibly fit here. Uh, so I, I kind of get the turn back now because looking at her physically, though, she does look like a horse that could handle a distance of ground, dappled head to toe, typical things you expect from Bob Baffer. But Got a lot of love for my law breads and the Louisiana bread free burn. As I was saying in that interview with Christian Torres, I like, you know, we see it a lot with the New York breads. They have more wins in these open A other than conditions than their open bread counterparts. And I think in a lot of ways it does count for something. She's beautifully put together. It does not look as though she's out of place physically in this field at all. I really like what I'm seeing from Freeburn. It's just as you guys have pointed out, what kind of trip does she get with the presence of some other speed in here? Levine? How it unfolds for Freeburn, Raj, but you have to appreciate the versatility. She's won on the lead and she's battled, dueled in one, and she's won from just off the pace. Yeah, well, naturally, she's going to be up there because she has that natural speed. But like you said, Lafitte, I agree. She doesn't have to be on the lead. She doesn't have to commit to a suicidal pace. I think Christian is obviously going to be forwardly placed, but I, I believe he'll be able to ration that speed out a little bit without taking it away from her. Um, you know, the more you look at this race, it's impacted drastically by the scratch mm -hmm. of Brooklyn Drew. Brooklyn Drew is, was one of the key speed contenders and also a top contender in the race. Who benefits most? Who does it hurt the most? It definitely benefits most Freeburn and Moonlit Lady, the two speedier horses, because now they don't have to be in a three-pronged battle. They, they could probably pick their spots, the jockeys, Christian Torres and Ramon Vasquez, and... and I can see a, a more moderate pace as opposed to, well, if there was three speed horses jostling for that lead, that early position, and that will definitely impact the closers. I'm not sure how Grazia, how far she's going to be off the pace because she was close to the pace when she broke her maiden going six furlongs at Del Mar first time out. And last time she ran a mile and a 16, but like Maggie said... The, uh, Flavian Pratt, he took her back that day. So she she had the natural speed, and he, he took it back. So she might show more speed today. Uh, this was her debut last November, and Juan Hernandez aboard, who rides her today, uh, flashing that tactical speed, puts this field away. And on the strength of this win, she was 9-5 to five in the grade 2 starlet in December at Los Al. And the dynamics of how she ran in this race will make me believe that she won't be far off the pace today. I expect her to be forwardly placed, um, as, and that should benefit her. Being on the inside, she won't be far off the pace. And Bob Baffert, there is a 42% chance he's going <laughs> to win this race. So close to a coin flip that he's going to win. Gotti, stats at Oakland. Bob Baffert uh, will be saying goodbye to our viewers on regional networks, uh, Bally SoCal San Diego. And we'll be right back at it tomorrow. Live coverage from Oak Lawn Park beginning at 1 Eastern for the Grade 1 Apple Blossom. And for our viewers still watching on Fox Sports 2, we have this ninth race in just moments. A really good three-year-old Philly sprint, $140,000 per six furlongs and Grazia. What will she do off the bench and odds on favorite? I think JK touched on something significant. The handicappers, is she an odds on favorite because of, of form and what she's done in two races? Or is it simply the presence of Bob Baffert at Oakland? It has to be a combo factor of form. If this wasn't a Bob Baffert horse, she would still be the favorite in this race. If maybe was, not four to five. But maybe not four to five, but, uh, you know, on paper, taking away the connections, she's definitely a seven to five, eight to five shot uh, in this race. Do I think she's the most likely winner? Probably not. You know, she's going to have to navigate the inside post, probably behind a couple horses. Let's see how it unfolds. We're about to find out. Post time for the ninth, live from Oakland, I'm Matt Dinneman. 
And uh, we're off. Good beginning for all the runners in the race. Moonlight Lady from post six bounced into the bridle very quickly and takes advantage. Goes to the front, opens up a length and a half on Aztec Empress Freeburn. They're side by side. Then Grazia in the fourth spot with Lady Moscato. That pairs three lengths clear of a pair at the back. Floating Beauty Divine Gal. They're side by side. There's a half mile to go. And Moonlight Lady finds herself with a clear lead, gets towards the rail, and approaches the forward turn run. A length in front. Freeburn on the inside of Aztec Empress, the long shot side by side. Lady Moscato claims fourth and gets closer, begins a move in the three path. There goes Lady Moscato to come up and challenge Moonlit Lady now around the forward turn. Grazia in fifth, needs to get going, swings to the outside, sent along, but is moving under some pressure as six lengths to gain as they swing off the corner. Lady Moscato cruising up alongside of Moonlit Lady to take the lead, and Lady Moscato kicks on. Moonlit Lady left behind in second. Freeburn is third with a furlong to go. And Lady Moscato's opening up that lead. And after that maiden win last month, looks like the light bulb is turned on for her. Lady Moscato soared five, six ahead. Big effort from the daughter of Quality Road, Lady Moscato. Freebird was second, Moonlit Lady third, Grazia fourth. Did she ever look like a loser in this one? No, always look in control, <laughs> perfect position, tracking the leaders, seem full of run. And like Matt Dinnerman said, the light bulb has really gone on on this $800,000 daughter of Quality Road. It's Wayne Lucas, it's Keith Asmussen, three on the afternoon for Keith Asmussen and Lady Moscato got hit hard late, nine to five at post time. Uh, nine down, one left here at Oaklawn. We're saying goodbye to our viewers on Fox Sports 2. We're right back at it tomorrow for the grade one Apple Blossom, the grade three count Fleet Raj. What are you, one story, one horse, one race. What are you looking forward to most tomorrow? I am excited to see who's going to be the next legend in, in our sport. Whoever wins the Apple Blossom is going to potentially be the leading of the division. All about championships All in the Apple champions. Blossom. So much tradition, prestige. What will that Philly do off the bench? Unraced since the Breeders' Cup, a grade one winner, wet paint for Godolphin. The favorite, Adair Manor. And Bob Baffer, they're going to pad those stats at Oaklawn Park. Didn't work out in the ninth year at Oaklawn. Skelly, lightning fast and hard to catch. Top ranked sprinter in North America, the one to beat. Looking to go back to back in the count fleet. We'll see you tomorrow. Big Saturday afternoon from Oaklawn. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern.